So Kidology's title is a deep dive into Western women's bizarre awakening. And I'm very excited to talk about this as an older mid millennial, no, as a mid millennial myself. I'm very excited to see her deep dive into this because I've been seeing the trend on TikTok as well about, I have a feeling, right? If you guys have pre-seen it, is it about Bin, Al Bin Laden's like letter that's going viral? Because I, that's what I'm assuming it's about because of the thumbnail. But I am excited because I have a lot of thoughts about this as somebody who grew up through 9-11, as somebody who like grew up through everything, as somebody that is a Syrian and whose family's from Iraq. I have a feeling I'm going to have a lot to say about this. So let's get into it. Every time I say that, I think about Keemstar. Let's get into the news. I never even watched Keemstar. What? Anyways. Okay. So it is about the... <laughs> I have a lot to say about this. Okay. Let's get started. Do not send any of these influencers or people harassment. Please use my comment section for any qualms you may have. Very based. Z. Also, I put my Nightbot on. So her link will show up in the Nightbot every so often. So keep typing in comments. The algorithm loves it and the Nightbot reacts to it. So you guys can go to Kidology's video um, and watch it yourself, like it, or go to her channel and subscribe because Z is an amazing content creator. So this is fucking insane. I just read Osama Bin Laden's letter to America. <laughs> right away, right away. Uh, which I will be going through right here, but it's actually so mind-fucking to me that terrorism has been sold as this idea to the American people and honestly just so many Western inhabitants within certain nations that this group of people, this random group of people just suddenly wakes up one day and just fucking hates you, just wants you dead, wants you gone. And this is all because they believe that they're better than us. Like that is the root of terrorism. It doesn't make sense. They just hate your fucking nation. But reading this letter, it becomes apparent to me that the actual... As for the first question, why are we fighting and opposing you? The answer is very simple. One, because you attacked us and continue to attack us. And A, you attacked us in Palestine. ...of 9-11 and those acts committed against the USA and its people were all just the buildup of our government failing other nations. I really urge everybody... I agree. If somebody hurts you, you are allowed to do twice as much pain back to them or you're allowed to retaliate in any capacity. I'm being sarcastic. But that, okay, again, my content is going to push us to be more introspective and thoughtful and introspective about this conversation because I think it's really important. So when I say philosophy, I mean, what's your personal philosophy on life in relation to your values, morals, and ethics? And when I hear this conversation happen, like we didn't just come from anywhere. We didn't just retaliate out of anywhere. We needed to retaliate. That's a great point. I think that's very true. The U.S. is not without sin. The U.S. has plenty of reasons for retaliation. You know what's funny, though? Let's take it a step further because I think about this all the time with my conservative friends and family where I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, you know, if you keep oppressing people so much, you can't be that surprised when they like retaliate against you. And at the same time, I think it is unethical to some extent to retaliate against people who have good intentions. But then what does it mean to have good intentions? It's really just like self-focused intentions. I'm investing in myself and we ourselves are investing in our progress. And no matter how much we like to have a, no matter how we have the conversation with this, America is probably your best bet for a lot of your goals as a progressive. Ultimately, that is just the truth, but it's not the only option. America isn't your only option, but if you're born there and you have capital there or access to resources there, you're probably better off if you can't figure out your way to migrate out of, m migrate to some, somewhere else, right? So already, I can see, I feel like, yes, that makes sense. Like, America is not without sin. So, of course, you're upset at her. Like, I always wonder if Japan's going to secretly retaliate one day. I'm just saying. But apparently not. But also, like, would we be surprised? But also, like, can we move on? But also, should we move on? But also, like, great questions. These are all great questions, right? And so, again, when we talk about politics, like, okay, if you ask me, Brittany, how would you play the political game? Well, that's very different than how would I play the morals ethics game? Because politics is about winning. It's not about morals and ethics. So when you say like America like deserved 9-11 because look at the way that it treated the Middle East, you're saying ethically or morally it deserved it? Are you saying innocent people deserve to die because its government made a decision? Isn't that the same argument Israel's making for Palestine? 
isn't Israel making the same argu- argument that Palestinians are casualties in a war because their government, Hamas, attacked Israel and Israel has a right to attack them? And H- Hamas is saying we get to attack Israel and innocent people in Israel because they attacked us. And then now she's saying that bin Laden is reasonable because America attacked them. And now they get to, do you get what I'm saying? Ultimately, if you keep playing this game politically, then yes, you have to go for the superpower and like what side are you on? Who's going to move you forward and help you survive? And then if you go philosophy, ethics and morals, it's like, what are we talking about? Right. It's a never ending cycle of violence. You can't beat the violence if you justify the violence. It doesn't matter because somebody hit somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, everybody to Google and read it. Because I thought that I had quite a lot of media literacy, but this takes it to a whole nother fucking level where I was just like, holy shit, like propaganda is genuinely so deeply. Im- but propaganda is from every country. The idea that only the United States does propaganda. I was just watching North Korea propaganda videos this morning about Americans and I was dying. It was so funny and it's so good. But every country has propaganda because humans are propaganda. Like humans love to sell a narrative from your mom telling you stories about how she grew up to your grandpa telling stories about how like X, Y, and Z happened in the family to how your business tells you to how your news tells you. So again, if they're really going to say that Bin Laden had the truth, you think Bin Laden didn't have propaganda? Like, come on. Embedded into our fucking DNA. I need everyone to stop what they're doing right now and go read. It's literally two pages. Go read A Letter to America. And please come back here and just let me know what you think, because I feel like I'm going through like an existential crisis right now. And a lot of people are. So I just need someone. They're having their bubbles popped, which is really, really good. But they're popping themselves back into a different bubble. And that's fine. But it is a bubble pop. So it is genuine. This is important. I remember going through this phase where I was reading literally like black, uh, like literature from black activists and thinking like, oh, my gosh, like. Black people know what's going on in America, but black people are in a bubble as much as anybody else because they're only in retaliation to the whites. So they don't actually and aren't able if they're within that bubble to think outside of that narrative. So they can't actually engage in like the macro. So once again, let's actually reference. Let is let's reference. Oops, wrong. Hold on. Wrong. Let us reference this here. So on the macro, we're like atoms bumping up against each other in the universe. We're just energy within the whole universe where we are a part of it. Then evolutionarily, we are societies and societies have all that systematic issue that we're all very upset about. And I agree is happening. OK, then you're individuals within that society. And then you feel like you would have you have to adhere to a certain um, compliance to be a part of the society. And then if you find yourself not liking that society, you can bubble pop like they're doing into a different society that believes something different, but it's still a bubble, which is fine. Or you can decide to be a specific consciousness, which means you don't adhere to the bubbles, but you play within the games of the bubbles, which is very different. Or you construct your own bubble, which I think we all end up doing in the end, whether you're a two or a five on my level system, which is linked down below if you don't know what I'm referencing in terms of numbers. So it is really beautiful to watch people pop a bubble but it's interesting to see where they land you know what i mean oh can there be a level one society i think the closest you could probably get to that is like maybe in really degenerate cults or specifically there was a group in san diego that hangs out in the middle of the desert and is so degenerate that a part of me thinks a lot of them are ones hanging out together but i don't know right to be feeling this too I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. <clears throat> Ooh, referencing Kanye. We love that. That's a form of overcorrecting. We're over we're overcorrecting at this point. America can still be the imperialist capitalist country that it is. And Osama bin Laden can still be a dictator that was terrible to his people and committed war crimes. Like both of those things can be true. We don't have to swing the pit. Whoa. Kidology says Bin Laden was not a dictator. He was a terrorist. Eh, same thing. <laughs> I don't know. Same thing, right? Like, I don't know. Like, we call Saddam a dictator. We call him a terrorist. And, like, obviously I'm biased because, like, my family is in from Iraq. And so they're, like, a Catholic minority there who is persecuted by Muslims. So every time I hear, like, a Muslim talk about how, like, they're a persecuted minority, like, everybody is. Like, get over it. Like, literally everybody is. And obviously there's a dominant, primarily, like, white colonizers are the dominant and i agree with you there 
But in general, like everyone has a persecution story. So it's kind of interesting. But that's interesting. But like dic- p- political terms like dictator and fascist and stuff are really lost within the online bubbles. But OK. Terrible to his people and committed war crimes. Like both of those things can be true. We don't have to swing the pendulum. I think that's what's wrong with this. We swing the pendulum so far. We're like either super pro patriotic America, America or we're like. Yes, so Osama bin Laden was right. Like that is that is overcorrecting to a point where it's like I'm having to get on here and tell y'all that Osama bin Laden was still a bad person. But we're all still educating ourselves and learning. But like, let's be critical thinkers. Mm-hmm. Let let's just let's just think critically. I've been seeing a bunch of people reading Bin Laden's letter to America for the first time, and they're feeling like shocked and grossed out that it's as reasonable as it is in comparison to what they were expecting and i'm seeing a bunch of people in their i think there's a mistake in thinking like your enemy is stupid people do this in politics like oh trump is an idiot and i'm like really like you think trump is an idiot like what does that mean oh bin laden's an idiot saddam's an idiot all these people are idiots because they disagree with me and it's like they have their own perspective and their own reasoning and their own justification and their own everything as well as you and that's what really you have to learn about radical acceptance is everybody is you playing a different level a different game a different story but everyone is you so every time you walk around and you think like i'm the one who really knows what's going on or i'm the one with a real story i'm the one who's truly in love everybody feels that way bro Everybody literally thinks they're the one who really knows what's going on. Comments being like, did you forget the violence? Did you did you skip over all the, the religious extremism? Did you miss that part? Did you did you forget what he did? And to those people, to anyone who would have that reaction, to seeing that reaction to bin Laden's letter to America, how do you respond? to people who support the US military. When you see somebody supporting the US military, openly showing support for the US military, are you vastly more disgusted with them? You ask them if they just haven't noticed all the religious extremism? Do you ask them if they've forgotten about all of the violence? Are you proportionately disgusted? Because you should be vastly... I don't know if you can ask people to be proportionally disgusted unless they're being very, very introspective and radically accepting. Like, everyone is the same, doing everything, like, because they're self-interested. In a good way, bad way, that's just, like, what we're doing as humans. But I don't think it's fair because ultimately we are self-interested and so we always feel more justified than somebody else. It's kind of like that phenomenon, like, when you're driving and somebody drives badly, you're like, they're a bad driver, they're awful. But when you drive badly, you're like, okay, but, like, I had to in this moment because, like, um, here's my justification for why I just needed to be a bad driver in this moment, but not because I am one, but because I really needed to do this thing right now. Do you get what I'm saying? More disgusted. If not... Why isn't your reaction proportionate? Okay, I can quite quickly answer this one. The US military operates under state authority and the state has a legitimate monopoly over the means of violence, which means that a terrorist organization in comparison does not because it doesn't operate underneath state authority. The US military are not a terrorist organization. That is- Um, Yes. Because we play this game and it's reasonable, right? We have to know the differences between why we classify things a certain way. But I don't think it's that – I think it's pretty naive to think that the country you're in is going to sway people into believing someone is more of a terrorist group than others, right? Again, when you watch like propaganda from even Russia or – from North Korea or from other people, you'll see the way they depict the U.S. And it's kind of how the U.S. depicts other people. So it's hard to say, like, who really knows what's going on? And that's the question that we have to ask ourselves when we're viewing any kind of media, but mostly when we're hearing any kind of story, right? Because there's, again, objective T truth. There is a real truth to all of this. There is a real truth, and I don't know that we'll ever have access to it, but somebody really knows if bin Laden was truly a terrorist or if he was well-meaning for his people in the same way the U.S. is. Like, there is a real truth to it. And we can try to go off evidence, and that's a really good place to, like, start from. But ultimately, there is, like, a real truth. And I don't know if we'll ever know. In the same way that when we revisit history in the U.S., we'll talk about, like, the Founding Fathers, and we'll talk about America, 
and how it was established. And it's Thanksgiving today, guys. So happy Thanksgiving on this wonderful day where we slaughtered tons of natives, or at least around this period of time where we celebrate this sort of like fake, like concept that we all got along today. But like this country, America was founded on like the slaughtering of natives. And so that's kind of a reality we have to accept but when you retell the story you'll hear conservatives even say like slavery was really great you know some slave owners really love their slaves like bro okay and again maybe maybe your version of love but maybe we're defining love differently and that is the part that we have to accept like monsters didn't do this humans did this humans decided to justify this treatment of other people and i don't think bin laden is without that possibility and that's the issue that I see a lot of the time, right? Is again, like we're all just doing what we think is right. We're all just doing that. And again, some of it is performative or some of it is not. But whether or not we could ever prove it's performative is difficult. Because look at how we try to do it in our small spaces on the internet. Is Hassan truly upset about Palestinians being murdered? Because to be honest with you, I don't buy it. But I think it's nice that he's pretending to be. But I think Ethan is distraught over this issue with Israel and Palestine. I think he it shows in his face. He's got rings for days. He's literally, it's physically taking a toll on him. Hassan looks beautiful as always. I just don't believe Hassan is actually as like impacted. And I think that that's fine. That's like pretty common. I think when you're in politics, eventually you become desensitized. And so it's not going to impact you as hard. But at the same time, that's interesting, right? Like, what does it mean to have a real connection to the pain of other people? Like, what does it mean to have an authentic pain and connection to people you do not know? You know what I mean? At least at least Ethan has connections to Israel versus Hassan has no connections to Palestine as far as I know. So that's probably also why Ethan was more impacted. He actually knows people who disappeared that day, from what I understand, like during the festival. So it would make sense that he would have a more... A, con a, a deeper connection to it right so again I'm not trying to say like one is better than the other I'm just trying to say like I want us to be able to empathize with everybody but that means to say that everyone's having a real experience connected to this and then somebody's having a political experience connected to this and that's where the question of authenticity can come in is the distinction whether we like it or not whether that fits into some kind of conspiratorial narrative, it is what it is. Vegan says, I don't see many politicians for us in the U.S. They're for themselves. The politicians on their, are on their side than their opponents. U.S. citizens are last. Our major parties aren't for us. We're not for each other. That's the dilemma. We're not for each other. And so that's the reality we need to face. Our politicians are just people and they're a reflection of us. And we're not even for each other. Look at Thanksgiving as such a divisive holiday. Some people celebrate it. Some people don't. Some people think you're literally a bad person for having lunch with your family on Thanksgiving, right? And I'm not mad at you over it. Like, that's okay if that's how you want to celebrate it or not celebrate the day. But we're not even for each other. We don't even know what it means to be for each other, right? And so, again, like, there's something to be said about our politicians are a reflection of us. Who really goes into politics, right? And then who, like, we keep voting for them, which is fine. But again, we're all having a different relationship with, like, what does it mean to be for us? Like, can politicians even be for us when we're not for us? Like, look at COVID. Do you remember y'all fighting over toilet paper? Do you guys remember everybody hoarding toilet paper? When shit hit the fan, the world did not come together. Certain bubbles came together. But it certainly wasn't, like, it's not like the world came together, right? It is. And in order to prevent any kind of misuse of that legitimate monopoly over the means of violence, the U.S. military, like the U.S. state, are under very clear and very strict, although very complicated, laws and regulations, which keep it in constant check and balance. Now, of all things that I thought were... Checks and balance from, like, who, right? Like... Even right now, a few of the world's governments are asking for people to intervene with Israel and Palestine, and people aren't really doing it. So again, like, yes, the world has checks and balances with bigger governments. I agree. That's, like, the ideal. But what does that mean if Israel can still, like, murder thousands of Palestinians in the name of what? Like, you know what I mean? So it's, like, checks and balances, yes, but... Also, we allow our friends and family to get away with things we wouldn't allow a stranger to get away with because they're our allies or we know them or it's more politically savvy, which I don't 
you know, I get if we're playing the politics game, I'm t I totally get it. If we're playing the humanitarian game, like we shouldn't be killing civilians like this, you know, no one should. But get me out and through this fortnight of very terrible depression because I am one of those people who plays Al Jazeera news live 24 hours a day and therefore. Girl, you need to meditate away from the news though. Al Jazeera is great, but like also meditate away from it. My entire sense of this world has just been shattered. Um, <laughs> I never thought that it would be TikTokers frothing at the mouth over Osama bin Laden that would get me through this, but they have, and I only have them to thank for that fact of the matter. And that is the only thing that I can thank them for. But I've had a bit of time to think about this, and this is something that I think needs to be approached in a very delicate manner. This is something which has clearly created, at least on TikTok, a divide between people who are claiming that these TikTokers are stupid, that they are privileged Westerners who haven't seen war or haven't seen real true violence, that they hate US foreign policy and the US to such an extent that they will support anything or anyone who is as anti-America and anti-American foreign policy as they are. And Okay. And okay. the U.S. to such an extent. Uh, this says POV, the world could barely swallow Osama bin Laden's letter to America. Wait until they find out they've been conditioned and positioned their entire lives to hate all indigenous and people of color. I mean, propaganda be wild. But obviously, I do believe that the framing of. I do believe in like a general. Every bubble is correct in different ways. Like every bubble is having a real relationship with reality. But I do believe in the overall reality that like white people in power have overall been incredibly racist towards people of color and used a narrative to spin anti-people of color propaganda to uphold their power and like diminish others obviously like again i know people have a really hard time examining this and listen i know Everything is true in one way. In one way, I'm white enough to pass, so I haven't had much problem. And in another way, I know I'm not white enough to pass because I've seen people get treated differently than me in situations. And I'm like, interesting. And also, I know my parents, though conservative and vote for Trump, they know there's a racism in America that they have a hard time admitting to sometimes because they didn't, they literally didn't teach me their language because they didn't want me to have an accent because they knew I'd be treated worse if I had one. So even though they'll spin a narrative sometimes in their minds where they're like, there isn't white supremacy, like there isn't a whiteness to America, you can be anyone in America and succeed because as immigrants, they really have succeeded here. They also didn't teach all 10 of their children their native language, even though they still speak it to this day, because they didn't want us to have an accent because they knew our life would be harder. But why would our life be harder with an accent in America if mm, there's no discrimination? Why would our life be harder in America if I spoke another language that was from the Middle East if there was no problem in America? Why during 9-11 did my parents say like maybe we should tell people less we're from Iraq because we're in war with them right now? Isn't it funny how my parents supported the Iraq war like uh, everyone did? Only now, 20 years later, my parents are like, this is the worst decision we ever made. And I'm like, mm interesting it's like okay yeah so maybe if we're gonna regret the war after 20 years in Iraq we maybe want to hesitate with bombing Palestine maybe just a little bit maybe hesitate a little bit and that they will support anything or anyone who is as anti-America and anti-American foreign policy as they interesting and uh if a child can learn two languages at the same time they will literally have no accent I don't know. All my cousins who are bilingual, they definitely have a little bit of an accent. So I don't know. Um, some of them have heavier accents than others, and they were raised in America and learned English and Arabic or Sudith. And I definitely hear an accent with them. So I don't know if that's – I don't know why that is, but I don't know. Up to 10 years, I believe. Maybe that's the case. Because even my husband, he, when he speaks English, he can almost speak it like an American, almost. So – you almost don't know he's Croatian. But he also tries to like maintain his Croatian accent. So, you know, so it's interesting because after some time, like he does have the least Croatian accent out of his friends, but he also speaks English the most out of all of them as well. So that could be true as well.
they are. And then on the other hand, I see people arguing that Osama bin Laden said some pretty base things or Osama bin Laden actually had justifiable reason for his explanations as to why he committed the most heinous and atrocious human acts recorded in modern history. I think both sides are very for understandable and in America. Why does she say it like that? Hold on, let's listen to that again. Arden actually had justifiable reason for his explanations as to why he committed the most heinous and atrocious human acts recorded in modern history. I think... I I don't know if that's Kidology's opinion. I doubt it. Maybe that's his opinion. I think she's quoting somebody else. But like, do we really think 9-11 was the most atrocious modern like act of terrorism? Do we really think that was the worst thing that ever happened in modern time to civilians? Because that is Western propaganda. That is American propaganda right there. Like that is Western propaganda to think 9-11 was the most atrocious modern act ever like the carried out by terror like am i confused did i mishear that i think both sides are very for understandable and mm. personal reasons no doubt caught up in their own narrative in their own sort of creation of a dichotomy between who is right and who is wrong and vice versa and as i said this is perfectly understandable but i do think that sometimes we really miss the middle ground in a lot of things and i know this mm -hmm. is contentious this is terrible stuff that i'm suggesting the possibility of nuance the possibility Possibility she's that not talking about 9-11 what she's just not talking about what was she talking about wait did i miss it what was she talking about she said what justified what bin laden did she's not just talking about 9-11 Okay. That we may not always be right and that the other side may not always be wrong. So I'd like to take this opportunity to look at some of these now notorious TikToks and to provide some context and some explanation from my perspective as somebody who is just very interested in foreign policy and in especially the idea <laughs> of international relations, the sort of theoretical basis and the historical information that informs it, especially in our modern age since okay. the formation of what we now know as the modern nation state, which actually is a very, very recent phenomena, a very fragile one, which has only truly been with us since 1945, mm -hmm. after the Second World War. So take mm -hmm. from this what you may. I know I'm a woman speaking about politics and therefore I will not be taken terribly seriously. <laughs> But do bear with me. This morning I read Letter to America, which is Osama bin Laden's letter to America explaining why he attacked Americans. And I am ashamed to say that I not only have never read this letter, but I didn't even know this letter existed. It's wild and everyone should read it. If you haven't read it yet, read it. However, be forewarned that this has left me very disillusioned and i feel the same exact way i felt when i was deconstructing christianity i feel ah bubble popping bro they're having their mind blown i already knew about the bin laden letter because i was so heavily in politics my whole life so it wasn't new to me when it started to resurface i had known about it before but this is this is what it feels like when you're genuinely popping so many bubbles. Now imagine there's like billions of bubbles to pop. So every time you feel like you're deconstructing, you're like, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. There are like billions of bubbles. Uh, a little bit just confused, like I have entered into another timeline. Mm -hmm. What is this? Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. so go read it. I find it fascinating that people are discovering Osama bin Laden's letter to America. And not just this letter to America that was on The Guardian and has since been taken down, but also his collected works and interviews that have been transcribed in which he basically says the same key points and phrases, makes the same excuses and explanations for why he is doing what he is doing, why he and Al-Qaeda are 
against the West and specifically the United States. And by the United States or America, Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda then as now, even the small factions that are still left, mean not just American soldiers, but specifically and even more importantly, American civilians. That is American men, women and of course children. Now I'll get back to this because this is a key emergence and a key conceptual lack of distinction mm. between combatants and civilians that is itself a very new or at least in terms of since modern history new idea that really took hold. Okay I just need to say the Kidology's blue nails are amazing and I'm living for them. Oh, it makes me want to take care of my nails better. Beautiful. Old after the end of the Cold War. And it especially took hold in what we now know and we now call fundamentalist organizations, specifically Islamic fundamentalist organizations. Now in this sort of reaction video or whatever this is, I am going to be focusing heavily on Islamic fundamentalism, not in the way of sort of looking at the history of Islamic fundamentalism or quoting scripture from the Quran, but instead crucially looking looking at its theoretical underpinnings, looking at how it has been interpreted and made sense of by especially experts in international relations and experts in counterterrorism and in terrorist groups. A book that is actually really good on this was written by... Interesting. I saw that one of you said we should look at the letter together and I went to go find it and NBC News is reporting that TikTok removed the hashtag for letters to America from its search function after videos about Osama bin Laden's 2002 letter to America went viral. Uh, and then, kid is right, the um, Guardian took down the link to the letter. So, let's see. Um, <clears throat> why it went viral. Okay, bin Laden's letter. Some TikTokers sympathize with bin Laden's letter. I think, you know, in some ways it's really important to sympathize with the enemy. Again, how you treat your enemy says more about you because it's very hard to humanize people. But if you recognize like you are someone's Osama bin Laden, I think it's much more humbling of an experience. And the dilemma is like some people will always want to hurt you no matter what. But again, it's like, what's the justification for it? In terms of politics, you always want to be on the winning side. In terms of humanity, you always want to be on the less violent side. And so I don't think bin Laden gets to be um, hoisted up as like a less violent than the United States, right? Like people be violent, okay. But I will try to look for this letter. The former vice chancellor of Oxford University. So to start with, what do we talk about? What do we mean when we use this term that's very broadly used, terrorism? Very simply, I think terrorism is the deliberate targeting of non-combatants for political purposes. So it is the means that a group use. So that means that the group uses not the ends that seek. Not the ends that, that they, they seek, seek mm. which should determine whether or not a group is a, a terrorist group. In the book, I actually go through a more elaborate definition with listing seven crucial characteristics that I'd be happy to get into. But the key is that uh, it's the means used, not the ends that are being sought. And I would argue that unless and until we're willing to label a group whose goals we consider legitimate, a terrorist group. Palestinians in Gaza, West Bank, strongly support Hamas October 7th attack. A total of 75% of the respondents agreed on the October 7th attack. 74 agreed that they support a single Palestinian safe from the river to the sea. So FYI, so this is the part of the humanitarian or the political perspective. So obviously, like if you're in the West, if you're specifically America or Israeli connected, you obviously politically want Israel to win. It is in your best interest as an American that Israel wins against the Palestinians. As a humanitarian, it would be much better if they managed to create harmony within the Middle East so they could live either separate or amongst each other in some capacity. But from a political perspective, if you are in America, it is in your best interest that Israel wins. If you are not an American and you are obviously in Palestine or in Gaza, it is probably in your best interest that Israel loses. And again, no matter which side wins or loses, the justification for violence, I think from a philosophy of perspective, is always going to be wrong. 
and from an ethics and morals perspective, I think is wrong. But from a political perspective of winning and investing in your family, it is right. And so when you're having that conversation, no matter what side you're on, it's always going to be, of course, the Palestinians support Hamas. They voted them into power. Like no matter how the U.S. feels about Hamas and what they did on October 7th, which was, by the way, horrendous and awful and evil, right? I do think what Israel is currently doing to Palestine is also awful and evil. And for Britney's morals and values, I can't support either from a humanitarian perspective. But politically, I'm an American and I'm queer and I'm a minority. And as a person whose family is from Iraq and was persecuted by Muslims there, obviously it's not in our best interest to invest in a primarily Muslim uh, religious country that is going to not push Western values. So politically, of course, you have to be on Israel and America's side. But from a humanitarian perspective, there's just there's n no justification for murdering civilians at the rate that Israel is doing. And so that's the dilemma is like from a political perspective, if Palestinians are going to support Hamas, then f because that's in their best interest, which makes sense then as an American and a Westerner, you would want to support Israel and America from a political perspective, which is different than a humanitarian one. Group, If they deliberately target civilians to achieve those goals, then we're never actually going to make progress in countering terrorism. And I would argue that when trying to understand these things, it is very important not to just look at the primary text, such as Osama's letter to Americans or letter to the American people, or to look at something like the autobiographical writings of political figures. Okay, sorry, Cyber News is like reporting that the letter from Osama bin Laden did not go viral. And I'm like, um, we're all talking about it. It went viral. Like if we're all talking about it, it went viral. That's what it means. Like, okay. So I can't find it right now. Everybody's removing the letter. So I'm trying to find it, which is so sussy. Like, why can't I access this letter? Like, why can't I find it? of individuals who are writing about their story because inevitably one of the downsides from I think right now our culture's emphasis on lived experience our culture's emphasis Ooh, uh yeah yeah great question Brittany do you have bubbles you feel like you still need to pop billions absolutely I'm getting my bubble popped all the time I'm like oh my gosh amazing oh my gosh what what did I just recently get my bubble popped on hold on what was it I was like, holy crap, what? It was great. I love that feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always, guys. There are so many bubbles I haven't explored yet. On the personal and therefore you cannot invalidate the personal experiences of somebody is that we lose that very crucial thing, which is critique, which is analysis from outsiders looking in, seeing how you are incapable of seeing yourself from a different and I think very crucial perspective. So I would suggest that when reading some primary text, some political pamphlet or autobiography from a religious zealot or a political figure, a revolutionary, or some kind of done hard by individual and poor soul trying to get the world on his or her side, that you don't just read what they have to say about how they see the injustices committed against them that they have to fight against. You look at bodies and people who are experts, people who don't have a vested interest, who are specialists in not just these individuals, but in the ideals, in the theocracies, in the worldviews that these individuals... Okay, hold on. I think I found it. Osama bin Laden's letter to America transcript in full. Uh, is this so... Do they read it out? Well, it's an ad. ...have underpinning all of their thought and all of their sense of being ill-treated by the world or by a specific group. And I will not kid you, this is difficult to find. Okay, hold on. Let me see. I found it. Ha ha. I found it, didn't I? I found it. Look at me. I'm amazing. Honestly. Okay. So, okay, I'll link this then. This is from Newsweek. I found it. <laughs> Yo, that beat though. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So, excuse my dyslexia. I'm so sorry. You can read it on your own if you'd like. I linked it. Oh, thank you, Discord. Um, I found it on a Russian search engine. Love that. Okay. I also found it on Newsweek. So I'll use that. Um, <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, the full transcript of the letter can be found below. Please note that this document was written with the propagandist intent from an international terrorist and mass murderer. Okay, thanks. Um, November 24th, 2002, in the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful, permission to fight against disbelievers is given to those believers who are fought who are fought against because they have been wronged and surely Allah is able to give them believers victory. So first and foremost, as an atheist, I just want to stop it right there and point out the fact that I'm not sure that I'm ever going to be on the side of anyone who evokes the word of God, including the United States. Thank you. I just feel like God is a disillusion, but you do you. Moving on, those who believe fight in the cause of Allah and those who disbelieve fight in the cause of, guys, how do I say this word? Tut, tugut, tut, tut. I assume T-A-G-H-U-T, anything worshipped other than Allah, Satan. Okay, see how I can't get on board with Bin Laden? You guys are delusional if you're going to get on board with such a religious fanatic. Jesus Christ. Okay. So fight you against the friends of Satan. Ever feeble is indeed the plot of Satan. Okay, thank you. Quran, quote. Some American writers have published articles under the title, quote, on what basis are we fighting? These articles have generated a number of responses, some of which adhere to the truth and were based on, Isla on Islamic law and others which have not. Here we wanted to outline the truth as an explanation and warning, hoping for Allah's reward, seeking success and support from him who does not exist. Well, that's my, I'm putting that in. He's not real. Your God's not real. Well, seeking all this help, we form our reply based on two questions directed at the Americans and also Americans using Jesus Christ as a reason to do violence are insane. Thank you. Question one, why are we fighting and opposing you? And question two, why are we calling you to and what do we want from you? Great questions. As for the first question, why are we fighting and opposing you? The answer is very simple. One, because you attacked us and continue to attack us. Fair. You attacked us in Palestine. Fair. Palestine, which has sunk under military occupation for more than 80 years. Facts. The British handed over Palestine with your help and your support to the Jews. True. Who have occupied it for more than 50 years. Years overflowing with oppression, tyranny, crimes, killing, exploit, exploit. Expulsion, destruction, and devastation. The creation and continuation of Israel is one of the greatest crimes, and you are the leader, leaders of its criminals. In political terms, obviously, like I said, we want, as the West, you would be invested in Israel and, and America. And if you're in Palestine, you'd want to invest in Palestine. Obviously, Palestine is a real place. I think it's insane to say that it's not. Obviously, what happened with Israel being established is at the expense of the Palestinian people. I think that's obvious. And then again, the question is from a humanitarian perspective, like, I feel like all of this is just men fighting with their dicks. I said, I, I said what I said. I said, what I said. Okay. War is men who can't talk it out. They're useless. They bring violence to themselves, to the civilians, to the men, women, and children who are dependent on them. They cannot figure out how to get along, so they decide to fight it out. Fine. But men are so useless when it comes to this. And then they tote themselves with these big, strong leaders. Look how great we are that we all went to war and killed thousands of innocent people. Okay? These aren't, this is not a woman-led ac activity. This is not, this is for this is not, even though women absolutely adhere to the patriarchy and absolutely support these endeavors, women are also not making these choices. These are like men's decisions, and I am not a fan of them. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Okay. Um, uh, okay. And of course, there's no need to explain or prove the degree of American support for Israel. The creation of Israel is the crime which must be erased. Mm, see, erased is genocide talk, but okay, you do you. Each and every person whose hands have become polluted in the contribution towards this crime must pay its price and pay for it heavily. And P.S., if you think if you think Israel should give Palestinians all of that land back, then as Americans, you better get ready to move your asses out to your home countries because the natives, you're sleeping on their dead like their graves. OK, so just like FYI, OK, FYI, like, again, either we're going to accept that humans are going to cause war and and land will be taken over and it will be unjustified in a sense and it will be criminal in a sense but also very human and animalistic because that's what we do we destroy each other for territory fine if we can radically accept that then we also must accept like the changing of time and how populations will change and become differently diverse and how things will be on the backs of violence or if you want to erase something like this then again, like a lot of the recent American history that was pretty recent for us that we're still talking about, our land, America that you're on, so the same American TikTokers that are like Bin Laden had a point, you need to move back to your migrant country. Like you need to move back to your countries. 
where are you from? Where's your lineage? Ireland? Britain? Where's it from? You need to go back there and give the land back to the natives because that's ultimately the argument in terms of political, like, political destruction means taking over territory of someone else's country. Any means possible. It's very bad from a humanitarian perspective, but that's the game we're all playing. So remember that Americans reap the benefit of what our, what your ancestors did, because my people weren't here yet, <laughs> what your ancestors did by taking over American land, which in some ways is justified because it's political, it's war, it's what it is. And other ways from a humanitarian perspective is awful. So again, like, we need to have a conversation about what is our expectation of living in a world that benefits from this past behavior and its current behavior, because that is also the way like humans are going to human. So again, we have to have conversations about that, right? Yaya says my grandma is still, uh, my grandma still has a beautiful map of Palestine from the 1940s. Gorge, love it. Texas belonged to Mexico, so they can stay again so I can stay okay let's go so again when we're having conversations about like what is this like are we all gonna go oh yeah okay very good point Cree. I'm black so again if you have black lineage and they the whites took your ancestors from their homes and you don't even know where that's from like again I don't know where we're supposed to end and stop this if it's not just to stop the violence and to learn to get along but the question is have we evolved enough as a species to literally have this moment of peace because right now, bin Laden is making the same argument that Israel is making. It's making the same argument everyone is making. It's making this, we're all making the same argument. You hurt me, I hurt you, you hurt me, I hurt you, you hurt me, I hurt you, you hurt me. It's like, okay, I get it. And then what are we, children? Are we going to go back to the very beginning of like, well, I get to hurt you because you hurt me? It's like, what are we? It's like, we're children. We're literally children fighting with people's lives. It's like we're not evolved enough to just stop the violence. We're like, no, we're going to win. And if I don't get my way, then I'm not playing along, which sure, politically is the right way to go about it. Politically, you do not want to lose. You want to win. Humanitarianly, you're supposed to put down your weapons. Ma'am? Okay, let's keep going with Bin Laden's letter to America. Okay, so... Um, each and every person whose hands have become polluted in the contribution towards this crime must pay its price and pay it for it heavily. It must pay for it heavily. Ah, vengeance, violence, beautiful. We love a call for violence, don't we? Look at this. Why are you guys so up and like he's literally doing the same thing he's upset about? Doesn't don't they understand that? Retaliation is violence. Hello. It'll bring us both laughter and tears to see what you have not yet tired. Wait. It brings us both laughter and tears to see that you have not yet retired from re of repeating your fabricated lies that the Jews have a historical right to Palestine, as it is promised to them in the Torah, as it was promised in the Torah. Burn your religious bullshit. Obviously, Jews have been in the Middle East this whole time. Jesus was a Jew, an Arab Jew. Hello. So again, like Jews obviously have a place in the Middle East. And the question is like, where do we all have homes? And Palestine is a place that existed. And I understand like, again, it, see how they still don't want the Jews there though? Like we all think we have a promised land and it's because of your fucking religions. I did, I'm being very anti-religious in this section because as much as I want to radically accept you, if you took away all your religious narrative, either Israeli or Palestinian, what do you have left? You have a bunch of people that have some historical tie to some land. And what does that even mean? Right? So again, we have to take religion out of it for this to be reasonable, but you're not going to because you need it to justify your place there. Okay. Anyone who disputes with them on this alleged fact is accused of anti-Semitism, which is true. Okay. This is one of the most fall fallacious, widely circulated fabrications in history. The people of Palestine are pure Arabs and original Semites. It is the Muslims who are the inheritance of Moses, peace be upon him, and the inheritance of the real Torah that has not been changed. Muslims believe in all the prophets, including Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, and peace and blessings of Allah be upon them all. If the followers of Moses have been promised a right to Palestine in the Torah, then the Muslims are the, the most worthy nation of this. None of you get anything. How about that? How about that? None of you get any of it. Listen to the way they're all justifying it from a religious doctrine. Who fucking cares about your religion? Jesus Christ. Like, do you guys hear yourselves? Do they do they all hear themselves? I am promised this land because my invisible God that I've decided exists has told me this. Get your head out of your ass, Bin Laden. Peace be upon him because he's dead now. But like also like same with Israel. Like all y'all need to stop referencing some holy book. And then we can have a conversation, right? I love it. I oh, just so frustrating. Okay. The blood pouring out of Palestine must be equally revenged. 
Men are so fucking violent. Jesus Christ. You must know that the Palestinians do not cry alone. Their women are not widowed alone. Their sons are not orphaned alone. You attacked us in Somalia. You supported the Russian atrocities. Oh, my God. Against us in... Chin how do you say that? Chin Chinia? The Indian oppression against us in Kashmir and the Jewish uh, aggression against us in Lebanon. It's been violent, kids. No one's disputing that. Under your supervision, consent, and orders, the governments of our countries, which act as your agents, attack us on a daily basis. These governments prevent our people from establishing the Islamic Sharia using violence and lies to do so. These governments give us a taste of humiliation and place us in a large prison of fear and subdual. These governments steal our, mm, what's this word, and mass wealth and sell that to you at a paltry price. These governments have surrendered to the Jews and handed them most of Palestine, acknowledging the existence of their state over the dismembered limbs of their own people. Okay, who, oh my gosh, this is a lot from my dyslexic ass. Okay, um, the secular Israeli Palestine would be most ideal. Oh my God, it would be so fly, bro. It would be so fire if we had an, a secular Israel, Israel and Palestine, like all the Gen Zers that want to get along and chill together. That would be amazing. I feel like boomers love to call for violence, but if we could just get the Gen Zers all together, like I feel like it would be a little bit better. You know what I mean? I feel like it would be a little bit better. Hold on, I'm just making sure I'm not missing any comments that I should read. Um, okay. I don't really see how this would be bubble popping if you're already on the left. I've heard a ton of this sentiment, but without this hardcore religious twist. Um, most of the people that are having their bubble popped, I don't think are progressives or they're young, so they haven't studied politics. I'm pretty sure they're more liberal, right? You know, Brittany, I feel like all your content has been so controversial lately. It's getting spicy. <laughs> you know, look, people told me not to talk about these things, but I really just want to make it clear why I think... I could offer some people some like peace of mind through this process because I've had to go through it a thousand times myself. Being Middle Eastern but also American is very complicated, especially during this like war. People have like come to me and been like, talk to me about what's happening. And I'm like, um, from what perspective? Like, let's talk about it. Right. So, OK, let's go. And again, I'm very anti-religion in a sense because I think religion is like the cause for so much destruction and studies are coming out talking about how it leads to so many mental health problems in children who don't believe. And so again, and okay, I want people to live on the planet together. I want to live with Muslims and Christians and Jews, but you all need to stop killing people in the name of your religions, all of you. You need to stop evoking God's name and doing destruction. Like genuinely, if you want us to get along, we need to stop being so violent. That's all I'm asking for. Everybody put down their weapons and get the fuck along. And if you don't want to do that, then we're going to play the politics game. And the politics game says the guy with the bigger nuke wins. So make your fucking decisions, okay? Make your fucking decisions. Okay. Now, okay. Your forces occupy our... Nope, stop. You're, you steal our wealth and oil at poultry prices because of your international influence and military threats. This theft is indeed the biggest theft ever witnessed by mankind in the history of the world. Dramatic. Everyone always thinks their war is the biggest. Like, okay. Everyone always thinks, like, their shit is the biggest. Like, I don't know if I'm really contending with all of our ancestors here, but okay. <coughs> oh, my God. I'm dying. Hold on. Oh, my God. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Your forces occupy our countries. You spread your military bases throughout them. True. You corrupt our lands and you besiege our sanctity, sanctities to protect the security of the Jews and to ensure the continue, 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 mm, continuity of your pillage of our treasures. I mean, you have starved the Muslims of Iraq. Let's go. <laughs> Where children die every day, true. It is a wonder that more than 1.5 million Iraqi children have died as the result of your sanctions. You did not show concern. Yet when 3,000 of your people died, the entire world rises and has not yet set down. True. But okay, again, no justification here to kill civilians. Thank you. And also ISIS is the reason like a lot of my relatives experienced a lot of death. Saddam is the reason like a lot of my relatives experienced death in religious persecution for being Catholics in the Middle East. Chaldean people, you know, Abraham, like, okay, like we have connection to the Middle East as, as well. And we were not welcomed by the Muslims. So like, okay, some of us get along and some of us live together. But let's not pretend like the Christians and the Muslims get along all the time. Jesus, it's like y'all can't get along. The Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims are always fighting like fucking cousins. Sit down and get along. Okay. 
Eat some dolma and shut up. You have supported the Jews and their idea that Jerusalem is an entire, is a, in their, nope, let's start again. You have supported the Jews and their idea that Jerusalem is their internal capital and agreed to move your embassy there. With your help and under your protection, the Israelis are planning to destroy the al Casa Mosque under the protection of your weapons. Uh, is it Sharon? Entered the El, oh, I can't, I don't know these words. El Akas Mosque to pollute it as a preparation to capture and destroy it. These, tra by the way, I, you want to, you want to hear, um, you want to hear some American propaganda? Every mosque that was ever built around our towns were always seen as possible terrorist units. And I think there's something about that that's interesting, that everyone thinks every mosque is a terrorist hub. Like that's, that's an, that, okay, that's. OK. <sighs> yes, the Protestants and the Catholics can't even get along based. Exactly. God, these religious people are so it's because they literally think they're objective. They literally think they have the ultimate truth. So they feel justified in doing this to other people. These tragedies and calamities are only a few examples of your oppression and aggression against us. It is commanded by our religion it is commanded by our religion and intellect that the oppressed have the right to return the aggression everyone feels that way everybody feels that way can we have some um hummus and get along literally please but everybody feels that way habibis listen to me everybody feels like they are oppressed everybody feels like they have the justice within them everybody feels like they have the right to cause violence and this is where i'm asking you to evoke some deeper sense of humanity and ask yourself when will we put down the weapons when will we stop fighting this is my question for you do we have enough introspection, enough love for humanity, enough love for ourselves to stop murdering each other? The answer is no, but I'm still going to encourage you to think about it. Okay. Um, these try, uh, blah, 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 blah. Do not, do not await anything from us, but jihad, resistance, and revenge. <laughs> no. Sorry. See, bro, now we can't, we're not, Okay. Is it in any way rational to expect that after America has attacked us for more than half a century that we will leave her to live in security and peace? From a human perspective, absolutely not. From a humanitarian perspective, um, maybe there's something we could work out. But also, that's what I mean to say. If you are an American, you are the enemy of these people because your government is the enemy of these people. If you're a Palestinian, you are the enemy of Israelis because your government is the enemy of Israelis. It is why it is so hard to be a civilian in war where your leaders put you in this position because now other neighboring countries will always see you as the bad guy and they'll always wonder if you're, a uh, political word here, in quotations, a sleeper, right? Like people will look at you and always wonder like, are you a terrorist? No matter what side you're on, if your people and your leaders have given you propaganda to tell you that they are. And yes, by bin Laden's definition, America is a terrorist. Israeli, Israel's are ter Israel is a terrorist state by Palestinian argument. Okay. So now we all agree we're all terrorists. Can we all stop being terrorists? And then that's the next question, right? And the question, the answer is no, thank you. Humans are going to be human. Get your merch. Because again, you have to make the decision to keep, like to stop the fighting. But we can't. Because remember, even if Bin Laden won and you guys like felt good about that, even if Palestine wins and everything goes to peace, you know, then you're going to start worrying about micro issues like women's rights or gay rights or poverty or homelessness. Because even if your country wins, you still have those inner issues because humanity is always an evolving baby who's like learning how to walk <laughs> you know what I mean <clears throat> I do think it's interesting Izzy says that Americans don't really know what it's like to live through war in your own soil and terrorist attacks are the closest we get to experiencing that fear and violence so true we are so privileged in that way which again is why Americans are probably so afraid of losing because honestly like the losers have to deal with a totally different fear every day if you've seen any of the videos of Palestinians suffering right now and you've seen the the videos of Israelis doing pretty okay. Yes, Israelis live on a on a daily basis of being fear like a t fearful of a terrorist attack, and sometimes it happens. Absolutely, it's really scary, and I'm not trying to like say it's not, but I'm trying to say Palestinians are also living in that fear. And so the question is, when are we going to stop evoking this fear in each other? 
When are we going to stop doing it? And the question is not anytime soon and not anytime before because humans are not ready to stop doing it. I can't even get YouTubers to get along on the internet. I know that sounds really shallow, but keep in mind when I see YouTubers not getting along, myself included, I'm like, why aren't we getting along? How hard is it to get along? Because we can't, because we tell different narratives, we have different relationships with truth, and we literally are staking them on our reputation. And so again, we can't do it. And so our governments can't do it. The world on mass is a reflection of us as a whole. So remember when I read these things and I'm like, yeah, of course they're going to be violent. I can't even get my cousins and I to agree on our family history. Hello? <sighs> okay. <clears throat> you may just, uh, you may then dispute all of the above does not justify aggression against civilians for crimes they did not commit or offenses in which they did not partake. This argument contradicts your continuous reputation that America is the land of freedom and it, its leaders in the world. Therefore, the American people are the ones who choose their government by the way of their own free will, a choice which stems from their agreement to its policies. Thus, the American people have chosen and consented to and affirmed their support for the Israeli oppression of the Palestinians, the occupation and sur Patient, you're so, I can't say that word, of their land and its continuous killing, torture, punishment, and expulsion of the Palestinians. The American people have the ability to choose and refuse the policies of their government and even to change if they want. Do we? How do we feel about that? How do we feel about that, right? Think about it. So I look at Palestinians and think, why did you elect Hamas? They look at us and think, why did you elect who you elected? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. We don't know. We feel like we have to. Oh, they feel like they have to. Palestinians felt pushed into a corner and felt like they had to elect Hamas. They made that decision. That doesn't mean they deserve to be killed. Just because the civilians of Palestine decided to vote in Hamas does not justify their murder. Just because Americans elected leaders that caused destruction around the world does not mean we deserve to be murdered. But bin Laden's justifying our murder because we chose our government. And we're going to justify Palestinians' murder because they chose Hamas. It's pretty shitty. That's a pretty shitty situation that we put each other in. And these leaders justify it and seek revenge and retaliation the way Americans were so ugly and so violent after 9-11 in the same way bin Laden is in this letter. Of course he's justifying it from his bubble's perspective. He is justified. Just like America feels justified. Just like you feel justified when you fight with your friends and you feel justified when you fight with the world and you feel justified when you force violence down people's throats and you feel justified denying people civil rights and taking away their right to bodily autonomy, you feel justified because you're the good person and they're the bad person. The American people are the ones who pay taxes, which fund the planes that bomb us in Afghanistan, the tanks that strike and destroy our homes in Palestine, the armies which occupy our lands in the Arabian Gulf, and the fleets which ensure the blockades of Iraq. These tax dollars are given to Israel for, its continued, for it to continue to attack us and penetrate our lands. So the American people are the ones who fund the attacks against us, and they are the ones who oversee the expenditure of those monies in a way that they wish They're through their elected candidates. Also, the American army is part of the American people. It is these very same people who are shamelessly helping the Jews or the Jews fight against us. The American people are the ones who employ both men and their men and their women in the American forces which attack us. This is why the American people cannot be innocent of all the crimes committed by Americans and Jews against us. All of the almighty, who doesn't exist, legislated the permission and the option to take revenge. Thus, if we were attacked, then we have the right to attack back. Whoever has destroyed our villages and towns, then we have the right to destroy their villages and towns. Whoever has stolen or whoever has stolen or wealth, then we have the right to destroy their economy. And whoever has killed our civilians, then we have to we have the right to kill theirs. The American government and press still refuse to answer this question. Why did they attack us? Why did they attack us in New York and Washington? If Sharon is the man of peace in the eyes of the Bush, who's Sharon? Who's this Sharon? Who is this? Then we are also the men of peace. America does not understand the language of manners and principles. And we did. Uh, well, bleh, bleh. So we are addressing it using the language it understands. I mean, based as for the second question that we want to answer. What are we calling to you? No. What are we calling you to? And what do we want from you? The first thing we are calling you to is Islam. I'll do it right now on screen. I'll do it. Are you fucking. 
No. No. The first thing we are calling you to is Islam. No. Sharon, former PM of Israel, I think. Okay, thank you. No. Respectfully, no. Disrespectfully, no. Absolutely not. I'm not listening. No. No. And these Christians and Catholics need to get their head out of their ass and realize not everybody wants to be one of you either. I don't want to be religious. To force religion, which is a belief, okay, down the throats of people to justify your wars is bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's because of your religions that people are dying and you're sitting here and holding on to them anyways. Your religion is not all that. It's bullshit. From the Jews to the Muslims to the Catholics, your religions are bullshit. But yeah, you keep doing you, babes. And again, keep in mind as the word beco- the world, I hope it becomes more secular. But the irony, of course, is that secular people tend not to have children and the religious do. So it probably won't ever actually happen that way. But this is bullshit. The first thing we uh, that we are calling you to is Islam. Okay, no more being gay. No more having bodily autonomy. No more adhering to secularism. No more atheism. No more any of it. Are we ready to do that? I'm certainly not. That is not what's going to happen there, but I understand why they're doing that. It's the same way the Christians do it. I call you to God. Even yesterday, my parents go, oh, Betsy, we're, we're, um, we're watching this saint's story and we hope this, we're praying to this saint or through the intervention of this saint to help convert you and your husband. And I'm like, okay. It's like every time you talk to the religious people, they're always trying to convert you. And it's like, have you ever thought that like nobody wants to be you? Have you ever thought that maybe like, no, thank you? I love my parents. I love my religious brothers and sisters, but I hope to God one day humans evolve past this. But they probably won't because it's a part of our journey. The religion of the unification of God, a freedom of, from associating from uh, associating partners with him and a rejection of this, a complete love for him, the exalted, a complete submission of to his laws and the discarding of all options according theory, orders, theories, and religions which contradict with the With the religion, he sat down to his prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Islam is the religion of all the prophets and makes no distinguish, distinguish, uh, and makes no distinguish between them. Peace be upon them all. It is to this religion that we call you the seal of all the previous religions. It is the religion of unification of God, sincerity, the best manners, righteousness, mercy, honor, purity, piety. It is the religion of showing kindness to others, establishing justice between them, granting them their rights and defending the oppressed and the persecuted. (laughs) The religious are so narcissistic. The religious are so narcissistic. They're just so nar. All religious people, I'm sorry, you're all narcissists. I'm going to say it right now. I'm putting down my foot. I'm putting down my gay foot. They're just so narcissistic. If you're with God, Brittany, you'll be free. I hear it from the Catholics. If you're with Muhammad or Allah, you'll be free, Brittany. I hear it from the Muslims. If you follow the Torah, Brittany, you'll be free. I hear it from the Jews. Everybody shut the fuck up. We don't want to play your dumb game. It's a dumb, dumb, dumb game. It's such a dumb game. It's I love humans are going to human. Radical acceptance. Everyone follows a religion. But it's such a dumb game. Can you imagine a kid being like, play pretend with me? Do it right now. Play pretend with me. And I'm like, no. And they're like, do it. Play pretend with me. It's like, I don't want to. And it's like, play pretend with me or I'll fucking kill you. And it's like, um, who's the psycho here? Who's the literal psycho here, sir? Religion is so fucking annoying. Okay. Whatever. I'm glad they found peace today. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is the religion of enjoying the good and forbidding the evil with the hand, tongue, and heart. You don't think it's evil to kill civilians just because, like, their government killed you? You don't think it's fucking evil to kill civilians? So let me tell you this, modern progressives or whoever is on the side of Bin Laden's letter, don't you understand this is exactly America? Bin Laden and America, they're basically the same person. They're just on the other side of the coin. They're using the same fucking justification. Israelis? Oh, if you're anti-Israel and you're pro-Palestine, Israel is making these same arguments. They're all the fucking same. When will you realize they're all the fucking same? They're all the fucking same. Same justifications, same plea to God, same bullshit about revenge, same bullshit about defense. It's all the same fucking argument. They're all using the same argument and you're all falling for it because it sounds better. If you're going to pick a side, pick the side that's going to invest in your family's wealth and prosperity. At least do that. But let's be real. Okay, that's all they're doing. That's all they're all doing. And that's all we're going to end up doing. But ultimately, the humanitarian like answer is to all put down your goddamn weapons. 
but she won't do it because your God evokes violence and everyone, everyone's God does. Everyone uses God as a reason and excuse for violence. They use God as a reason to deny you civil rights and they use God as the reason to oppress you. That Everybody does this from Catholics to Jews to everybody does it. I don't want to hear any excuses. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. Okay. <clears throat> okay it is the religion of jihad in the way of allah so allah's word and religion reigns supreme it is and it is the religion of unity and agreement on the obedience of allah and total equality between all people without regarding their color sex or language well unless they're americans and then you know <laughs> It really, Bunny says it really sucks uh, when some religion, uh, religious people act like you are wrong, like your whole existence and say things um, just because you don't want to convert. Well, again, they're really doing it because they really think they have the answer. So the radical acceptance of this is that they really genuinely mean well and they think they have the answer. They really want, they really think it will set you free if you do this. And so I don't blame them. I don't think they're evil. I just think they're very human, you know? And at the end of the day, like, that's the problem is I don't think these people are evil. I don't think it's evil that Catholics want to deny you civil rights because they think their God tells you to. I just think it's really fucking arrogant. And it's such a two bubble thing to do, which is like, you know, most humans are this way. Most humans live in a bubble and think their bubble is 1000% correct and everybody else is very wrong. Right? That's what I'm trying to make people understand. I wish I could show every uh, single person the Avatar, The Last Airbender. You know what's crazy? As Americans will watch Avatar, The Last Airbender and be like, oh my God, are we the fire nation? Do you know when I was watching Avatar, The Last Airbender as a kid, I thought they represented Muslims and Bin Laden. Liter that's a true story. Because that was the enemy at the time, right? So again, like when we have these conversations about who is the fire nation, the answer is, according to my two podcasts ago I did, we're all the fire nation. Everybody is the fire nation. Everyone is the fire nation. Everybody thinks they have the right to do what they're doing. Everyone thinks if the world was just more like me, the world would be a better place, which is why I hesitate to make prescriptions. It's why I hesitate to tell people if you were just like me, you'd be better off. Oh, if the world was more like Britney, wouldn't it be better? Well, maybe for people like Britney. Obviously, I want you to have religious freedom, but not at the expense of other people's civil rights. And so we're going to come to a head and we have to make a decision in that moment of conflict. What do we do? Right? <sighs> okay. Now. <clears throat> oh, my God. It is a religion whose book, the Quran, will remain preserved and unchanged after the other divine books and messages have been changed. The Quran is the miracle until the day of judgment. Allah has challenged anyone to bring a book like the Quran and even 10 verses like it. The second thing we call you to is to stop your oppression, lies, immorality, and debauchery that is spread among you. We call you to... Oh, are you ready? Are you fucking ready? Give me a cigarette. Somebody give me a cigarette. Ooh, okay. We all... We call you... To be the people of manners, principles, honor, and purity. To reject immoral acts of fornication, homosexuality, and intoxicants, gambling, and trading with interest. Bin Laden want to shut down the party tonight. Bin Laden want to shut down the party tonight. Ma'am, we're not shutting down this party, ma'am. No. He wants you to stop your fornication and homosexuality and intoxicants. I'm not a big fan of gambling, so I'm kind of on the same page there. What do we think about that? What do we think about that? Anybody on Bin Laden's side? Who were the liberals or the progressives who read this letter and were like, based? I mean, are you fucking dumb? God, you can't even like give in. Who were, who were the gays who read this and were like, this is based? And I'm like, he's literally saying you shouldn't exist, you dumb fuck. Jesus Christ, you're also fucking stupid. I love you so much. It's not even your fault that you're that dumb because you have no reading. I bet they didn't even read it. I bet they literally didn't re get to this part because they're fucking stupid. We call you to all of this that you may be freed from which you have become caught up in. That you may be freed from the deception lies, deceptive lies, that you are a great nation, that your leaders spread amongst you to conceal you from the despicable state in which you have reached. It is saddening to tell you you are the worst civilization witnessed by history of mankind. I mean, tell that to our high speed Internet and our gay pride parades. OK. 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 
Okay. To be honest, Brittany, I get I get most people only like two paragraphs in. Yeah, I bet they read the first two paragraphs and fucking peaced out because they're all fucking idiots. And they deserve the world they're in. And may whatever terrorist group decides they're the enemy. Do you know what I'm saying? You're always somebody's enemy. You dumb fuck. Okay, anyways. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, so, okay. You are the nation who, rather than ruling by the Sharia of Allah and its constitution and laws, choose to invent your own laws as you will and desire. Oh, no. Freedom? Shut up. You separate religion from your policies. Oh, sir, you have not been to America. Contradicting the pure nature which affirms absolute authority to the Lord and your creator. <laughs> You flee from the embarrassing question posed to you. How is it possible for Allah the Almighty to create his own creation and grant them power over all the creatures land and grant them all the amenities of life, then deny them that which they are most in need of, knowledge of the laws which govern their lives? You are the nation that permits usury, which has been forbidden by all religions. I don't even know what the fuck that word is, ma'am. The action and practice lending money at an unreasonably high rates of interest. <laughs> Bin Laden's like anti-capitalism, bruh. Don't get me wrong. For sure. Like America's greedy. America will take you for every penny. America does not care about its people in that regard. America be a fight for money. I get that, bitch. But you're anti-homosexuality. So again, like if America will give me gay rights, but like I have to deal with like not falling for scams. I'll take that over like no gay rights and no scams. It's like, wow, I can't even have a hello. Yeah. Interest. Like I tell that to the IRS, like fucking they'll they'll it's true. It's true. You know, it's it's true. Like I'm not even exaggerating. The IRS is bullshit and the amount of interest they they charge you interest every month and it goes up over time. It's bullshit. They don't want you to get out of their hole. Right. It's insane. It's, it's bullshit. Okay, he is trying to kill us because he loves us. No, he's trying to kill us because he ain't us. But like he is us. We're all each other. We're all the fire nation. And that's why we need to all stop and chill. But we also could be the earth nation and pretend there's no war happening like in Ba Sing Se. Ba Sing Se was not innocent, bros. They were not innocent, keeping their people ignorant of the war. Okay. Um, okay. As a result of this, in all its different forms and guises, the Jews have taken control of your economy through which they have taken control of your media and now control all aspects of your life, making their, you their servants and achieving their aims at your expense. Precisely what Benjamin Franklin warned you against. Ooh, you saying Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin against us, bro? Whoa. Bin Laden's family is so rich as if they didn't come from, uh, as if they didn't do some, some such shit to get that dough. Amen, girl. He grew up Western. I mean, <laughs> Okay, first of all, I love this fucking reference. This is Gorge. But also, like, I don't know. I, like, the Jews have taken control of your economy. I'm going to be real. Like, I can't tell. Are the Jews doing very well or very poorly? I feel like the Jews are not doing as great as they should be if they're, like, in charge of everything. Are they playing a game with us? Like, I just genuinely feel like they're not doing as good as they should be doing if they're really in charge. They really suck at the game they're playing. You are a nation that permits the production if that's that's a joke a little bit, but like, seriously. Okay. You are the nation that permits the production, trading, and usage of intoxicants. Drinks, 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 shot, 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 shot. You also permit drugs and only forbid the trade of them. Even though your nation is the largest consumer of them, we should be more free drugs, make drugs legal, make drugs legal, make drugs legal. Okay. I love that. I love that. He's such a party pooper. Bin Laden's like no fun. You will have no fun. Yeah, definitely love that. Gen Zers are silly if they have not read this full letter before deciding it's awesome. You are a nation that permits the act of immoral, uh, acts of immorality. P.S. Sign up for my OF. I'm putting out a killer shoot right now. And you consider them to be the pillars of personal freedom. They are. Thank you. You have continued to sink down into the abyss from level to level until incest has spread amongst you. Okay, that's like fair. But also the Middle East is so incestual. We all marry our cousins. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Oh, it, oh, shut the fuck up. You you literally marry off children to old men. Shut the fuck up. In the face of which neither you sense the honor nor the laws you object. I'm sorry. Am I fucking retarded? Mm, am I dumb? <laughs> am I dumb? Um, Am I forgetting something about Islam? Am I forgetting something about Muhammad? What was that thing about Muhammad and children? What was it? I, you know, guys, I'm just forgetting. I don't know what it is, but it sounds like debauchery. 
Who can ever, um, who can forget your President Clinton's immoral acts committed in the official Oval Office? You mean the one where he was don't ask, don't tell? That was also bullshit. Or the one where he took advantage of an intern. After that, you did not even bring him to account. I mean, didn't he get literally impeached? Then he made a mistake, after which everything passed with no punishment. Is there a worse kind of event for which your name will go down in history and remembered by nations? He is like an old grandma. Um, do you know Bill Clinton got a blow job in the Oval Office and you all didn't even do anything? Didn't he get impeached? Hello, ma'am? And also went down in history is like cringe and also what did he want us to do throw him in jail for getting a blowjob what do you want us to do kill kill bill clinton for getting a blowjob well, like what does he want us to do like what does he want us to do like what like what's uh, 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 okay sir as if bin laden ain't getting blowies bro come on bin laden you know you love the blowies before you died of course but okay bin laden was getting blowies done okay please please uh like bin laden was faithful okay okay come on this thing reads as a, like a comic skit, bro. This thing is a comic skit, bro. At, uh, okay. Blah, 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 blah. You are a nation that permits gambling in all its forms. Gambling really sucks. Like, I really recommend you don't do it. But at the same time, like capitalism. The companies practice this as well, resulting in the investments becoming active and the criminals becoming rich. I mean, I can't argue with him there. You are a nation that exploits women like consumer products and advertising tools calling upon the customers to purchase them. Um, Like the Middle East don't got prostitutes, bro. <laughs> Like, the Middle East ain't taking mad fat shits on prostitutes' faces, okay? <laughs> okay? As if, as if the Bible does not reference literal prostitutes, bro, okay? Listen to you acting like, okay, please sit down. My feminist brain is not going to let you, okay? Bin Laden had, like, four or five wives, which, okay, we're open to open relationships and polyamory here. But was that really for the benefit of the women in that relationship, Laden? Come on, Laden. Let's be real, Laden, Okay? <laughs> This is great. I love reading this. I haven't read this in years. Reading it again, it's so much funnier now. It's so much better too. Reading that he sounds just like America. He sounds like everybody in power. He sounds like every man I've ever met. Um, do you know you guys are mistreating your women over there? Well, they're literally mistreating their women over here. P Laden, please, Laden, sit down, bruh. Sit down, bruh. Okay, you are a nation that exploit. Oh, but I already read that. Thank you. Um, you use women to serve uh, passengers, visitors, and strangers to increase your profit margins. Sign up for my OF. You then rant that you support the liberation of women. Sign up for my OF. Thank you. You are a nation. Um, you are a nation that practices the trade of sex in all its forms, directly and indirectly. God bless America. Giant corporations and establishments are established on this under the name of art, entitlement, entertainment, tourism, and freedom, and other deceptive names. You contribute to it. Th attribute to it. Thank you. Please sign up for my OF. And because of all of this, you have described in history as you have wait. Blah, blah, blah. And because of this, you have been described in history as a nation that spreads diseases that were unknown to man in the past. Um, That's the white people in Europe, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> that is different. But also, please get STI tested and stop having unprotected sex. Jesus fucking Christ. Go ahead and boast to the nations of man that you have brought them AIDS as a satanic American invention. <laughs> A lot didn't be funny, bro. A lot didn't should have been a stand-up comic instead of a fucking terrorist. You have destroyed nature with your industrial waste and gases more than any other nation in history. I mean, honestly, though, true. Tr I'm not going to fight him on that. Laden got points. Despite this, you refuse to sign the Kaito agreement that you can secure the profit of your greedy companies and industries. Your law is the law of the rich and wealthy people who hold sway in their political parties and fund their elect uh, election campaigns with their gifts. Behind them stand the Jews who control your policies, media, and economy. Okay, on the first part, yes. But the second part, if the Jews are really in charge, you guys are doing a very bad job. I'm, like, very confused by your choices. Because, like, the Jews are, like, they should have more power then. Why? I don't see it. Like, am I stupid? I'm not seeing how the Jews have power. They feel really inconsequential to me. Like, they seem like a really suffering group of people. Um, Salvage Bar, thank you so much for the super chat. Preach, thank you so much. I appreciate you for being here. Guys, thank you for being here on Thanksgiving, the day of slaughter, and the day of eating turkey, which, you know, based for both. But also, oh, like, it's very bad. If you don't want to celebrate today, I, I support you. If you want to celebrate today, I support you. Based either way, it's based to celebrate or not celebrate, because I understand it's a very complicated holiday. But of course, like, you can just also enjoy your life and not care about either of those things. Um, okay. Thank you for being here with me today. I appreciate it. Um, okay. <sighs> okay. Okay. 
that which you are singled out for in the history of mankind is that you have used your forces to destroy mankind more than any other nation in history. Again, I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, but sure. Not to defend principles or and values. Well, that's not true. See, we do defend principles and values. They're just not, they are yours. They're just in a different light. Remember that America and Israel is making the same excuses to destroy Palestine and other places around the world that bin Laden is using in his own manifesto. So remember, like, everyone's the fire nation, and that's why everyone is actually good, because everyone is doing the best within their values, and that is also why humans will continue to destroy each other, because we think our values are objective when they're not. Okay. But to hasten and to secure your interests and profits, you who dropped a nuclear bomb in Japan, even though Japan was ready to negotiate and end the war. You're right. For sure. We shouldn't have done that. How many acts of oppression, tyranny, and injustice have you carried out? Oh, callers to freedom. Tons, bro. Literally tons. Hard agree, but also like Spider-Man meme. Spider-Man meme, you fucking dumb bitch. Sorry. R.I.P. Laden be dead. But you know what I mean? Like also like Spider-Man meme. Okay. Spider-Man meme. Okay. I'm going to, I'm not, the world does not deserve my children. The world does not deserve my children. You, the world is so fucking dumb. You do not deserve my children. I'm swear to God. Oh my God. Okay. Let us not forget one of your major characteristics, your duality in both manners and values, your hypocrisy and manners and principles, all manners and principles and values have two scales, one for you and one for others. Yes. Yes. Welcome to humanity. Welcome to humanity. You literally are, a sh he's showing. People are so fucking, uns look how, am I not the smartest person in the whole room? I'm just kidding. <laughs> am I, but is my work not making more sense to you? Tell me my levels and my work isn't making more sense to you. Bin Laden is writing a whole manifesto where he's like, I'm better than you. So I'm going to fuck you over. And he's literally like, oh, America thinks they're better than everyone. So they, they can justify fucking everyone over. And I'm like, Spider-Man meme. Yes, Discord, Spider-Man meme. Uh, tell me my work isn't fucking fire. Tell me like. I am trying to bring to the surface like, yeah, dude, we're all doing the same thing. So are we going to stop? No. All right. May the biggest bitch win. Are we not going to stop? May the biggest bitch win. And Bin Laden is one of the biggest bitches in history, but he lost. So rip, rip, you know? Okay. I said, ugh, men are so fucking dramatic. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my God. Men are such mean girls. They're fucking dumb. Okay. Okay. The freedom and democracy that you call to is for yourselves and for white races only. As for the rest of the world, you impose upon them monstrous, destructive policies and governments, which you call the American friends, yet you prevent them from establishing democracies. When the Islamic Party in Algeria wanted to practice democracy and they won the election, you unleashed your agents and the Algerian army onto them and to attack them with tanks and guns to imprison them and torture them. A new lesson from the American Book of Democracy. Yeah, but like you would do the same, right? So that, that's the thing. We all feel like everyone would do the same. So we're going to do it first. And I'm saying both of you are fucking dumb. Both of you are the reason the world doesn't deserve my children. And both of you are the reason that the world is like a pain in the ass for everybody. Literally stop. And this is why I say, I'm sorry, if women ruled the world, if it was all about a woman's world, I'm sorry, this would not, this, I refuse to believe this would be this way. There's no fucking way women would do this. If you look at the suicide rates amongst women and men, women are less likely to carry it out and we don't like to shoot ourselves in the faces because we want to look pretty when we die. Do you think we would go to war as frequently as men? We don't want to go to war. Ew. Like we literally are either going to talk this out or we're going to be mean girls to each other and literally just stop talking. There is no fucking way in a woman's world this bullshit would be happening in like in the way of killing civilians. Like we don't want to fucking deal with that. We don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. I've never met a woman who wasn't trying to appeal to the patriarchy, myself in the past included, who genuinely wanted to do this. But men, men get off on it. Men are like, oh, we're going to fucking kill all their civilians. We're going to kill all their women. We're going to rape everybody. It's going to be so fucking hot. I had a man literally tell me that if we were in the middle of a war zone and we were both in the military together, we were doing a, a, a promo for a radio show to see if we were going to get picked up by a radio station. He said... That if men and women are in the military together and we're in the middle of a w battle, that he would absolutely rape women there because he thought he was going to die. Men need laws to stop them from fucking children. Men need the government to tell them not to do it. They can't even reason their way out of it. Okay? And I am, like, generalizing men right now, but okay? Okay? Like, we need to pay attention. 
we need to pay attention to what we're willing to justify. Isn't it interesting that men don't know very many rapists, but every woman knows a rapist? I'm just saying. I'm generalizing. I'm generalizing very hard. Okay? But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay? And also that same man that said to me on the radio show, that argument, he said it to us, the whole panel, that same man when I was a virgin is the same one who was upset with me for not sleeping in bed with him when I said like I wasn't interested in him in that way. And he said, one day I'm going to drag you off that couch and into bed with me and prove to you what a real man is. Okay, so bin Laden acting like he's better than America in our immorality, talking about how like he's going to eradicate like drinking and homosexuals. How are you going to do that, sir? What are you going to do to gay babies? Oh, you don't want homosexuality to be in your country? What are you going to do with the gay people? What are you going to do with the women who want to do sex work? What are you going to do with anybody? Hmm, okay, sure. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Okay, your policy on prohibiting and forcefully removing weapons of mass destruction to ensure world peace, it only applies to those countries which you do not permit to possess such weapons. As for the countries you consent to, such as Israel, they are allowed to keep and use those weapons to defend their security. Anyone else you who you suspect might be manufacturing or keeping those kinds of weapons, you call them criminals and you take military action against them. Honestly, give everyone nukes and may it land squarely on my head so I don't have to deal with any of you ever again. Okay. Oh my gosh, you are the last ones to respect the resolutions and policies of international law, yet you claim to want to selectively punish anyone who does the same. Israel has for more than, Israel has for more than 50 years been pushing the UN resolutions and rules against the wall with the full support of America. As for the war criminals which you censor and form criminal courts for, you shamelessly attack, no, you shamelessly ask that your own are granted immunity. Mm, sounds like family drama. When my best friend does it or when the when somebody else we know does it, like they must be doing it for a good reason. They should be defended. It's like we can understand the nuance while still calling the cops on our family and friends for doing horrible things to people. This is why I say values over loyalty. Values over loyalty because it, it spans out. I get it. I will visit you in prison. But if you're a truly bad person, like I am calling the cops on you. Right. But of course, America defends their worst because so does everybody else. Everybody does that. How many mothers cover up their, their son's rapes? How many, how many fathers in, in, like pull their sons into bad situations? How many, how many mothers pull their daughters into bad situations and then they justify the crimes or justify the immoral act? How many of us like literally won't call the cops on people we know might be a school shooter? How many of us do not because we're afraid and I get it. I get it. I don't want to get the cops involved. They're not very reasonable and they're horrible. And at the same time, like, if someone in your life says they're going to shoot up a school, you had best call the cops, bitch. Okay? Like, mm? but as we've seen with a lot of these school shooters, their parents knew it was coming and didn't do anything about it. So you think America is not going to try to like, you know what I mean? To, you know what I mean? You think bin Laden is not going to like speak highly of his own men? Okay, come on. Now, okay. Um, <coughs> um, but uh, however, history will not forget the war crimes that you committed against the Muslims and the rest of the world and those you killed in Japan, Afghanistan, Somalia, Lebo Lebanon, I was going to say Lebron, Lebanon and Iraq will remain a shame that you will never be able to escape. I mean, true. It was very anti-human to do those things. Well, it was very, an no, it was very pro-human. It was very anti-humanitarian to do those things. Um, but I also think it's anti-humanitarian to be anti-homosexuality, right? So you don't win the war, Bin Laden. I'm so sorry. Like, I'm sorry, if you're anti-gay rights, if you're anti-trans rights, if you're anti, like, bodily autonomy, you are no better. You're the same to me. Ultimately, you're the same. If you're going to call trans people groomers, if you're going to call gay people groomers, as if the heterosexuals have not been grooming children since day one, as if the heterosexuals who claim to be the majority and they claim there is no such thing as even gay people in the world, then how are gay people grooming children if gay people don't exist? If trans people don't exist, how are they grooming children? Isn't it just cis people then grooming children? Do gay people exist? Do trans people exist? You keep saying trans people are grooming children. But if transness isn't real, then who is grooming children? I wonder. It will suffice to remind you that the, your latest war crimes against Afghanistan, in which densely populated innocent civ civilian villages were destroyed, well, it doesn't matter, right, Laden? Because you said... If they destroy your civilians, you can destroy theirs. So America is saying you destroyed ours, so we're going to destroy yours. 
a tit for a tit, as they say. Bombs were dropped on mosques, causing the roof of the mosque to come crashing down on the heads of the Muslims praying inside. Super bad. Don't do that. You were the ones who broke the agreement and the Mahajideen, um, when they left Quad, Quanst, I don't want to say that, bombing in Yanji Fort and killing more than a thousand of your prisoners through suffocation and thirst. Disgusting. Allah alone knows how many people have died by torture at the hands of you and your agents. I agree. The universe does know, and it's not okay. Your planes remain in Afghan skies looking for anything remotely suspicious. You have claimed to be vanguards of human rights and your Ministry of Foreign Affairs issues and your reports containing statistics of those countries that violate any human rights. Please do not talk to me about human rights when you literally made an argument about anti-homosexuality five paragraphs ago. That's what I'm saying. People are so hilarious. They're like, I really believe in human rights, except for the gays and the trans and the women. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, men are so exhausting. These men, how about that, everybody? These men are so exhausting, Jesus. Okay. Um. However, all of these things vanished when the Mahajin hit you, and you then implement, blah, blah, and then you implemented the methods of the same documented governments that you used to curse. In America, you captured thousands of Muslims and Arabs, took them into custody for with neither reason, court trial, not even disclosing their names. You issued newer, harsher laws. What happens in Guantanamo Bay is a historical embarrassment to America and its values, and it screams into the faces, <coughs> it screams into your faces, you hypocrites. What is the value of your signature on any agreement and treaty? I mean, I agree, but also, like, hello? Like, that's what I mean. Like, I agree, like, I agree Guantanamo Bay is awful, but, like, what are you offering instead? That's what I'm saying. Like, as a people, like, we all have to make a decision. Like, okay, cool. You're right. Like, for sure. But also, like, if we side with you, what do we get? No gambling, no drinking, no gays, no, like, sex work? Mm, seems lame. Eh. I'd rather contend with capitalism and fucking Kim Kardashian. Okay, thank you. It's easier to get the Christians on board with the gays because we're just louder and more aggressive than they are than to get the Muslims on board with it. OK, so as just like an investment, if you're already telling me, Laden, that if we side with you, we're not getting the gays like I'm just going to like bully the white people in America some more until they give me my rights. Thank you. OK, um, what we call you to thirdly is to take an honest stance with yourselves. And I doubt you will to do whatever. And I doubt you will do this to discover that you are a nation of without principles or manners. I mean, isn't everybody and values and principles to you are something in which you merely demand from others, not which you yourself adhere to. Everyone thinks this, what a narcissist. Everyone's such a narcissist. Everyone thinks this. Everyone thinks that Democrats don't have values. We do as Republicans. The Republicans don't have values. We have values. You don't have values. I have values, bitch. We all have values and they're all bullshit and constructs. We also advise you to stop supporting Israel. And to end your support of Indians in Kashmir, the Russians against the Chechnyans, Chech Chechens, this is the Chechnyans, Chech and to also cease supporting the Manila, Manila government against the Muslims in southern, southern Philippines. We also advise you to pack your luggage and get out of our lands. <laughs> we desire for your goodness and guidance and righteousness, so do not force us to send you back as cargo and coffins. Ooh, sounds like a threat, Laden. Sounds like a threat. But based off his own reasoning, if they threaten him, he gets to retaliate. And you threatened us. So retaliation in the nation, in the nation. Boom. Like, again, it doesn't matter. Men are dumb. Okay. Sixthly, we call upon you to end your support and corrupt uh, of the corrupt leaders in our countries. Do not interfere in our politics and method of education. Have you not seen Homeland? Leave us alone or else expect us in New York and Washington. Mm, another threat. I love that. I love how men are just sitting here like, if you don't fucking get off my fucking shit, I'm going to fucking come all over New York and fucking Washington, okay? We also call you to deal with us and interact with us on the basis of mutual interests and benefits rather than the policies of subdual theft and occupation and not to continue your policy of supporting the Jews because this will result in more disasters for you. So basically, if you support the Jews, we're going to fucking come all over you. So the U.S. and the Jews were like, we're going to squash you beforehand. And in Israel, they have pride parades and their military pays for trans surgeries. So again, politically, if you're in America, your best interest is to support Israel and America. If you're in Palestine, your best interest is to support Hamas and anti-Israel propaganda. 
and I understand why you would chose, choose either depending on your bubble. I really do. But it's bullshit the way everyone is acting like someone is better than the other. The only way they're better is in your own self-interest. That's the only way in which people are actually better in this situation when both are literally calling for violence. America's going to be violent and Palestinians are going to want violence because of Hamas, okay? So the question is, when you only have the choice of two types of violence, what do you do? Ugh, political term here. You choose the best of two evils. So I, I mean this with peace and love. Like, I, you have to choose your best self-interest. And America is more progressive than the places they're contending with right now. And Israel is even more progressive. I've been invited many times to Israel Pride. Okay, score one. The military pays for trans surgeries, score two. And the women in Israel that I know feel like they have a pretty good life, score three. Everyone feels like they have a good life in their own version of oppression because it's what they know. Catholics think they have a great life, and maybe they do. There are people who are gay and Catholic and celibate because they feel like that's better than being a practicing homosexual. People are Muslim and gay and feel like it's better to be in a Muslim country than to practice their homosexuality. Fine. We all pick our poison. And my poison comes with capitalism and the struggle of the IRS, let me tell you. But I'm going to pick it over, right? Now, to be fair, I do live in Croatia right now because it's more of a vibe. But also there are going to be consequences. Yeah, there are going to be consequences to that, like double taxation, 60% of my income to both governments, maybe, right? Like there are going to be consequences because each government plays its own rule and you have to play the game that matches and like suits you best in the long run. And a Muslim world is not going to suit me. I'm so sorry. I would love that to be the case, but like based off of their leaders and what they're saying, like it's not a vibe, right? America, because of the economy, it's just not a vibe right now. It's not a vibe right now. It's a real struggle. It's just like a different kind, right? Sage says, I agree. An eye for an eye is immature. But if you disagree with something and have the opportunity to make a change, especially if you were attacked, doesn't it make sense for his own interest to attack? Yes. So yes, in the same way the U.S. is justified and Israel is justified, I think Palestine and Hamas are also justified politically. But humanitarily, they're both wrong. Like, it's just like if you were going to do an eye for an eye, then everyone is justified in their violence and no one can act like they have the moral high ground. That's exactly how I feel about all these YouTubers who keep calling each other out. It's like, why are you taking the moral high ground when you're doing the same thing to each other? You know what I mean? So again, to me, like, of course, politically, you're both justified. You both feel like you're right. But from a humanitarian perspective, neither of you are correct because both of you are using violence as a means of justification for oppression. And it's bullshit. And says that's what's crazy, the fact that people don't see that this is just about self-interest, protecting one's group, and it's not about gotcha. It's not a great gotcha about human rights, literally. It's like, you know what I mean? It is one of those things. Okay, let's go. Um, if you fail to respond to all these conditions, then prepare for a fight with the Islamic nation. For sure, dude. Like, I get it, right? The nation of uh, monotheism that puts complete trust on Allah and fears none other than him. The nation which is addressed by its Quran and with the words, quote, do you fear them? Allah has more right than you should fear him if you are believers. Fight against them so that Allah will punish them by your hands and disgrace them and give you victory over them and heal the breasts of believing people. Breasts? And remove the anger of their believers' hearts. Allah accepts the repentance of whom he wills. Allah is all-knowing and all-wise. Okay, love that. Sounds crazy because religion's crazy, but okay. The nation of honor and respect, quote, but honor and power, no, but mm, but honor, power and glory Allah belong to Allah and his messenger Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and to the believers, end quote. Quote, so do not become weak against your enemy, nor be sad, and you will be superior in victory if you are indeed true believers. Okay. The nation of Matradam, the nation that desires death more than you desire life. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, let's see. Hello. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to, I'm handling my, I'm letting the adults handle my taxes. I'm paying people to do it. I don't know what I'm doing with it. So don't even worry. We're contacting the right people. I was just mentioning it because it's like, I have to learn this new game of taxes and I, it's exhausting to me, but don't worry. We are paying professionals to worry about it because we certainly do not have the spoons to learn tax law. So I am trusting people that are smarter than me to handle it. Don't worry. Okay. Um, 
Okay. <sighs> Think not of those who are killed in the way of Allah as dead. This is a quote from the Quran. Nay, they are alive with their Lord and they are being provided for. They rejoice in what Allah has bestowed upon them from his bounty and rejoice for the sake of those who have not yet joined them, but are left behind, not yet martyrdom, that on them no fear shall come, nor shall they grieve. They rejoice in grace and a bounty from Allah and that Allah will not waste the reward of the believers. End quote. The nation of victory and success that Allah has promised, quote, it is he who has been sent his messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him, with guidance and the religion of truth, Islam, to make it victorious over all other religions, even the polytheists to hate, hate it, even though the polytheists hate it, <coughs> end quote. Quote, Allah has decreed that virally, 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 I can't read. It is I and my messengers who shall be victorious, all power, almighty, end quote. The Islamic nation that has been able to dismiss and destroy the previous evil empires like yourself, the nation that rejects your attacks, wishes to remove your evils, is prepared to fight you. You are well aware that the Islamic nation, from the very core of, this, of its soul, despises your haughtiness and arrogance. <laughs> Men. <laughs> if the Americans refuse to listen to our advice and our goodness, guidance and righteousness that we call to them, then be aware that you will lose this crusade. Bush began. Just like the other previous crusades in which you were humiliated by the hands of the Mahajin, fleeing to your home in great silence and disgrace. If the Americans do not respond, then their fate will be that of the Soviets who fled from the Afghanistan during their military defeat, political breakup, ideological downfall, and economic bankruptcy. This is our message to Americans as to answer to theirs. Do you know? Nope. Do they now know why we fight them and over which form? form oh, oh my God, Brittany, read. Okay, hold on. Do they now know why we fight them and over which form of ignorance by the permission of Allah, we shall be victorious. <sighs> oh. So basically have we learned that the answer is by reading this. Okay. Love it. Great. So basically what did we learn guys? Oh, the, that was exhausting. Jesus save me. Jesus take the wheel, take it from my hands. Cause I can't do this on my own. I'm gonna let it go. Anyways, listen. Okay, so what did we learn? Humans are gonna human. All the bubbles think they're correct. They use it to justify violence because they think they have objective truth, values, morals, beliefs, ethics. Literally people live and die in bubbles. They pop bubbles, then jump into a bubble. They literally have an awakening where they're like, oh my gosh, um, whoa, like I just realized America was wrong. And then they hop into a different bubble where I'm like, okay, are you going to immigrant to there? Because go bitch. That's why I become like a little bit conservative. I'm like, fine, leave America, go. Fine, leave America, go. Right? Because at, like sometimes, right? Like there's like that narrative where it's like, oh, you think you're going to survive better over there? Go ahead, bitch. Go ahead with your OnlyFans and your modern feminism and your progressive values. Go ahead, bitch. Go. Have fun, bitch. Go. I'd like to see you survive, bitch. Go. Like, bitch, you stupid. Like, you're so dumb. Like, okay, God bless you. Like, you're dumb. You're not going to survive there. You're going to fucking like literally not even. You, they can't even eat pork. Muslims can't even have pork. You can't even be Mexican if you're like, you can't be Mexican and Muslim. Think about it. Think about it. Do you really want to be a Muslim if you're Mexican? You can't even be Mexican and Muslim. You can't even have pork. You can't even have pork. How are you going to live? How are you going to live your life? You can't even have bacon. This is why I say like Andrew Tate and all those people, they're just Muslim for money. Come on, let's be real. Sneeko, obviously he was playing a grift game. Come on, he could not go without bacon. This man can't even go without pussy. <laughs> okay, okay, stupid. Anyways, I have to be... I'll be right back and then I'll read your comments and then we'll continue Kidology's video. Body. But I would say that a good place to start is with think tanks that create and have the means to create and to gather very good and representative data. And by think tanks, I mean think tanks that are not in any way associated with any political divide. There are, of course, think tanks that are pro-left or pro-right or what have you. And, yeah. you know, that's something that you just have to find out on your own through looking at their work, through looking at who works within these think tanks etc but i do think that that is inevitably the very long-winded effort that has to go into discovering the complexities of the world and of this thing that we all think we all know which is the truth nobody really knows the truth of anything but we do try our best and i do think that these TikTokers are not trying their best. We're seeing footage from terrorist organizations releasing their hostages and the hostages saying that they were being treated kindly and actually questioning their own government. Mm. 
hostages that are treated nicely by their abductors is that like the slaves who slave owners actually really like them Mm. Mm. what hamas chose to do on october 7th including countless acts of sexual assault on civilians people in israel gaza and the west bank are reeling from the repercussions of october 7th attacks on israel by the militant organization hamas Hamas members killed over 1,200 people, including at least 28 children. According to the data compiled to the newspaper, some of 240 have been taken captive, including at least 33 children. Oh, my God. Why isn't she reading this out loud? As of 15, no, November 15th, the, del- the death toll from Israel's bombardment of Gaza and subs- subsequent ground operations is more than 11,000, including more than 4,500 children. Jesus according to the United Nations Office of Coordination of Human Affairs and the UN Children's Agency, UNICEF. More than 1.6 million people have been made homeless and 22 of Gaza's 36 hospitals are not functioning. Says who? They are just TikTokers, a lot of them. I really wish she had read that out. I'm, I'm sure are very, very young, very impressionable. And so this makes sense. But some of them just based on knowing who they are online as influencers should know better. And they really should do a lot better. Mm, for those asking what's on screen where it says macro, society, individual, and specific, it's to explain like the levels of introspection from down to like the individual specific consciousness all the way down to the, uh, up to the micro. So really quickly, like on the macro, we're all just like a bunch of atoms clashing up against each other. We're shared energy in the universe. And then coming down, we've evolved into humans, which have a society. And the society has individuals. And individuals make up that society, like we're watching right now in Kidology's video. And then those individuals, when they adhere to the society, do well. And when they rebel from the society, get ostracized. And then those individuals can choose to pop a bubble and hop into a different society in which they become an individual within the society. And they can pop a bubble, pop a bubble, jump, 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 jump. Or they can decide to jump all of them and realize like they're a specific consciousness that maybe they would like to live, you know, day to day as like a person not connected to a bubble. Maybe they would like to recognize that they are like a floating consciousness in the universe, that they are evoking free will and having a relationship with themselves. Like, yes, I'm a Syrian. Yes, I'm a woman. Yes, I'm all these things when you look at me. But ultimately, like my consciousness is so much more than that. I am so much more than what society thinks that I am. And because of that, I know that there is something really unique and profound happening in the universe that has nothing to do with God and everything to do with the fact that I'm sitting here right now talking to you. And if we could just all realize that, which we can't because that's life, we wouldn't have conversations like this. Because again, like why would I need to kill you if you're me? Why would you? Why would I need to kill another ball of energy in the universe unless that ball of energy is like for some reason coming at me in a weird way? Like if we're just chilling, like what are we doing? But societies are formed and individuals get ostracized or – uplifted in communities because societies uphold values that are constructs like religion and so on and so forth so let's get into it the way my jaw was dropped last night everybody go read osama bin laden's letter to america but did they finish the letter they couldn't have read the letter we just read because it will literally have you speechless i literally read it last night and i cannot stop thinking about it because it just was like the last piece of the puzzle that just clicked I'm just going to leave it off on the note that that's why Osama bin Laden was labeled as such a big terrorist. And that's why he was the most wanted, because clearly he knew things that the U.S. didn't want other people to know. Osama bin Laden wasn't wanted by the U.S. because he knew things that the U.S. didn't want other people to know. Osama bin Laden's life was brought to an end because of what he had done, because of what he represented as a symbolic figurehead. But also, like, also the U.S. pretends like they're innocent. Okay, but also the U.S. goes like, we're all just here for justice and women's rights and like... Like, obviously, the U.S. does play this game with us where it feeds us propaganda, just like bin Laden feeds his people propaganda. So, like, the U.S. isn't innocent. Like, the U.S., if you're their enemy, you're their enemy. But, like, the U.S. is not above lying about you. 
Because, like, your own mom isn't above lying about you. Come on. Like, <laughs> at least at the point of his death to Al Qaeda and to other terrorist organizations. He didn't leave this earth with secrets that are suddenly being unearthed. I don't know how they are suddenly being unearthed right now via a Guardian transcript of a letter that he wrote or via TikTokers having a sort of existential crisis. Because if you already knew American history, you know the US was already doing this. The U.S. was already just like the U.S. tricked U.S. patriots into voting for the Patriot Act. Just like we convinced conservatives to vote for the Patriot Act while they wanted small government. Okay. This about U.S. foreign policy and the realities of the formation and sustaining of the nation state. But I do think it is incredibly simplistic and naive. No hate to you or any of the other commenters in this comment section. I just generally don't understand how so many people can completely miss the point of the video. So wait, are you saying that you agree with him bringing the towers down? You agree that they want to destroy all Jews and oppress all women? Video. The video that everyone entirely missed the point of. Hey, hey. Being a millennial who actually watched the towers fall and now 39 realizing Osama bin, Laden, bin Laden's letter to America. Are you even paying attention to me right now? Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before, unafraid to reference or not reference, put it in a blender, shit on it, vomit on it, eat it, give birth to it. Me reading oh my this God, That was beautiful, kid. That was great editing. ...has nothing to do with taking on the beliefs of Osama bin Laden or sympathizing with Osama. So you're just understanding why he did it, but now turn it around and understand why the US does it. And then turn around and realize why he does it. And then realize why we do it. Cause we're all the same. We're just doing it in different ways. But like ultimately it's about self-interest, which is like fine, but like also, so yes, radically accept that bin Laden had his justifications and then realize that they're the same justifications the US uses. We are better, we are more moral, we vote for civil rights, we have the answers, we will set you free. Osama bin Laden, reading this letter opened my eyes to what actually went down for 9-11. It made me realize what our government has been helping to fund. Oh, because they're popping the bubble of not even, this is, oh, man, I was so obsessed with global politics and politics in general when I was young. So they're having their bubble pop for the first time, realizing like, Oh, America has its hands in foreign policy. Like, our U.S. bases around the world, like, they didn't just get there on accident. So to be fair to them, they're having a real bubble popped. They're having a real, like, oh, what? Against the Palestinian people for decades yeah. okay. upon decades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is it. It has nothing to do with believing in anything that Osama bin Laden believes. Okay? He was not a good person. Okay? I don't agree with any of his beliefs. I do now, however, see that my classmates and my family members who were all in Iraq after this happened and thought they were going over there to fight for freedom were sent over there because our government is money hungry and full of greed. Mm, but to be fair, Bin Laden does want to kill us. Well, Laden be dead because he lost. But like, to be fair, if Bin Laden wins, we're all dead. Like that's, that's, that's the reality of like war. Someone's got to win and someone's got to die. So like, keep in mind, Bin Laden didn't, in, if you read his letter for real, girl, then you know he also wants you to be Muslim. He also wants you to be anti-homosexuality, drinking, eating pork, having fun. So like, okay, so ultimately, Yes, America went in for their own self-interest. But the question is, like, if you had to, like, it's the same. Bin Laden is there for his own self-interest in the interest of uh, Allah, right? Which is fair. Like, you, he's religious. This is his belief, blah, blah, blah. But that's the point. It's like, you can't say America is more bad than Bin Laden. They're all the same. They all want to kill you. So their side wins more. They want to stay in power. So people are more like them. And then the question we have to ask ourselves is like, who do we want to be more like? And I don't agree with that. I don't agree with innocent civilians being- Me neither. The innocent civilians part is men going to war and not figuring it out. 
But like Bin Laden also guilty bitch. Being bombed and killed for governments wanting money. And power. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the end of it. Now the point that this TikToker makes at the end about the US going in for money and greed, bombing innocent civilians for money and greed, this idea. True that America was going in to create conditions of freedom and that ultimately not being the case is Ob obviously a very, very interesting point. And there is actually a lot of truth in this, mm -hmm. but there is of course far more than meets the eye when it comes to the statement and these declarations, because this is nothing at all new or exceptional about the modern nation state and what they do and what they ultimately have to do and have found themselves persistently in a moral bind about. The actual official creation- I don't really think there's a moral bind. I don't. I don't think there is a moral bind. I don't think anyone has the humility to be in a moral bind about it. I think they're more than happy to do it. Barack Obama was more than happy to do it. Uh, Bush was happy to do it. Biden's happy to do it. I don't think they are in a moral bind. I don't. I don't think Bin Laden is in a moral bind. I don't think anyone's in a moral bind about this. I think that they're more than happy to justify it. In the same way Israel is justifying Palestinian death, in the same way Palestinians are justifying October 7th, I just feel like people are justifying it. They don't actually have a problem with it, which is the problem. ...of what we now know to be and consider to be the modern nation state is naively often attributed to what is called the Westphalian system, which came into being after 1648. From 1648, the concept of the nation state no doubt came into the public imagination more readily, but its actual creation really only goes back to about 1945. The immediate post-World War II era saw the redefining of borders, of territories, and of people in Africa and the Middle East, as well as in Europe. And this defining and redefining of people and borders and territories is nothing new. And it is also something that continues to this very day, not just in the case of borders and people, but also in the way of identities. And nation states foreign policy is so intimately tied to the existence of the nation state that I think sometimes, at least in my mind, they are virtually indistinguishable. Without foreign policy, there is no nation state. And without a nation state, there is no foreign policy. At least that's how I see it. I think that one thing that the liberal psyche has done, as is exhibited in these TikToks, is that it takes for granted how very new the nation state, including the United States, really is. And it also takes for granted what has been and will continue to be the continual brutality of the defining and redefining of nation states. And this redefining and defining of the nation state is something that is very intimately tied to this liberal idea of a right to self-determination, which at least since the end of the Cold War and the the quote unquote victory of the West means that more and more people are entitled to or perceive themselves as entitled to self-determination. Mm -hmm. We kid ourselves in thinking that such self-determination can ever be done entirely peacefully or without violence. And this is something which I think the victory of liberal- Only because as a collective, we don't know how to do it. But if you recognize your own bubbles and what you believe is probably a belief and not founded in fact, you could probably let go of your weapons. We can do it. We, we're capable of it, but we probably won't choose to do it because we'll keep having babies and those babies will have to go through their own like journey. And people will think they're right and people will like use it to justify things. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm ideals has made very difficult to fathom, to comprehend, or to come to terms with in the realm of realism or real politic. Just look at the recent ethnic cleansing of Armenians mm -hmm. from Nagorno-Karabakh. Mm -hmm. This ethnic cleansing and the dissolution of the Republic of Afsak mm. only happened last month. Look at the continued, mm. if not perpetual, violence of the world's youngest, newest nation state, South Sudan. Basically, uh modern history Awful. is not it's bullshit it's so bad mm. 
Sage says, I think the right people are asking the wrong questions. We have systems in place to prevent war from happening. At least that's what we're told. But no one is asking why it's happening. And no one's asking what we can do to reduce harm and provide options. It's because it's too big. You can't. I think humans are evolved animals over time. Like, so it depends on why you think we're here. I don't think humans as a species has literally evolved past their violent inclinations, obviously. So we have those issues, right? If boys will be boys also includes the proclivity to violence, right? Then we haven't evolved past that desire, right? So I think like violence as a means of um, moving things forward is just so natural to us. We're asking to fight our nature, which is very hard, which is why that debate panel I hosted was are humans inherently evil or good is because I think it's within our nature to be violent, which means it's good because it does move our societies forward slash has a victor in mind. And look, no matter who wins, somebody's going to feel oppressed. There's no such thing as a completely free nation. There's even in my own community, I don't have tolerance for all people, right? Usually they're a-holes and that's usually why they get banned, but that is sort of a form of intolerance. So if I had an ideal country, like an ideal world, like we wouldn't tolerate littering and how many of us have littered, right? Like I wouldn't want to tolerate very specific things. And so again, it's like, well, does that mean that person doesn't get to live there? Well, what if they're starving? Do I let them in and I let them litter? And I'm using something very like insignificant as the point. If we want to live in a world that is good for us and we're 8 billion different unique consciousness, what does that mean? Right? Like what does good mean? What are we willing? Like Thanksgiving is one of those holidays where people like literally make it hell for their family members because they want to talk about the genocide of the natives, which I, I understand like fair, but also it's kind of annoying, bro. Shut the fuck up and eat your mashed potatoes. But also, I understand why you want to talk about it, because it's important to you. But also, shut the fuck up and eat your sweet yams. One that is exempt from violence, brutality, and precarity. So in other words, war happens because we allow it to happen en masse. Everything in the world happens because we allow it to happen en masse. Which is why Bin Laden says he wants to kill Americans. He's dead, obviously. But because he thinks we're condoning our American government for doing what it's doing, which we are. Because we don't want to come together to make it work for us. We want to fight each other. And we have beliefs with the United States. And so we're too diverse, which is great. But because we're so diverse, we all have different ideas of how, how to move the world forward, right? So, like, we can't even come together to tell our American government, like, don't do this anymore. Because we don't trust each other to not be, quote, unquote, helping terrorists around the world, right? As an, If you took a poll right now of Americans... Who do you think we should support, Palestine or Israel? The answer should be neither, probably. But it can't be because our American government has ties to Israel. And also, like, innocent people are dying on both sides. So what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Why do we have war? Because we don't know how to stop it. None of us have the answer. The only answer is stop fighting. Which is not really an answer, right? That's like saying stop having sex. But what does make our modern history since the post-World War II era exempt and exceptional is the longevity of these nation states, of a lot, if not the majority of nation states. This really has not been seen before beyond that of an empire, which I mean is not really about self-determination. Empires are about sort of the self-determination within the collective of the empire. So it is very, very exceptional and very, very different to see the longevity of these nation states and the respect. Mm. Seven, Palestine is not Hamas. Yeah, but 75% of Palestinians do agree with Hamas's actions and they voted their government in. So if bin Laden sees the American people as being responsible for what's happening in the Middle East, then Palestinian people are also responsible for what happened to Israel. And yes, even though Palestinians are not Hamas, Palestinians, if they support Hamas, are as much responsible as American citizens supporting the American government, which means not at all and which means absolutely. But it means also not at all, but it means absolutely. Right? Actually based, maybe everyone should just have sex instead of fighting. I mean, agree. Agree respecting, quote unquote, respecting of self-determination of their idiosyncratic and different identities and systems of governance. But one of the things about World War II is that what clearly emerged- Wait, can I ask you guys a question? Why are Palestinian activists tearing down missing posters of Israelis in New York? Why were they taking down the posters? If they're compassionate and empathetic, 
why would they take them down? If we're all passionate and empathetic, which we are truly, we just, we have a way of stopping ourselves from seeing it fully. But like, why would you tear down those posters? And then why would you be pro pro bombing in Palestine? And why would you be pro what happened October 7th? When we, we all have empathy, but we're limited in that empathy. We really are. And we see it in these videos. We see it in the anger. We see it in the, the division amongst each other, right? Like we really do see it. Even though we're all, we all have empathy, most of us literally are, even though humans statistically have empathy, right? We're still able to go to war. We're still able to wish death on Israel and Palestine. We're still able to want violence to occur to one another. So it's like, eh. was know? a very obvious global superpower in the form of the United States of America. And looking at ideals which permeated the American imagination from that point onwards, really, is that there was a naive belief that liberal ideals would conquer all, that it was possible for liberal institutionalism to reign supreme, that people in the world, desperate, different, diverse people could coexist peacefully and respectfully and importantly that this coexistence would be one in which everybody else not just looked to the United States as an example but respected that the United States was on top and was ultimately the best. And because this was the ideal, because liberal institutionalism seemingly, at least theoretically, served everybody involved, everybody got a piece of the cake, everybody was invited to the party, every I don't know who this everybody is. Sage says, I think there's a lot of people running off their trauma right now, for sure, which I don't blame them for, right? And also, uh, Vegan says, the government also doesn't generally listen to the people. The Green Party is the only one that I've reached out to the people, have only one that's re I've seen reach out to the people. They come on YouTube, we'll talk to anyone. I've talked to Howie Hawkins. That sounds like, a, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Sounds like bullshit. What does that mean? It doesn't matter what somebody does. The people is 350 million Americans, all with very diverse ideas of what to do. If they want to listen to the American people, half of them want you to take away civil rights from people and half of them want you to take away civil rights from the other people. Do you get what I'm saying? Half of them, they, it doesn't matter. Okay. Until you, until you stop this like black and white thinking, until you stop the Hassans, I'm sorry, and the conservatives and the Ben Shapiro's like until you literally make these talking points intolerable like we're not going to get along there is going to be the government is representing us the government is giving us what we want chaos and division every time I go home to my parents they literally mention how the progressives and the liberals are destroying America every time I talk to democrats or progressives the conservatives are joining destroying America they're fascists it's like yeah what part of the government isn't representing us what part of the government isn't representing our division and our hate for one another and I'm saying get over it you should all be voting for freedom you should all be saying I want civil liberty and freedom for all give everyone as much as what they need to thrive in the world and support them give them economic like prosperity give them the things they need to survive make life livable but nobody wants to agree on how to make life live livable, right? Like there's no, there's no agreement as a whole. So the Green Party can reach out and help as much as it wants, but who's it really representing? People don't feel represented by it for a reason. So it's, it's meaningless. Everybody enjoyed the party according to liberal institutionalists. It was therefore perfectly justifiable to impose on and to expect people to willingly comply to these ideals the world over. Now this all sounds very beautiful and liberalism is theoretically a very beautiful thing. But one of the flaws of liberalism generically, especially modern liberalism, is that it fails to reconcile itself readily and without contradiction contradiction to the realities of foreign policy, which it oftentimes perceives itself to be exempt from. What liberalism has done, not 
exceptionally on its own, but in collaboration inevitably with a variety of other factors and things, is that it has decimated any chance of homogeneity within nation states or between nation states. It ironically doesn't create homogeneity and really doesn't tend to see a need to create homogeneity under the label. Um... Albina says, bro, there's literally families who have part relatives in Ukraine and part Russia and they hate each other now. I mean, this a lore. My friend, for example, stopped talking to me just because I didn't leave Russia immediately when the war started. I'm just saying, bros, that's why like I look at my own family and if I can't get them on board with like humanizing me and allowing me to have my civil rights, like what do you, you know what I'm saying? Our own families who we love, our friends who we love, see us as the issue right? Like they see us as these things, like these awful things that like want us to take away rights from them when we're just like taking pride in who we are or we're just like loving our life. They see it as like an attack on them, which maybe for some people it is to be fair, right? And that's the issue is like we don't even know how to truly see our loved ones. It's a struggle to even see the people we love the most and to be like, dude, I literally like we're just different. And at the same time, what does that mean, right? Just a reminder that this isn't a politics channel. This is a philosophy channel. Because vegan, though your comments are interesting, you said, I don't know if they don't feel represented by the Green Party. They may not. However, many don't vote for them because of the two-party dominance. Same with libertarians. That's a political answer to a philosophy. Like, this is a philosophy problem. Like life is lacking philosophy, not lacking politics. Politics is never the answer. It is a win-lose situation. You're making an argument for a win-lose situation, right? Like the Green Party, is, it's a, it's a construct of people that think they're representing 350 million people. That's what you're saying. And people don't feel represented by them because, again, in the game of politics, you're represented by the winner and you want your side to win. But in philosophy, like how is the Green Party helping us have a better relationship with philosophy? That's the question, right? I vote via philosophy and I vote politics. Like somebody asked me the other day, how do I reconcile the fact that I'm progressive in philosophy, but in politics, I'm more conservative. And by conservative, I mean liberal. Like I vote Democrat. I vote liberal. And it's because like, oh, politics is a different game than philosophy. Politics is about winning. And philosophy is about the, the, the truth. What's the truth, right? So ultimately, like you have to, you have to have a relationship with that irony, and then realize, like the moment we stop playing politics games, which we won't, then we can be thoughtful about philosophy, or we can be thoughtful about philosophy and stop playing political games. But that's the dilemma, right? The Ukraine Russia was a great example of watching divide happen amongst everyone. Bye, Violet. Happy Thanksgiving, or whatever you celebrate today, or don't celebrate. But Ukraine and Russia was a great example. I remember walking around California homes in the suburbs and seeing Ukraine flags everywhere. But then I have people that are pro-Russia in my life. And I have people that are pro-Ukraine. I have people that are pro-Palestine. I have people that are pro-Israel. And I'm looking at all of them. And I'm like, can we all agree that, like, we're all being needlessly violent? And the ones who are very into politics, like, they really, like, they really feel like one side is better than the other in a, like, in a moral way. And that's very hard for me to contend with in a moral way, you know what I mean? Versus just in a, like a political way. Does that kind of make sense? Am I being clear? I know this is a very difficult subject to talk about, right? Um, yeah. All of a nation state, because it wrongly, I think, perceives itself and liberal people and bodies as beyond violence. Liberalism sees itself as beyond the violence of the negotiation and creation of the nation state, which is seemingly something that happened years ago, centuries ago even. We have gone and that progressed true? beyond that, far beyond that. Individualism also naively believes that individuality and that reason has triumphed over, or at least will eventually triumph over, tribalism and civil disputes and warfare. It believes that reason will triumph over the likes of instinct, of emotions and greed. And perhaps most 
most importantly, and I would also argue most naively, liberalism has perpetually believed itself capable of triumphing over religious politics. When reading books written by individuals who really fit into this idea or caricaturing of liberalism that I have just done, which isn't just liberals, but also neoliberals and what we would label neoconservatives, it is not only noticeable when observing and reading their books or them talking, their speeches and writings, that they exhibit a naivety and also a bit of a hypocrisy in that naivety. Mm. Um, morals are political. Morals can be political. Happy Colonizer's Day. Happy Colonizer's Day. Tea, as well as just this general smugness. And this smugness was especially jarring in the 1990s and early 2000s with the what is now known as a very infamous quotation or infamous declaration from neocon slash liberal thinker Francis Fukuyama of the end of history. This idea that basically liberalism has triumphed and that history as we we knew it before then, which was a history that was brutish, that was short, that was about being conquered and conquering, a history that was about the formation and destruction of nation states, that that was all in the past. And we were now at a point where we were just beyond any of that. We had progressed greatly and successfully into a liberal future, not just as nation states, not just as the United States, as a beacon of liberalism, but as an international community under the very kind and loving hand of liberal institutionalism. Trying to go back to life as normal after reading Osama bin Laden's letter to America and realizing everything we learned about the Middle East, about 9-11 and terrorism was a lie. Now, if you listen to my whole spiel about these- But like, what did you learn? Were we learning different things? Like, what did you learn? Again, I guess like if you've never been in politics, right? You learn different things. But because I want to know how old these people are. Why didn't they ever read the letter before? It's not like it's the first time it came out. Um, I want to know what their relationship with the letter was. But also, Osama bin Laden in his own letter is lying. Osama in his own letter is pushing an agenda. He's prop He's doing propaganda in his own letter. We just read it. Like, that's what I'm saying. They're so fucking dumb. Humans, I love them so much. They're so dumb. I did the same thing. I'm not even blaming them. When I was going through my two to three stage in my levels, links down below, I was literally like popping all these political bubbles and be like, they have the answer. 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 They're all lying. Humans are liars. They don't mean to, but they do it as a defense mechanism and as like, they think they have to, right? So again, like you can keep popping all these bubbles, but in that own letter, Bin Laden was using propaganda, pushing a religious narrative and talking about discriminating against your civil rights. So like, do you think he's the one telling you the truth? What is truth? Right? It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So again, you know what I mean? When you're having this relationship with like popping a bubble in terms of politics, politics, ask yourself, well, every time you think like, oh, the, so they're the bad guy. Ask yourself they're all if they're all probably the bad guy. And by bad guy, I mean humans being human. Humans literally looking out for their own self-interest, which is evolutionary. And human beings literally protecting their own civilization, usually, which is their, like, you know. And at the same time, using their civilization to, like, destroying their civilization at the same time. Like, using the, its own people. The United States have absolutely attacked its own people in different ways, right? Like, all these countries have absolutely sold their own people into slavery. All these other countries have absolutely like nuked or gassed their own country. Like people have maybe not nuked, but gassed their own country. Like l government leaders are people with power, like human beings, right? If we know the police are corrupt and we know the government officials are corrupt and we know our own politicians have gone to jail or are facing fraud or doing things, then again, we have to remember that every time someone goes, I'm the good guy and they're the bad guy, you're all probably playing the same fucking game because it's politics. Sage says, I think some people didn't realize how corrupt America is. A lot of people avoid politics. So most of what they consume is probably through the news, which isn't going to give them this information. Zoe says, they probably thought he was an evil Disney character. Many people seem to not be able to see the depth in the villains. Well, that's what I'm saying. <coughs> and again, 
Bin Laden is as much of a villain as like the United States is and vice versa, depending on whose side you on, you're on and how you look at it. And that's why I'm like, again, humans are going to human. I don't care how like men are going to get going to decide like how to like ruin the world for their own greed. I'm just here to play a game to figure out how do I live the best life while they destroy everything around them. Because again, like I'm one person, you're one person and we can talk about it and I can spend my whole life trying to convince you to do otherwise. But how? Why would I spend my life doing that when I've already literally it's shown time and time again that like we repeat history. Humans will repeat it. I'm not going to go into politics. You're not going to go into politics. I'm not going to be the good politician because you don't get anywhere being the good politician. You don't. That's why I love watching AOC go from her like I'm a bartender to I'm wearing like the clothes I'm supposed to wear and acting how I'm supposed to act and playing the game I'm supposed to play. Everyone ends up having to play the game if you're in politics. There, the idea that like bin Laden's letter means anything, all it means is like he's the US, but like in his own way. That's all it means. Some villains are Zuko and some villains are the Fire Lord. One may have a sad villain origin story and empathize with one. It just seems like a natural born villain. I think bin Laden's the Fire Lord. I think the US government is the Fire Lord. And I think the rest of us are Zuko. That's what I think. Story of very modern liberalism <clears throat> since World War II onwards. Then I think you will notice that I was telling you a bit of a story, that this is very much a story, a theoretical story about sort of theory and ideas that are very present today and will probably be present for the rest of this century, at least in the West. Now, the thing about stories is that they aren't necessarily lies but they aren't necessarily the truth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of history and a lot of politics mm -hmm. and a lot of international relations are largely stories about what he said to mm -hmm. him, what this leader said to that leader, mm -hmm. this leader said this, and this leader responded or didn't respond, and this is creating something. This foreign minister decided to go behind this president's back to this country, and that has created some friction. Reading and following the news is very much like following a very long, never-ending story and you don't necessarily know who is telling the truth and who isn't but I would say that in everything that we read everything that we see everything that we are told in history books by our countries by our nation states there is always some truth somewhere in it and it takes a while for that truth to come out and that truth is sometimes something that isn't truth for very long it sometimes is true in the moment or it's true for a particular period of history history and then we learn other things or we change our interpretation and that is what I like to call sort of the hermeneutical nature of truth. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that everything that Americans or Westerners have learned about the Middle East, about 9-11 and about terrorism is a lie per se. I would mm -hmm. say that it is just so complex, so dense and so incredible. It's not complex, it's only complex because nobody wants to admit that humans are going to human Politicians are seeking wins, not honesty or philosophy. And some philosophy can be corrupt. And some philosophy can be used to hurt other people. You could argue religion is philosophy. Okay? People are not seeking an understanding with themselves within the universe. They're under, they want to seek an understanding that's quick and digestible and gives them a reason to keep pushing their agenda on other people. And no matter how you look at it, I think government leaders are always going to be sort of because of the power, it's like no ethical billionaires exist. I'm not sure there are ever ethical political leaders. What does ethical mean too when it's so specific and personal, right? So again, when we're having this conversation, the simplicity is it that the simplicity is that humans are going to human. The complexity is whether or not we as a mass know what to do with that information. And the answer is we don't. It reminds me of Killmonger and Black Panther. I can see that. Ooh, vegan says I brought it up because I think it's something that might resolve some of these problems. Fair. I thought it was on topic. It is. It is. I just wanted to confirm. I just wanted to have the discourse. Not saying they're perfect. I see politics as a necessary, but I don't love it. Mm. Obviously, it's on topic. Um, I really, I genuinely feel like the only real solution is to radically accept that we are all human sharing a planet and we do not have access to what we think is objective truth. Like in a real way, even though I think it exists, we we really don't know if God exists, but people really believe they do, right? So you would have to literally destroy people's relationship with their own concept of objective truth to ever have a more peaceful world, like in a genuine way. 
But again, everyone is so narcissistic. Everyone is so sure that they know what's good for everybody, that they're the ones who move. That's why it's easy to move groups in your political favor. You just like kind of say what they want to hear and then people are okay with it, which is like very human. Again, here on this channel, I just want you to like radically accept for you guys so you can have peace when you go to bed that like humans are doing exactly what they've been evolved to do over millions of years. And that it's up to you if you want to engage with this or if you want to sort of like engage only when you have to and you don't always have to. The myth is that you always have to engage. That's what they tell you. And I'm telling you, you don't. You only have to engage when you have to engage. Otherwise, you as an individual consciousness can, in the right circumstances, pop out of the bubble and go do something else with your life. Right? But again, I understand your need to get involved as well. You know, I do. Better be. Everything is kind of political though, only if you're playing with the bubbles. Only on the societal and individual level are things political, but on the specific consciousness and on the macro, it's not. The specific consciousness and the macro, it's not political. You're not adhering to those bubbles. On the societal and individual level, it is. Difficult. Like if you live on earth, you're forced to be political only when engaging with society. Only engaging. Like, of course I have to be somewhat political because I'm engaging with society. But that's why I say like I created my own little bubble at home. So when I want to tune out the world, just go. Foo. Because they're not living my life. They're living a life that's their own. But you don't have to live it. Like like Z said at the beginning of this video, she like listens to Al Jazeera 24-7. Why? 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 I used to be that person. 24-7, the news, politics, everything. Why? Why am I letting the bubble swallow and suffocate me for the small time I have on earth? Because it allows them to keep up their violence and politics by keeping you riled up and keeping you wanting, you know, a side to win and keeping you involved. And that's what I mean to say. Ironically, if you know more about politics, you'll do better. But if you know too much about, or if you listen too much about politics, you'll do worse. So you need to know just enough about politics to do better, but don't drown in it because then you'll do worse for any human to possibly understand or to comprehend the entirety of what goes on on the international stage. That when we find out bits of information that we didn't know, that doesn't fit wholly into our very simplified and simplistic storytelling and picture of what went down, we then immediately assume that that story must be a lie. When actually it probably isn't a lie, it's probably something of the truth with a bit of flourish here, with a bit of fabrication there. But I think that it is very important to not see information that goes against or contradicts your worldview or your preconceived notions about how easy something is to understand with lies, with misinformation, with there being some kind of conspiracy to hide the truth from you. The C I mean, there definitely are lies going on though, right? Like there's lies and truth mixed together and it's hard to know which is which. It's like when your bestie tells you a story and you're like, is that true though? CIA and intelligence agencies are really not that smart. They are blood and bones human beings like the rest of us. They have a job to do and their job is crucial. And it is most of the time a very contradictory job that is very difficult to live up to. I would say that American and Western led foreign policy was and has been very much of its time since the post-World War II era. This era was that of the Cold War, which was ultimately an era of ideology and therefore our foreign policy was incredibly ideological. And by being ideological, I mean that it was very much about what the world could be, what we ought to be, what we ought to strive for, and therefore justifying very heinous and very contradictory acts and policy decisions in the here and now in pursuit of this ideal for the future, this better ideal than the present. Necessary sacrifices have to be made in the present so that we can realize a future that is completely void of compromise, of contradiction, of violence. Western-led foreign policy during the Cold War was very much a naive notion that if the world was- mm. What is the mega bubble? Did I say mega bubble? I don't know. What's a mega bubble? Did I say that? 
What did I mean by that? I don't even know. So he says, that's what I meant. It's literally impossible not to be. Like, every purchase is political if you think about it. Not positive or negative. It is what it is. Oh, in that way, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Vegan says, this is the stuff that directly affects me. Like, getting found near dead from alive attempts and ending up losing so many basic rights. That's part of why I'm invested. Of course. Um, MH oppression also made me more sympathetic to the lack of prison rights. MH, MH. What's MH? Um, but obviously, yeah, like it, with political season coming up, I'm being more clear about where I stand more politically just to get people to understand because I don't want people to like mince my words for me. And also ultimately, like, I think all of this is like a waste of our time and we shouldn't even be bothering doing it, but we have to because people for some reason cannot understand like your civil rights is my civil rights and it's all of our civil rights. And also there are parts of society that I don't necessarily want to give civil rights to because I believe in like, um, consent age limits. <laughs> for children you know so like we all have our limitations of what we want to give civil rights to or give the right to like exist it's just it's it, in that way it's more complicated because we're all individuals who seek joy in a different way but also like if we're all unhealthy and we're not having a relationship with healthy um oh is mh mental health that makes more sense um, if we're not all like in a healthy position too, it's a bunch of unhealthy people making decisions. And then the idea that like, oh, I'm more healthy than you are healthy is like, what does that mean? What criteria are we using? And I'm looking for like more good than bad. And like, what does that look like if we're all defining those things differently? It was just more capitalistic, if it was more liberal, and if it were more quote unquote free, it would be the end of redefining borders. It would be the end of conquering or being conquered by peoples and empires. It would be the end of colonialism, of imperialism, as well as the end of any potential resistance or resistance movements. And for much of the Western world, that is not their foreign policy, but rather their internal policy policy and makeup, this ideal has very much been the case for the vast majority of people. Because like myself, these TikTokers have overwhelmingly grown up in a stable nation state that hasn't had its borders threatened or redefined. And the idea of this stability being a very new and very fragile thing is, I would say, regrettably lost on these TikTokers. Contrary to their critique of American liberalism in the form of American foreign policy and its liberal institutionalism, these TikTokers exhibit the same kind of naive smugness that a lot of American liberal policymakers in the international arena have exhibited since the end of World War II, just from the other end of the pendulum where they are anti-American foreign policy. And you have to recognize that the light, the, the whole point of what the light is, is to expose the truth, right? So as long as you try to turn away from whatever the truth is, then you are not actually and in a 1998 interview, Osama bin Laden said, it is our duty to lead the people to the light. Girl, it's a trap, girl. Turn around, it's a trap. Sage says, I think we might see a revolution soon, at least in the UK. Our people don't like how we're being governed, and I think people are getting restless enough to actually want to make change. That's interesting. Are you excited? Are you worried? Are you concerned? Revolutions are very difficult. Lots of people... It's very difficult, but at the same time, I probably could see that as well. I don't know much about UK politics, but from what I've seen, I think I understand. Um, I could I could understand why there'd be an unrest. Actually walking in the light, you're just choosing to be ignorant. There's darkness that exists in the world. Girl, he wants you to stop being gay and to stop eating pork and to stop taking tequila shots. That's what he wants. That's the light, girl. If we actually want that, like the darkness to change and to go away, and if we actually want the light to win, we have to acknowledge and fight against and stand up against the darkness that exists, right? So we have to wake up. We cannot just sit here and ignore what's going on and protect our peace. Everyone thinks they're not ignorant. Everyone thinks like you need to wake up to the light. Is the light Jesus Christ? Is the light Muhammad? Is the light politics? What's the light? And pretend, you know. The light should be peace. And peace has no God. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna protect my people. I'm just gonna log off. No, what, like, what are we actually talking about? There are people literally dying. And the reason why the U.S. Have, has been able to support this for so long. People are dying in the United States, girl. People are dying everywhere, girl. Is because especially in this country, we've been conditioned to think that there's nothing that we can do. Everyone's been conditioned in every country to think there's nothing you can do. And also, we don't want to work together. And also, we don't agree on where to go. So. There is something that you can do. Wake up. If enough people wake up. Wake up to what? What does that mean? 
Guys, what does it mean to wake up? And if enough people are angry and, and if enough people are in the streets and enough and if enough people decide to stop carrying on business as usual, if, if enough people decide to stop spending money on some of these businesses that are supporting this, then shit will change. But you don't want to do it because it's uncomfortable, right? And I'm not trying to be- Well, I want to know what it looks like. So let's say we do this because I agree to some extent, like maybe we should all stop paying tax or maybe we should all stop doing that. Like I get it. If we all came together- but what are we going towards? That's what everyone's afraid of. Okay, so you win, I win. What are we aiming towards? Because everyone wants something so different at the end of the light. Everyone wants something so different at the end of it. So what does it mean? If you're waking up to the fact that the United States is lying to you and it's propagandist, um, are you also going to wake up to the fact that everyone else is doing the same thing? Right? What do you, that's what I mean. You can't choose one. Like none of them are better than the others. Like the only way they're better is in your own self-interest. So if you're like Muslim, it's better to go on the Muslim side. If you're Christian, it's better to fight for the Christian side. If you're gay, it's better to fight for this side. If you're this year, it's better to fight for this side. So at the end, again, when she says like, wake up to the bullshit, okay, what's the bullshit? That everyone's lying? I already knew that girl up in the high school. Harsh or rude or mean. I'm not trying to spread fear or hostility or anger or anything. I'm just trying to get us to wake the fuck up because this love and light bullshit, this spiritual bull, like whatever, it's not. Like it's it's literally you just choosing to be ignorant, and I'm tired of it. Wake up, understand what's going on. Go have a conversation. Go get outside. Right. Learn about what you can do. I'm not saying to fucking turn your whole life off and be a, become a warrior soldier. I'm just saying to wake up and care about other people. Please, I am mm. begging you, just give a fuck. The road to hell is paved in good intentions, though. Right? We can't care about other people. Guys, we cannot spend our literal days caring about the world. We need to mind our own business and care just enough to make worlds go round. Remember that... People care so much about you. They want to take away your civil rights so you can get closer to God. People care so much about you. They want you to battle capitalism. They care so much about you. They want to take away. They want to make you wake up to the truth of Jesus Christ himself. Hello. <clears throat> is this a three or a two to you? This is a two. All twos talk about waking up to the answers and then they're just giving you another bubble to believe in fuck about something other than yourself please this is the time like there's a there's an eclipse like happening this. think about something other than yourself okay so when you do that it looks different when i care about people it looks like protecting their civil rights when it comes to abortion and trans rights and gay rights and women and men having like egalitarian like vibes okay when they care about yourself like if she's quoting osama bin laden osama bin laden Literally wants you to stop eating pork. So like, what are we talking about here? I told you guys there's a shift happening in this matrix. <laughs> People are waking up, but there's also like, as like it's happening, right? But what's gonna have to happen is we're gonna have to start getting a little bit uncomfortable. I am taken care of and I'm gonna be okay. And but then two days ago, Lynette talks about choosing to live in abundance, renting a Tesla and living in the expensive apartment. Good, wow. We love a capitalist queen. I'm living, these bills wouldn't be existing if I wasn't living in abundance. Like honestly, I could be avoiding a lot of these kinds of bills if I just like sat my ass down somewhere, found an apartment, you know, bought a car instead of renting a car on Tura. Like I That's what I, I love humans. I love them so much. They will never see, this is what I'm, I'm not even mad at her. It's just so human. That's okay. So do we, does my work make more sense to anybody as we watch these videos? I feel like it's making, hello, I'm not even mad at her. But that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it doesn't matter who what side you choose. It doesn't matter. You always end up in the same place in self-interest. It doesn't matter. But if only our self-interest didn't also coincide with the subjugation and oppression of other people. Right? And that's the question. How do we get to a place in the world where that doesn't happen? To be honest with you, and I'm going to be real with you, I really do think like if, again, I don't know if these things would exist in a completely like woman wor run world. If we started again from scratch and women were completely in charge, I just feel like we'd be chill as fuck, bro. We'd live like in the most simple ways. We just want the most simple life. And like, that's the thing is like men always brag about like, look at all the technology we built and look how we have iPhones. iPhones built off of like the backs of like slaves, basically. Like, that's what I'm saying. I'm good. I don't need a phone. 
I could have lived without it. But since we live in this world and the world is this, it feels weird not to play the game. You know what I'm saying? But if we started from scratch, I'm not sure we would need it. So the question is, how do we get to a place where when we get an iPhone, it's not built off the backs of slaves? How do we get to the point where like, and I don't have an iPhone, thank you. But like, again, I'm not sure that it matters that I have an Android, right? So again, like, how do we actually do it? We would have to genuinely like value people the way we value ourselves, but then they would have to value themselves the way we value ourselves. And then we'd all have to realize we don't have the answer to the universe, which would be very confusing. And a lot of people would go crazy. Imagine how many people would go crazy if they had their, look, these people are going crazy because they had their bubble popped over Osama bin Laden's letter. What would happen to them if they realized like, yeah, everything you're worried about is just a construct, like in a real way, your religion, your race, everything you think is so important to you is nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It only means something because we've decided it means something. And this is what we've given meaning to. This is what humans have evolved to give meaning to for now. You know what I mean? Couldn't we help each other instead of going to war? What does that mean? Help each other do what? Help each other buy children brides? Help each other uh, fight against gay people? Help each other adhere to like racist propaganda? Like help each other do what? Help each other eat? Well, what about the really selfish people in society? What about that woman on, on uh, Abba and Preach who bragged about calling CPS falsely on her boyfriend and doctoring photos of abused kids so he could get his kids taken away? What do we do with her? That's the question. What do we do with the people in society who aren't going to want to work and not participate? And I, by work, I don't mean like have a job. I mean participate in society. Like I help plenty of people. You help plenty of people. We're already helping people. What do we do in a society with the people that do want to cause violence? What do we do with the people who litter? What do we do with the people that like throw gum on the sidewalk? What do we do with the people that steal? Like in my ideal world, like you would not be putting gum on the sidewalk, ma'am. You better pick that up, girl. Like share resources. Mm, resources are dwindling. The religious are having kids and resources are always being threatened, right? <clears throat> like what does it mean to share resources in a world that's like very scared that everyone's going to – well? It, what does it mean to share resources in a world that from day one has traditionally killed one another over them? Well, how do you go from being an evolutionary animal on a planet who's fought for resources to being an animal that shares resources? And then do you share the resources with the PDF files? Do you share the resources with people who have religions that want to take away your civil rights? Do you share resources with people – who think like you're less worthy than them because of your skin color? Do you share resources with people that think like you're less worthy because of your gender? Do you share resource like you know what I'm saying? Who do we share resources with? I think for a better world to get better, we as humans would have to have a better capacity to understand the to to uh, respond to adversity rather than reacting to it. Mm, that could help. That could help. You know, this is where the complexity comes in, right? We should, yeah, yeah, says we should all just have dance battles to figure out world issues. I mean, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Let's go. I could avoid these things, but I've been, I've, I've consciously chosen this life of abundance, especially like in this season of my life. And so this life is of what abundance comes with it. Is like keyword for life of, uh, be doing the capitalism game. Love that. And I think I'm just having the other day I told you guys, right? Somebody was mad at me for saying content creators are capitalists. She goes, don't say that. They're like the least capitalistic people out there. And I was like, girl, I tried to give you a cupcake, girl. I tried to tell you, girl. I tried to give you a cupcake, but you won't have it. Look at this girl preaching about how we need to do better. Follow the light. The light was a Tesla. <laughs> to accept that. We're going to have to start taking action and actually caring about things other than ourselves. This shift that I'm talking about, that's how I like how she has like her natural hair when she's talking about like activism and then straight hair when she's talking about Tesla. Happening <laughs> is not just, oh, my life's going to get better and I'm going to start making more money and I'm going to start <laughs> feeling good. My, I'm going to start going to the gym more. No, it's an actual shift that's happening. Like this, the world is changing. Right. It's always changing. Like we are witnessing it happen in real time. Right, and I oh need God, you to stop so making it just about you and make it about shit that's at, like what's right and what's wrong. That's what this is about. More that's subjective. What's right and wrong is subjective. Anything.
y'all defending Osama Bin Laden now? It's not that I'm defending him. I'm not defending him because, like, everything is fucked up. Like, all of this shit is fucked up. But I'm not about to sit here and act like he's just the worst person in the world when America has literally been terrorizing people since the beginning of history. I agree wholeheartedly with this young woman. Yes, foreign policy is fucked up and it will always be fucked up. Foreign policy is not and will never be liberal, in my humble opinion. And I think that the West, more so I would say the West policy leaders as opposed to the Western populace, have come to realise more readily and with a lot more pragmatism that in preserving liberalism and the stable liberal nation state at home, a liberal policy agendas on the international stage and in other countries has proved itself to be a necessary evil. Liberal leaders aren't immune to human instinct, they aren't immune to a liberalism and they most definitely are not immune to greed. America is literally built on terrorizing people. When, when, um, what's his name? Fucking whatever the guy's name is that discovered America and found the land, he lied. It's been a lie. Everything's a lie. I think this idea of America terrorizing people since the beginning of history or this idea of America as the bad guy really simplifies, overly simplifies the realities of foreign policy and of international relations. Because we're all the fire nations. Not just for America, but for every single country in the world, every single nation state in the world attempting to preserve itself when history has shown that the odds are entirely stacked against them. Now, believe me, I'm no fan of not just American foreign policy, but any foreign policy. As you know, I am very individualistic and all about me, 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 me. But the recognition that I am living a life of individualism and me, me, me because of the stability created by these means of preserving and of not just American foreign policy, but any foreign policy. As you know, I am very individualistic and all about me, 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 me. But the recognition that I am living a life of individualism and me, me, me because of the stability created by these means of preserving the modern liberal Western nation state is not lost on me. And this is very hard to come to terms with. This is very hard to reconcile oneself to. And often people who exhibit this realization are not truly seen as liberals. They are seen as betrayers of liberal... I already can foresee the number of people calling me a Zionist or a white supremacist in the comment sections. I mean, bubbles. Ideals and of liberalism. They're seen as more so political realists, shall we say. And as I said, I do think that a lot of liberal policymakers after the Second World War and especially during the Cold War and up until I would say 9-11. Um, do you feel like thinking in terms of right and wrong could be better remedied by thinking in terms of negative and positive? Or would those two words have a highly subjective connotation? I think, um, great question. I think that I would want people maybe to think of it as more like, um, contribute, like harm reduction versus harm, uh, expansion, maybe like something like that, because even negative and positive, is making a judgment, but even harm is making a judgment. Like, I think life is harmful. I think every time you have a baby, you're subjecting that baby to harm. So I think life is automatically harmful. And if life is default harmful, then we just need to harm reduce. We don't need to like eradicate harm. So I think I'm more into like harm reduction as a philosophy than, um, than anything else. And then the conversation around that is very subjective, but more centered around context. So again, like you can look at a scenario where you're saying, okay, moving forward, it would be harm reducing if we don't have child brides while acknowledging that some cultures have yet to evolve past that cultural uh, bubble, I guess, like expectation. But then how do we change that in their bubbles without like forcing them to do it in such a way well we listen to the people that they're that's saying that they're being harmed so the children in the like the video we watched the other day on stream 
We're saying, I don't want to get married to him. I will unalive myself if you make me do this. So obviously in this context of marrying this child off to this old man, we are, we are contributing more harm than good. So um, we need to harm reduce by not forcing this child into this marriage. Well, how do we not force this child into this marriage? Because the father and mother who are selling her off are doing it because they don't have money to pay for her and they need to sell her to make money to feed their other children and themselves. So, okay. How do I stop this nine year old from being married off to this like 55 year old man? Well, I could come in as a foreign entity and give them money, but then our people, because people are pretty like they're animals, like evolved over time, are they going to now produce more children to actually get more money so they can like make money this way? And if that's the case, what if we created a system where nobody would have to sell off their children because the government did give them a default amount of money? But what if the people who were even given like a basic monthly income didn't know how to spend it correctly? And then they started to overspend. Do we penalize them? Do we not give them money? Do we put them in jail? Like, let's say we had basic universal income, which everyone like is like wanting right now. Okay. <clears throat> What if we gave everyone basic universal income and some people still couldn't live within the means of that income? What if everyone was given 5K a month minimum for a family of four? And then if you had more than those kids, you'd have to figure out how to like offset that income somehow, right? Because that's a generous income. 5K a month, like for a family of four is really generous. So let's say we did that, but people for some reason, maybe they chose not even to have kids and they still got that 5k. What if they couldn't figure out how to live within that? Because we don't teach financial, um, like uh, literacy here in America, right? It would be kind of useless. So the dilemma we have is like an education issue and a cultural issue of expectation. Like what I'm learning about Europe and I'm, I'm really ignorant to it right now, but I'm learning like certain expectations of behavior are very strictly enforced even more than America in some ways. But America is like the land of the free. And then on a spectrum, the reason we're lenient towards people who quote, quote, make mistakes is because on a spectrum, like, do I really want to throw the kid who litters in jail? And at the same time, if I could stop littering by threatening jail time, would that work? But also, I don't think so because punishment doesn't seem to work. So then what you do is you kind of formulate an idea of like, what if it's values? And you say, okay, for harm reduction, we're not going to litter. Well, what does littering look like? Like, what does littering look like? And then what if we promote composting? So every time you want to litter food, we actually compost it. Oh, well, certain things need to be composted and certain things don't. Okay, so what if we did this? And then you look at like the trash cans at airports that have like composting plastic and trash and how we still don't know which where, like where to put what. And then again, it's like humans as a collective are too big of a fish, like fish pile, like fish, like in the sea, like whoop, to really actually move them in one direction unless you understand that it's going to not be perfect. And since it's not going to be perfect and we're still going to have harm, then we need to harm reduce. And this is the best we've come up with. We have caused less harm over questions. Uh, over time, I read the word question, sorry. We have, we have harm reduced over time. It's just slowly but surely. We are still alive at the best time in history. We are still alive. Everything happening now with corruption and government and bullshit has always happened forever. So we are, we are living in the best time in history, right? So that's first and foremost, right? Um, <clears throat> um, every even mildly successful country has done some terrible, horrible things and does them to preserve them. Hard, hard truth and living through it right now has been very sobering. Let me tell you. But do you think the government is doing the most de-escalation and harm reduction? No. I don't. I I do, but I don't. I think overall the whole world is doing more harm reduction than it's ever done. I do. I I think on the macro of not macro of the universe, not macro like hold on, let me take this away cuz it's going to confuse people. Okay. On the macro of like societal evolution, right? I think we are harm reducing. But when you zoom into the micro, there's a lot of a lot of pain happening in the world and it's causing everyone to have like high anxiety. And so it is looking like we're not getting better, but we are getting better. We are absolutely living in the best time in history. 
So I think in those ways, of course, our governments are doing that. But on the micro, it's really hard to feel like that's what's happening. Because again, like the micro is how we process our reality. We hardly ever look to the macro. Um, And not the macro in the universe sense, but the macro of society. And so that's what's difficult. But of course, the world is getting better and getting worse at the same time always. And it's not linear, but it is linear on the macro, not the macro of the universe, the macro of our societies. So again, like throughout history, the world has absolutely gotten better. Absolutely. Disease is, you know, lowest it's ever been. Death is the lowest it's ever been. Starvation is the lowest it's ever been. Slavery is the lowest it's ever been. But that doesn't mean those things have been eradicated because they'll never be eradicated because humans themselves are evolved animals that seem to repeat history because it's within some part of our nature to justify these actions. So the question is, can you have a whole society of people evolve past the point of not doing this? Well, first, you'd have to first radically accept that we're going to do this by nature itself because everything we do is within nature because humans are nature. And then you'd have to accept that in some ways, in order to even have this illusion of utopia, which in and of itself means like impossibly like an impossible heaven, right? An impossible thing. You would have to like force people into a bubble that would make some people feel crazy. But if you allow total freedom, then you have the chaos of the world, which I always go more towards. But then you will have more destruction because humans at their freest are very destructive. And at the same time, individuals are their happiest. So the irony is like humans at their freest on the macro are slower moving and on the micro are like better for the individual. But on the macro of societal change, it is better to get con- like conforming. It's better for you to conform in a direction than to live for the individual. So it's like one of those things where people are like, think about other people. Don't just live for yourself. But if I think about other people, what if it comes out that thinking about other people actually means that it's better that gay people don't exist? Do I still think gay people shouldn't exist? Nah, fuck you people. I hope you all fucking... I'm going to live my own life, bro. I would rather live an individualistic life being gay and happy than care about the whole world. Because like, what does it mean to benefit the whole world, right? Which is why some people are making scientific arguments about gay people actually being an evolutionary um, necessity to add more caretakers into the mix of the village to care for children. Because maybe that's true. Or maybe I don't need to justify my existence. And like I can just, why can't I just exist? Right? Like we're all playing this game of like justify why you exist, go. It's like, um, because I was born? And then it's like, cool, what are you going to do with that? So again, This is where the complication comes in, which I think like Z is trying to say, like, this is the complicated part of it. And I agree with her, like, this is the complicated part of it. But ultimately, and I can't just have you start at this point, but if I could get humanity to a point, if I had like a dream, it'd be get them to the point that I'm in, which is like, I'm not going to fight you, dude. Cool. All right. Put down the weapon. Let's talk through through or not talk today because I would rather not fight you. I'm not going to fight you. So if you don't fight me and I don't fight you and the worst we do is like, don't talk to each other. I can live with that. But if you are malicious towards your neighbor, if you are thinking ill of them, or if you are thinking like they're going to hurt you or harm you, and it's a possibility, well, that's the issue. If we lived in a world where it literally like wasn't a part of any of our values to be sneaky or malicious or hurt other people, the world would be different. It wouldn't get along perfectly, but it'd be different. But we can't get there. People really love, they're just malicious people in the world, guys. They're just people that will hurt you And it starts small. It starts with like cheating on your partner. It starts with justifying graping somebody. It starts with justifying bombing a country. It starts with aborting your babies. It does. It really does. It it starts with taking a life. We do not live in a world that values life. We live in a world that's so invested in destruction because it gets us somewhere we want to go next. And I can't even blame you for it. It's so a part of your evolution. So again, it's a mixture of radical acceptance And that means kind of radically accepting that people will be violent. So harm reduction is always the key for me. You know, that's always the key. As well as these TikTokers in the here and now really delude themselves in believing that liberalism or that the ideals that we all embody in the West are somehow exempt from the harsh realities of global politics. And so now let's move on to another... Mm. Yeah, I think some people will suffer more if there was only if there was solely freedom. I think everyone suffers in different ways. So if we focused on the individual, the individuals would I mean, if we focus on the individuals, um, 
I think the structure of society would deteriorate more. But if we focus on society, the society would stay, but the individuals would suffer. And I think both would cause like equal amount of harm. Probably. I don't think, I'm not sure one would cause more harm. It would just, one would cause harm to the individual and one would cause harm to society. But since society is full of individuals, it's kind of the same thing. It just looks different. It's the kind, it's like, what game do you want to play? Do you want to play the game where we're all compliant and we all look the same and dress the same and talk the same? Or do you want to play the game where we all look different, talk different, dress different, but then we're always fighting? Because you know what I'm saying? And I'm kind of like, let's just fight it out with words. And mind our business. Another group of ideals and people who believe themselves to be exempt from the harsh realities of the world and of global politics. Like, for instance, neoconservatives, they believe themselves to be acting from a place not of emotion, instinct, and greed, but from a place of religious enlightenment and awakening. And even though these individuals like to claim that their religious zealotry and awakening emerge as a response to American really fast there's a video on the side of my recommended list on YouTube that says I love men I don't like Pearl Davis what a title bro I don't know who that is but and western-led foreign policy something which all of these tiktokers and all of the tiktoks that I have seen have taken as just being true it is a lot more complex and long-winded than that okay. I would argue <laughs> Wait, can you imagine being like, oh my God, America's been lying to me my whole life. I just read this one email that was like 10 paragraphs and I realized I was being lied to. How do you know that's not a lie? It's like nobody wants to research. They read one little letter from Osama bin Laden and was like, he must be telling the truth. How do you know you're not falling for a second form of propaganda? Everyone's just a contrarian. I was thinking about it earlier, how like Ukraine and Russia and Palestine and Israel and seeing people take different sides. It's like, I swear some people are just taking the opposite side of like whoever their quote unquote political enemy is. They're not really having or forming an opinion. They're just literally taking the opposite. What are the Republicans doing? We're doing the opposite. What are the Dems doing? We're doing the opposite. Um, that if you take a, a longer and a broader perspective, Many of the widely accepted verities about terrorism today are in fact uh, misplaced. Terrorism, for example, is not new. And indeed, the recent emergence of terrorist groups that have a mixture of religious and political motives uh, are not new either. Such groups have been documented at least as far back as the Sicarii in the first century after Christ. Nor is terrorism the sole or even the primary preserve of Islam. Uh, historically, there have been Christian terrorists, Jewish terrorists, Hindu terrorists, Muslim terrorists, Ooh. atheist terrorists and most often completely secular terrorists. I would argue that rather than it being that this religious fervor and religious extremism emerged in response to American foreign policy during the Cold War, or for instance, in the case of uh, the Taliban or the Mujahideen, in the case of uh, Soviet or USSR foreign policy in the Middle East, I think it is just as, if not a bit more viable, to claim that the Cold War era really brought to the forefront the importance of identity. That is the importance of identity insofar as the power it is. Mm, okay, we could also try to focus more on stuff like not being violent or not stealing. Then say stuff like how we dress or talk to be less focused on. We can push conformity in different ways. True. Obviously, we'd like to push conformity in the ways of values. But what are values? And everyone has different values, right? Everyone has different relationships to what is violence, right? Like is abortion violence? Is um, letting gays marry violence on the family is like everyone some people think words are violence some people think um lifestyle is violence some people think what is violence right is violence only physical violence then you know i mean and again even if we all agreed on values humans are born with mental health problems or deviations in their genetics they're born with different problems some are just like gonna choose to be malicious some are gonna be narcissists some are gonna have problems so again, what do we do with those people? And then it sounds like almost like we're arguing for eugenics, which we're not. But it's like, oh, man, what do I do with these humans? So then people have to change because they really want to change, not because they're being forced to change. Right? Sage says, I also think there's something to say about the amount of negative content we mindlessly consume. If you aren't aware, our brains are being conditioned into us versus them. 
I actually think that's why when Z said like, oh, I watch like, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Al Jazeera 24-7 are people who are consumed by the news. I know T1J came out and talked about this because him and I used to be in politics around the same time. And we, I left and then he left. And uh, my life is better now that I'm not like consuming negative content that is all mostly like partially propagandist. Like that's the thing. Whether you're consuming bin Laden's letter or consuming the American news, like – you're consuming something that your side feels is justified. Whether you're, That's why I don't believe in independent journalists. Like all these people are like, I listen to independent journalists and then they'll send you the independent journalists and they're obviously have a bias. Everybody has a bias. So it's like, who knows what the truth is? Like you ever talk to a homie? Like I talk about this all the time. Like I love my family and friends, but they do not always get me or see me. They will hear me say something and they will not be able to hear me. Like they will, and same, I'll hear them. And I'm like, are you saying this? And they're like, no. And I'm like, it sounds like you're saying that. And vice versa. It's like when we can't see each other, we're like, but that is what you're saying. They're like, no, I'm not. And I'm like, hmm. Well, in my bubble, if you were saying that, that's what you're saying, right? It's like cheating. It's like if I cheated, it would be very malicious, but somebody else could cheat and it could be completely like, forgive my French, innocent, right? But it's that's why it's not a universal experience that we're having, right? Because how could I cheat without it being malicious and intentional, right? You know, meaning from my own decision. And then other people, like they can kind of like, they feel tempted. Like I get calls all the time from people who are like, okay, um, I did something. And I'm like, tell me what you did. And you'll be amazed at how many of them are like, genuinely, I don't know what happened. I feel like my monkey brain took over and all of a sudden my pants were off. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about it. Because I think there is a phenomenon that I've even experienced myself where that has happened. But it happened like not in a scenario that was like cheating, right? It happened with like lovers or friends or something. And I'm like, I'm allowed to have consensual sex with people. But I'm like, okay, so that's why you have to have your values in place. So when the monkey brain thing happens, you go, ah. No, because then you will do something. And in that case, there's like an innocence to it, but it's also a, an awareness of weakness. You're weak. You have no values. If you let your monkey brain take over, like you're not being introspective, you're being an animal. Hello. <sighs> yeah, yeah, says every time I read something and go, is that true? And do my own research. I hope people become more curious rather than obsessed in finding the truth. The fuck is truth. Ex curiosity is everything, right? But then people go down rabbit holes and believe in conspiracy theories. And then they end up like believing in things that were obviously not true. You know, it's kind of crazy. Capable of instilling not just on an individual, but on an entire nation state, on an entire superpower, on an entire potential world order. America as a global superpower with more power than any empire preceding it, You're with welcome. more influence across the globe, with an ideal or ideals that informed its foreign policy that were ultimately projected to take over the entire world, whether it be from foreign interventions, whether it be from supporting particular governments with US interests, or whether it be from the security Security Council of the United Nations. This was truly unparalleled and really represented the power, a real power of identity. So I think in our world now of nation states, of high stakes ideological politics, and specifically of identity politics, we really need to consider all of these things in relation to Islamic fundamentalism. Actually, not just Islamic fundamentalism, but in the case of this video, Islamic fundamentalism, but generally in the way of of modern fundamentalism and extremism. Now, in thinking about this today, I couldn't help but notice some interesting parallels between the red pill and Islamic fundamentalists. Please note, I am not comparing them at all to one another. They are not comparable. The Red Pill is not a terrorist organization. It is not, at least at this point in time, in my opinion, fundamentalist in any way. I do not think that it has any power or influence in the way of uh, Cass, you're right. People are anti-UBI because they fear others taking advantage of them and not contributing to society. So true. And the reality is like that will happen. 
So I do think no matter what, there will always be human beings that want to take advantage of people. I just don't think they're the majority and I think they're less than the majority, but the majority somehow ends up acting like it's so many people only because we all know somebody in our family. I can name like four people in my family that would fall under this category of like taking advantage of people. And to be fair, they were raised by parents that were that way. And so they also repeated that cycle. That's a problem. We repeat cycles. Our genetics, like our trauma passes through our genetics. Like we have so much healing to do as a species. So the only real solution is to stop having babies, which you won't stop doing, especially if you're religious, because it's your obligation to make babies. So instead of like the only, I think genuinely, the only solution to like bringing peace to the world is like everyone stop having babies and focus on the lives that are here and trying to make it great for everybody. But we literally can't and it's asking too much of society. And so instead you just have to do your best. You just have to do your best. And that's why I radically accept that I think people are mostly good because within their nature, they're doing what is like natural to them and nature within itself is sort of neutral and it only feels personal because we have an ego and an idea of perceiving things as personal, but people, if it's only personal when it is, but even then, is it like, is it even personal when people like decide to hate you and target you? Are they targeting you as a consciousness or are they targeting like a fear within themselves that they're projecting onto you? And that's kind of like the irony of how impersonal even your like greatest enemy could be. Does bin Laden actually have an issue with Americans or the government in which he perceives us as being supportive of? And then it's that in that case, it's not even personal. He just sees us as this like school of fish he's got to destroy. Right. It's not even personal. He doesn't know us and we don't know them. You know what I mean? So it's just one of those things. And again, bin Laden be dead. So, you know. (laughs) so much for that letter, bitch. Of Islamic fundamentalist organizations or theocracies. So please don't freak out. There's really nothing to fear, in my opinion, at least not now. But I do notice some parallels in a crucial way. These men, whether it be red pill men or Islamic fundamentalist or Islamic theocratic leaders, are men who fixate incessantly on a loss of identity and on a perceived loss of masculinity or what they understand to be masculinity. And they ultimately all blame this on modernity, specifically on the liberation and education of women. Whilst modernity for the red pill is reduced to this idea of modern woman, modernity for the Islamic fundamentalist is reduced to the concept of the West, especially this idea of Western ideals such as the education of young girls and women, upsetting some kind of status quo. And I would say that this is the first reason why I think, nay, why I know these TikTokers do not understand Osama bin Laden or Islamic fundamentalism at all. Now, I will give these TikTokers one benefit of the doubt, and I will give them brownie points for one thing, just like I have and will probably continue to give the benefit of the doubt to red pillars on this one point. And that is that Islamic fundamentalists like the red pill do put forward some important critiques, as well as some interesting insights into modernity and its down. Sides. And I would say that they do this especially when it comes to recognizing a modern identity crisis in the way of people finding spirituality and meaning in the modern world. But just like the red pill, Islamic fundamentalist remedies and solutions to this are all based not in this world. They are based in a fantasy of the world, in a fantasy of woman, and most importantly, Importantly, especially in the context of Islamic fundamentalism, they are based in a profound fantasy of men. Both the red pill and okay, okay, and Islamic fundamentalist. Bin Laden's initial enemy and the reason behind his militancy wasn't the U.S. but the Soviet Union. The U.S. were actually assisting in Muhammad in the Muhammad. Muhammad oh my God! I've been saying this word all day. Muh- Mahaji, Mahaji, 
Oh, well, now I can't say it. In Afghanistan. Contradict themselves incessantly. But at the same time, oh they are always right. Terrorists, no matter what their ultimate political objectives, invariably are action-oriented people mm. operating in an action-oriented in-group. It's through action that they communicate with the world. And they don't have armies. They don't have territories. Uh, they have action. It's action that demonstrates their existence and proves their strength. So in taking action, they want, above all, to, to elicit a reaction, preferably an overreaction. Now, terrorists, I think, often have wildly optimistic expectations um, of the reactions their action will elicit, whether it's American and Israeli withdrawal from the Middle East or British withdrawal from Northern Ireland or the collapse of capitalism or whatever. It actually appears as though they rarely have a very coherent idea of what kind of reaction they will get. Mm. I mean, it's striking to me that we don't actually know, five years after the fact, what bin Laden expected from his attacks on September 11th. Was he anticipating that we would wage war on Islam, which is quite possibly the case? Or was he anticipating, as he had often said, that we were a paper tiger, that we were so decadent and so corrupt we would never fight? He constantly invoked the examples of Mogadishu and Lebanon uh, to support this notion. But it seems to me that he probably concluded that either reaction was possible and either reaction was fine with him. He won either way. So long as there was a reaction, the terrorist purpose is served. In She's fact, saying bin Laden is a troll? She's saying bin Laden is a troll? At least when it comes to Islamic fundamentalists, far, far more so. The more contradictory they are, the more self-righteous and determined in their rightness they become. And because of this, there is inevitably a block. A block when it comes to the one way that we all as modern citizens know how to overcome contradiction. And that is via reason, via facts, via the mm -hmm. truth, via expertise, which are all things inherently tied to liberalism mm. and what it ideally stands for. And because of this, there doesn't seem to be, and increasingly Western foreign policy has come to appreciate when it comes to Islamic fundamentalism, that there isn't actually a viable way to overcome it. There currently doesn't seem to be an obvious way to overcome their influence from the outside. Time and time again, when it comes to conversations about individuals who have been radicalized by extremist groups, by Islamic fundamentalist organizations. What is this Why does this look like the same but completely different person? This looks like a the same but the compl a completely different person. They don't even have the same lips. And the nose is different. What's happening here? What am I looking at? What is this? It is shown. What, what was that random picture? repeat time and time again it is shown that individuals have to actually come to this realization on their own they have to come to this realization of these contradictions that things aren't making sense before for instance the effects of de-radicalization can actually really work just like liberal and radical feminists arguing against or bringing statistics and facts to the red pill in no way persuade Persuade nor sway them. The West, specifically neoconservatism and neoliberal institutionalism, using war and coercion against Islamic fundamentalists, most definitely didn't put out their flame. And it has taken the West a very, very long time to realize this. Now, I think that there's something really, really amiss here when it comes to these TikToks and these TikTokers. Wait, why did you say Britney language? What did I say? What did I say? Maybe plastic surgery? Maybe? I don't know. I just like, I'm so confused by that random photo.
it's saying that they have realized something, that they have experienced some kind of awakening as precipitated or caused by Osama bin Laden's letters to America. The letter is the basically Osama's explanation, his alleged explanation as to why 9-11 was necessary. It is a diatribe of anti-Semitism littered with a homophobia, littered with uh, a lot of anti-woman sentiment in so far as the mm -hmm. tenets and buzzwords of Islamic fundamentalism. They look the same but completely different. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, but you get it, right? I get it, but it's funny. I guess so. Uh, yeah, okay. concerned. He very much repeats almost word for word in the letter what he was saying back in the 1990s when he was being interviewed by American journalists. During an in-person interview with ABC journalist John Miller in 1998, he said the following, quote, so we tell the Americans as people and we tell the mothers of soldiers and American mothers in general that if they value their their lives and the lives of their children to find a nationalistic government that will look after their interests and not the interests of the Jews. The continuation of tyranny will bring the fight to America as Ramzi Youssef and others did. This is my message to the American people to look for a serious government that looks out for their interests and does not attack others, their lands or their honor. And my word to American journalists is not to ask why we did that, but ask what their government has done that mm. forced us to to defend ourselves. It is our duty to lead people to the light. In the same interview, he said, quote, it does not make a difference if the government wants you to stay or leave. You will leave when the youth send you in wooden boxes and coffins, and you will carry in them the bodies of American troops and civilians. This is when you will leave. We do not differentiate between those dressed in military uniforms and civilians. They are all targets in this fatwa. Now, I think it's interesting to read mm -hmm his letter and to read his interviews when you consider the following about who he is. That is that since the age of 17, this young millionaire and incredibly oh, Habibi, so cute. Uh, privileged. This sweet boy grew up to be such a pain in the ass. Incredibly westernized mm -hmm, uh, boy mm -hmm. then, but it's always privileged men. Oh, man at the time of his death was an Islamic fundamentalist. And there are very important things to consider when you consider what a Islamic fundamentalist is. And in this, there is therefore dismantle religion. It's a waste of resources and time. Again, you can be religious, but you God, I swear to God, mm. I'm so exhausted by religious. I'm so exhausted by all of you. I'm so exhausted. I don't care if you're religious, but this fundamentalism, this like making the world like you, this like we're willing to kill you in the name of our God. So boring. So boring. A lot more than meets the eye when it comes to these quotations. Now, I think it's important that when I say this, I am saying this in reference to something that I have seen online a lot recently, not just in these TikToks, but just in general on the at least political online left, which is this idea that Hamas staged their attacks on Jewish civilians on October 7th of this year in self-defense, that this was inevitably going to happen out of desperation, a response to American foreign policy. I mean, I feel like that's, yeah, I think that's fair, right? Like that's, I think that is how a lot of people feel. Imagine you grow up in Palestine and all you know is like Israel is, torture, Israel is torturing you and your family. They're cutting off water and internet. They're being cruel and un like, the, yeah, of course. Like, and at the same time, like this argument for self-defense is what America uses. It's what every government uses to wage war against civilians. Bin Laden's using it. Palestine's using it. Israel's using it. Everyone is using the excuse of like, I am allowed to go into your country and destroy you because of something that happened yesterday, two days ago, 75 years ago, or I get to do this because of this. If you can justify violence, you are the reason the world sucks. And that's just the reality of it. The justification of violence is why the world will always be in conflict. Like what, what is the purpose of violence except to destroy? Like again, like there's some poetry to it. There's some like way to look at violence in like a poetic way, but ultimately like 
violence is one of the most like it's only efficient for power it's inefficient for peace right so again you do you and I understand real self-defense like genuine self-defense like one-on-one self-defense but I don't understand this justification of violence in a moral way when it's like I'm gonna go in and kill innocent people I'm gonna rape innocent people I'm gonna I'm gonna cause destruction to innocent people what about the Jewish grandma that the Hamas terrorist literally took her photo and posted it on her own Facebook feed and people had to like wake up to images of their own grandma bleeding in her own kitchen. Like, how is that justifiable? Oh, well, like Israel did this to my family. Was it justified that Israel did that to your family? No. Okay. So why is it justifiable for you to do it to them? Well, well, they, well they, they did it to me first. Oh, okay. So again, when I say people don't have values, this is what I mean. People don't have real values. People only have revenge in their hearts. And just like bin Laden's letter, he wants revenge. And if you want revenge, just like the Americans did during 9-11, you have nothing but hate in your heart. What does hate have to do with peace? Even according to your holy books, what does hate have to do with peace? that supports and funds and finances Israel and Israeli intelligence. It is seen ultimately as defense as opposed to offense. A lot of the undertone to some of these TikToks, I would not say all of them, but to some of them, is that there are parallels, or at least in my mind, I can see parallels between the same kind of arguments being put forward in support of Palestinians via support of what Hamas did, and especially in Israel's response and retaliation for that, and Osama bin Laden's letter and explanation for the attacks in 90. You know, it's kind of like, uh, Alex says it's a cliche, but it's true, two wrongs don't make a right. It's kind of like Avatar the Last Airbender. You know how Aang is like a monk, and he says like, I haven't even killed like a bug or whatever. Um, obviously, that's not completely true, but like, okay. <laughs> um, he doesn't want to kill the fire lord so he finds a way to take away his bending and that's kind of the ideal hope for humanity is that instead of violence we learn how to remove people from power without becoming the monsters that we claim to be fighting you know and that's that's the the truest most difficult thing to actually do because even within my own monkey brain i like want to be violent and then i'm like britney and i'm like highest self dismantle without destroying dismantle without destroying dismantle without destroying right dismantle without destroying and it's really difficult because again like hello um but what if we all just kiss you first starting with you fishy um sage how do you cope with all this are you asking like me or people how do they cope um because i don't think you should cope i think you should radically accept and then I think you should feel good enough to mourn. Like I've cried a lot personally to my husband about stuff around the world that I don't love about humans. And I've like, I've been like, I'm very upset about this, even though I recognize like this is a part of human history and like I'm just a blip in history. I also feel like a need to mourn for people that are dying because like I get a lot of violent videos on my feed and like it's a lot. And I'm also not in it and it's not about me. So I can't like make it about me. But personally, as a human, I'd like to cry about it. So I feel like radically accepting humans are going to human is also radically accepting that you're a human and it's going to impact you. And then it becomes less of a cope. And I think more of a um, radical acceptance of like we're energy being recycled throughout the universe. And that's what we're doing. You know? We're just recycling energy through the universe and I'm trying to do my best. Like not having a child or having a child is like one of the most serious decisions I've ever made in my life. And I haven't quite made it, though I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to do. It is like one of the most serious decisions I've ever like contemplated in my life because I know and I tr well, I truly believe that bringing a child into the world is automatic harm. So I'm like, I have to radically accept that I'm going to harm my baby by giving birth to it if I give birth to it. And I'm trying really hard to break generational curses over here. So um, Kay says, Aang became super powerful and had the ability to destroy the Fire Lord and nation and shows the harder route of taking away his power and letting him live. Mm, Giga Chad. Amen. Amen. Miss Fishy has the answer. I mean, I agree. We should all just kiss.
2011 and attacks on the West by Al-Qaeda in general. What these TikTokers are, I think, missing in their revelations or their awakenings or what have you is that, as I said, Osama bin Laden is an Islamic fundamentalist, but Hamas are also Islamic fundamentalists. Osama bin Laden, just like Hamas, believe in something called existential warfare. The thing about existential... Yes, but America is also the terrorist to somebody else. And we need to radically accept that as Americans. We need to radically, radically accept that America is also the terrorist to somebody else. And that's the, that's, that's the, the hardest part to accept, right? Nero says, is that the only reason you don't want to get children anymore? No. Obviously, like, no. Like, there are a lot of reasons. Um, and I still haven't made the decision uh, technically. Um, vegan says it's interesting regarding your ta talking on DBT. That's a struggle talked about. Those who benefit can cope, but struggle to heal on a deeper level. Mm. Brittany, are you anti-natalist? No, I am not anti-natalist. I was for a short time in my twenties, but I'm not actually anti-natalist existential warfare is that it is perennial. It is never ending. And we are, according to the vast majority of at least the most renowned Islamic fundamentalists, in a state of warfare right now. It is never, ever ending. When it comes to existential warfare, a crucial aspect of it is that there is no distinction and that there necessarily can never be a distinction between militants and civilians. Mm -hmm. That is, there can never be a distinction. Versus Netanyahu said, Palestinians that are dying are the casualties of what is necessary to protect Israel. So, Bin Laden and them say they don't see the difference between uniformed and civilians. Then Yahoo says he doesn't see the, so it says, no, not that he doesn't see the difference, but that the Palestinian casualties are the casualties of what must be done to protect Israel. And America would say, um, you know, we mourn the casualties, but we'll do whatever it takes to, takes to protect America, right? So we all like justify in our own ways. We're all justifying in our own ways, right? between people in uniform and between regular men and especially women and children. Now, what um, I don't want to be sexist, but I feel like men are just as valuable as women and children. And this narrative that women and children are more valuable than men really needs to stop. Like, what is gender? Like, we're all human beings with a consciousness. So I really don't care whether you're killing women, men, or children, if you're killing a human life, like we have problems. What I get from these TikToks is this idea that the United States and US foreign policy fails to distinguish between militants and between innocent civilians, specifically innocent brown bodies in the Middle East and in parts of especially North Africa. And, and white that bodies because in the of the bombings, because of the violence committed against innocent civilians, of course, of course, this is absolutely true. There has inevitably been incessant bombing and killing of civilians that is completely backed by and committed by Western-led foreign policies and nations. But these TikTokers are under the misconception that these Islamic fundamentalists emerged in response to this, mm -hmm. that this is merely a causal effect and a causal consequence of what the US has done in the name of greed in the name of oil and in the game of international relations. What they don't appreciate is that existential warfare means to the Islamic fundamentalist organization and individual that human beings, that civilians, are as much a part of the war as those who are fighting against. Yeah, but so does the US and so does Israel, like we're seeing in Palestine. Like again, they're not different. They are all the fire nation, whatever it takes to win. The civilians in Iraq that were killed, the Palestinian civilians that are dying right now, they are not different. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's just sounds different. In some ways, bin Laden's willing to say it out loud. Yeah, we're going to kill your civilians, bro. And we don't give a fuck. Like, in some ways, bin Laden is kind of more honest because he's like, yeah, we're going to kill them all. You know, it's the U.S. and Israel, especially, that go like, oh, you know, it's just the consequence. That's just what happens. You know, we're not, that's not our intention. But then, as somebody who has, like, military brothers and people have been in the military, um, they justify shooting literally buses full of children because one of those children might have a bomb. So, let's be real here, okay? Like, bin Laden, pff, 
he's just willing to say it out loud. He's like, we're going to kill your mama and your babies and your girlfriends. Don't try to hide your kids because we're going to kill them. And the U.S. and Israel is like, um, like, it's literally not our intention, but we're going to shoot up ambulances and it is what it is. Okay. Against the enemy or against the West. Therefore, civilians are used as human shields. Therefore, civilians are crucial to the very operation of war. Civilians need to feel and need to experience war, the destruction and the violence of war at every mm. possible opportunity. Life can never be peaceful. Life can never be still. They can never not be in the line of fire. This idea that Osama bin Laden or that Hamas now care about women and children is completely false. No Islamic fundamentalist cares whatsoever about women and children beyond it. Well, that's not true. They care about them in their, way, in their own way. Well, that's not true. Why would she say that? What am I missing? Did I not hear something? That's not true. They care about women and children in their own way that of their symbolism as victims and therefore as symbols of why the existential war Wait. must persist and is therefore always justifiable. Basically, when it comes to the Islamic fundamentalist, the more bodies of civilians, the better. I think quite a lot of hot air has been expended uh, debating the point as to whether or not terrorism works. I think one cannot sensibly decide whether or not terrorism works without first establishing what it is that terrorists are trying to achieve. So I find it helpful to think in terms of primary and secondary uh, motives. The primary motives differ across different types of groups. So nationalist groups will seek autonomy or secession. So groups like the Tamil Tigers or groups in Kashmir or the ETA in Spain or the IRA in Northern Ireland, for example. Religious groups, on the other hand, seek the replacement of secular over uh, law with religious law or social revolutionary groups will seek to overthrow capitalism and so on. So depending on the, the nature of the group, their political goals mm -hmm. will differ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the secondary or more immediate motives are shared across all different terrorist groups and they're shared by both individual terrorists and the organizations to which they belong. And I would say that I think terrorists have been altogether more successful in achieving these secondary motives than they have been in, in achieving the fundamental political change that they're also trying to effect. So the key secondary motives are what I call at the risk of uh, oversimplification for the sake of alliteration are what I call the three R's, uh, revenge, renown and reaction. I believe that's what terrorists want. By far the most common motive for their actions asserted by current terrorists, former terrorists, and terrorists of every ideological hue from every part of the world is the desire to exact revenge. Mm. Sometimes this is revenge for something they personally have suffered or their family has suffered, mm -hmm. um, but often it's revenge for a wrong inflicted on a community with which they identify. Mm -hmm. Hence you have young middle class men in Leeds identifying with Muslims in Iraq. Now far from matching our description of them as selfishly pursuing their own ends, they generally identify with others and see themselves as sacrificing themselves for others. Just like bin Laden and Al-Qaeda during 9-11, Hamas chose not to differentiate between soldiers and civilians on October 7th. Mm -hmm. This wasn't a crime of passion. This wasn't a something that happened in the moment. An assault that was planned minutes, even days. I don't think, for the record, I don't think progressives are making that argument. I hope Kid doesn't think they're making that argument. When they say it's a retaliation for an action, there, it's the same way um, Elon Musk was recently said, like, he doesn't want to create more Hamas members by creating more hate in the young man's heart. It's like whether or not you agree with that. Like, I think that's more what progressives mean. They're saying not that Elon's a progressive, but they're saying that, like, they're not saying it was a spur of the moment or a passionate attack. It was obviously well planned out. They're saying it was but it it has this narrative of like we were hurt first so we're seeking revenge just like bin laden said like we're seeking revenge for the innocence lost and that's what everyone feels like they're doing if anything 911 was an alleged passionate like retaliation going to iraq but i would say that that 
it was only passionate for the American people. I think the American government had already made plans to go get the oil from Iraq and their fight with bin Laden had just kind of like given them an opportunity, right? And that's why some of the people feel like Israel waited for an opportunity to go into Palestine very hard. And I think like that's what politics is when we're talking about like nations fighting over land is waiting for opportunities to justify and to get the people on your side for this seeking of revenge. And that's why we went into Iraq during 9-11. It felt like justified revenge. It's why Hamas went into Israel on October 7th. It felt like justified revenge. It's why bin Laden set out to do his thing. It felt like justified revenge. And again, maybe it's only justified revenge in a fake way, like the government is inciting that violence in its people. But the governments themselves, I feel like are a little bit puppet stringing. And I think that they are genuinely like planning and hoping for these things to happen or even orchestrating themselves so they can get people on their side to like get the next part of the plan going. So again, it's like what is really happening here? But okay, let's see what Kit says before and in choosing not to differentiate between Israeli soldiers and civilians Hamas also chooses not to differentiate between its own combatants and Palestinian civilians and this is all crucial to the fundamentalist agenda and this isn't something that is just exclusive to Islamic fundamentalists this is something characteristic of all modern fundamentalists and extremists and I don't mean rogue extremists I mean ones that are a part of an organization or collective. Sure. The more misery the Islamic fundamentalists or guerrilla fighters can enact on the very people they claim to represent, the more young and devastated people they can recruit. And because the jihad is never ending, because the state violence of the US or the state violence of Israel will mm -hmm. always overshadow that of the relatively underfunded guerrilla fighters will inevitably overshadow their funding and capabilities in the long term. The very misery that they garner all of their justification from in the first place mm -hmm. must therefore never end. So I think one of the mm -hmm. key differences between in the, the language um, and the understanding between us and the terrorists we face is precisely on this issue of who is the victim and who is the aggressor. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that in this town and in New York, and particularly this week, um, when we've all been reliving the, the terrible tragedy of five years ago, it's very hard to grasp the notion that we could be anything other than the victim. But the reality is terrorists see themselves as the victims mm -hmm. of our aggression. We mm -hmm. see ourselves as the victim of theirs, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. see themselves as playing David to our our Goliath. Let's go, Queen. Let's go. Our Goliath. Statements by Al-Qaeda, by all other terrorist groups, again, and whether this is true, whether they're for mm. internal or external consumption. Great video, Z. Great video. Are suffused with the language of revenge. I think it's very difficult to overestimate uh, the importance of the desire for vengeance. I'm so sorry to break it to some of these TikTokers if they ever happen to watch this video, but Osama bin Laden's letter to the American people is not in any way reducible to this very pop academic dichotomy between the colonized and the colonizer. This overly simplified idea of some defenseless colonized against some omnipotent colonizer is doing far more harm than good in actually understanding global events and actually but to be fair to them this is their first opportunity to pop this big of a bubble so this is a part of their individual journey so as much as like they may be wrong politically or in the bigger scope of things for these individual tiktokers they're also having like a bubble pop for the first time in their life that like really like is, is like they're like oh my god like oh wait so to be fair to them as an individual this is a very important moment on their journey providing nuance and critical thinking in appreciating the complexities of the nation state and of actors in the international arena. Bin Laden's letter was about simplifying his own taking of Islamic scripture to justify an otherworldly view of the world. And this otherworldly view, just like the pop academic 
Um, Alex says, I think experiencing a terrorist attack in your own country is inherently radicalizing because of how much it fear and induces cycle of violence ensues. Let me tell you, I, I agree with that. I even agree with like the videos, guys, literally I'm not exaggerating. So my feeds, my social media feeds, when I see like Israelis getting hurt, I become like, my instinct is to be like hurt whoever hurt them. And then I watch Palestinians suffer. I'm like hurt whoever hurt them. And I'm like, stop. Think my brain is so animal. Like it like goes right into like a fear defense mode. And then I go stop. And I go both. I'm seeing propaganda from both. And I'm seeing violence from both. And I'm seeing like a hate for the other from both. And your brain really, once it feels like your brain is so empathetic, it will want to destroy the thing that makes you see suffering in front of you. But the empathy is for the victim and you think the revenge is the empathy. But that's a part, that's like a cycle we have to break. And I think it is probably more evolutionary. I'm not sure. You know, it is that thing in our brain and our instinct that tells us like protect this thing I'm watching be innocently hurt. But the dilemma is like, this isn't outside of a bubble and outside of a construct that was created by people who were waging war. And so it is really easy to fall into a loophole of like, if I watch enough videos of one side, you're going to want to seek revenge. And that's why revenge is part of the root of all evil because it's rooted in fear. I'm angry at the fear I feel when I think about my enemy winning and doing this closer to home or doing this again to me. You know, it's very frustrating. And so again, like I get very, you know, when I hear people talk about like, if they're either pro one or the other side in a very like even human way, like if they're saying it is more humane to like pick a specific side, then I'm like cynical. But if they say like politically, like, yeah, I'm going to go this way. I'm like, okay, I'll accept the political game way before they justify in a humanitarian way, the destruction of Palestinians. Cause I'm like, what's humane about the destruction of Palestinians? What's humane about the destruction of American civil, civilians? What's the, what's what's humane about the destruction of Israelis on October 7th? What part of that is good, right? I know you're justifying it, but what part of it is actually good? But if you tell me like I'm playing a political game and I'm going to win, I'm like, okay, we're playing a game of risk with people's lives as the pawn. I can understand that a lot better than you trying to play this cognitive dissonance game of like, I'm doing something that's like justifiable. It's like, Okay, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Vegan says, I do think very rarely you get someone who just says, quote, I love evil, I want to hurt people, end quote. And typically people will have some justification in their mind. Exactly. Part of radical, like, radically accepting that humans are going to human, right? Grab your merch, thank you. Is that you have to accept that you are them and they are you. And so every time we make a decision to like think that we are inherently better than other people, we are running the risk of thinking we are now justified in hurting people because we are better than them. And we're not better than other people. We're only better in a sense through our ego because our values make us feel better. But our humanity is not better. And I, do, and I think that's why I say like I pay attention to how you treat your enemy because it tells me more about you than how you treat people you love, of course. How you treat your friend tells me less about you than how you treat your enemy. Though some people might feel like how you treat your friends tells me how you treat people, which could be true as well. But in this regard, it's more like how you talk about your enemy, right? Do you, in what place of, of, of destruction do you have to go to as a consciousness to justify your desire for violence against your enemy? What kind of a quotation monster do you have to become to justify the violence against your enemy? dichotomy reduces everything to this caricature of them versus us. Mm -hmm. For the Islamic fundamentalist, there can never be peace, there can never be compromise, there can never be reason, because that is entirely contrary to the worldview. And so I think the very important thing to take from this. And I will agree, like Bin, Laden, Bin Laden's letter makes it clear, like at least in the West, we are like, you're chubby bodies with blue hair and nose piercings they actually make a difference when you annoy the white people and the christians enough that you get your way congratulations you have more chances of progressive of moving america more progressively than you will ever have under osama bin laden or any islamic fundamentalists and that's what you have to accept and that's that's why you have to play the game strategically you will always have more access in america to moving it in a direction that benefits you right than in a country that is it is specifically like um, very nationalistic the way like Islamic countries are. But if you're a Muslim, then you might benefit from living in those countries. So I'm not saying it's bad or good. Like 
I'm saying depending on the game you're playing. So if you're like a really devout Muslim and you love Muslim culture, live in a Muslim country, bro. You'll thrive. Like queen, you'll thrive, right? That's why people like, quote, love Dubai. Great, thrive. But if you're a progressive who wants Western values or perceived Western values, then you do have to invest in a place like America, which does discriminate, does hurt its own people, isn't economically sound, is frustrating, is discriminatory. It's very difficult. It's just different kinds of difficult. So when you're thinking as an individual, how do I play the game? Just remember, like, for your own interest, for your own interest, like, choose a political side that will allow you to play the game a little bit more efficiently and at the same time recognize, like, all violence around the world is unjustified, right? From But remember that all the violence around the world is unjustified, but whoever wins, they will force you, they will be violent towards you or not. And that's the question. In a society where someone else wins, are you going to be the populace they keep having a good relationship with? Like some people feel like in America, their particular minority status lends them more violence than other countries. You should move. And then if the America, for whatever reason, because it's discriminatory, will actually like adhere to your particular minority, you should move there because it's an investment. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm saying play the game smarter and better than even the people. Um that seem to have all the power. Islamic fundamentalism at its core and its root when it comes to some of the world's most well-known and notorious Islamic fundamentalist organizations is that whether or not the United States or the Jews or Israel exist or are in the Middle East and beyond, the violence will never and can never cease. Civilians and children who are infidels, who are genteels and who are Islamic Islamic will be unalived and necessarily have to be unalived. This is an essential underlying point of Islamic fundamentalism. So I just read a letter to America and I will never look at life the same. I will never look at this country the same. I will never, I, please read it. And if you have read it, let me know if you are also going through an existential crisis. Has she been showing more black women? Has there even been a black man or a white man? Has there been any men she's shown? Is it mostly women who are reading this letter? And are black women reading the gay anti-gay part? Are white women reading the anti-gay part and the anti-women part? Has Kidology showed any men reacting to this letter? In this very moment, because in the last 20 minutes, my entire viewpoint on the entire life I have believed and I have lived has changed. A thing that I found really interesting about these TikToks is this idea of an existential crisis that all of these people are going through. They're going through some kind of moment of awakening or enlightenment. They are seeing the world differently after reading bin Laden's letter to America. Now, as I've explained when it comes to Islamic fundamentalism, I think it is very important not to take what Osama bin Laden, an Islamic fundamentalist, is saying about US or Western-led foreign policy because he is inevitably saying this or was inevitably saying this from a very, very biased perspective and not just biased in so far as at least these TikTokers believe he was acting um, out of reaction to US foreign policy, but from the perspective of his ideals and ideology. Ideals and ideology which he came to believe wholeheartedly by the age of 17. I think Osama bin Laden was very successful as well as Al-Qaeda has been very successful in creating this fantastical image of Osama bin Laden as some kind of poor revolutionary, as some kind of struggler hiding out from US Navy SEALs trying to murder him before he released all their secrets. In fact, Osama bin Laden was the son of Mohammed bin Awad bin Laden, the founder of the Saudi bin Laden group, a multinational construction conglomerate. The notorious, absolutely stinking rich bin Laden family are infamously connected to the Saudi royal family and have always been. This is a picture of young Osama bin Laden. How cute! I love photos like this. My family has so many photos like this from Iraq. They look so modern and cute. 
Sweden with his incredibly westernized family on a trip to Sweden in about 1971. I believe the whole family were in Sweden because one of the Bin Ladens was negotiating a deal with Volvo. And as I said, by the age of 17, some biographies into the Bin Laden family say that by the age of 16, Osama Bin Laden had pretty much abandoned his westernization and his western childhood in favor of what is now known as Islamic fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. Osama Bin Laden's childhood was one of wealth, one of privilege, one of opportunity that any child, not just back in the 70s, but any child today can only dream of. It isn't because of any brutality which this incredibly wealthy child experienced, endured or saw that led to his religious awakening. The consensus tends to be that he was a bored rich kid looking for identity and he found that in the quote um fishy Brittany bin laden calling a terrorist cute sounds sussy um i'm calling their fashion cute fashion <laughs> in my defense all i see is like a teenager this sweet baby babino grew up and became bin laden anti-pork eating anti-drink having anti-sex having anti-gay what a but then I look at my own brothers who love Andrew Tate and I'm like, how does this happen, bro? And it happens because we 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 get comfortable thinking the answers are simple. You know, we get comfortable thinking that the answers are like other people. The answers are simple, like humans are going to human. But we get really comfortable pointing the finger and saying like, you're why my life is hard. Feminists are the reason my life is hard. Women are the reason modern feminism is the reason life is hard. Sir, men are the reason life is hard. I'm just kidding. Quote unquote, degeneracy of the West that he observed. That is the degeneracy of the West that he observed whilst he summer schooled and summered in Oxford, went on vacation throughout Europe, and spent time with his two Spanish female friends. Osama bin Laden wasn't radicalized by the actions of the West. He was radicalized by his own personal identity crisis that eventually the entire world would have to become a part of and endure and suffer the consequences of. I I really enjoy men, but when I see a group of men like this in a room, all I think is like, the last place I'd want to be. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, remember that if a naked man walked through a room of women, most of the women would probably ask him if he wants to wear a coat. But if a naked girl gets thrown into a group of men, Contrary to the public image of him hiding out in the mountains, being pursued by US Navy SEALs before being shot, Osama bin Laden was actually living in a million dollar palatial mansion and good for you, Laden. compound in Pakistan's Abbottabad. He lived there in his mansion that was specifically built for him in 2005 for a total of six years. He wasn't living like some rogue revolutionary or struggler all by himself alone, fearing for his safety and life. In fact, he was able to live as a strict and patriarchal father and family man with a fully functioning security system at his disposal. Whilst Osama bin Laden was living in a million dollar mansion and compound with full security with his family, his youngest bride. Pishy, why are you Miss Sandra Sleely? Brittany, look, at in my defense, I just want to give credit where men want to take credit. Men always want to brag that they're the reason the world is the way it is. And they always want to brag that they're in charge and they want to brag that they're smarter than women. So if they want to brag that they're so good at like being in charge, I want them to take credit for all of it. He had, at least according to experts, at oh. least five wives or four wives, four or five wives. Hey, and with polyamory. many of his children at this mansion and compound, he was directly or indirectly involved in terrorist attacks, not just against white people or whatever Why? you want to call white people, Britons, Westerners. He was responsible for terrorist attacks against the very people that he claimed to be fighting for. Afghans. Indians, Jordanians, Pakistanis, all of them civilians. This is not the action of a freedom fighter. This is the action of a fundamentalist. It started as a normal school day, but then the Taliban. In 2000, 
December 2014, the Pakistani Taliban ambushed a school in, in Peshawar, a city in Pakistan where 98.5% of the people are Muslim. Stormed the building. As the killing began, security forces moved in and fierce gun battles followed. News of the attack spread and anguished parents rushed to the scene, not knowing if their children were alive or dead. Mm. And I think this brings mm. up another very important thing, which is, I think, often taken for granted. Uh, the ends justify the means. That's the worst kind of philosophy to hold. The worst kind of belief to have is that the ends justify the means. Granted, when it comes to Islamic fundamentalists, which is the importance of human shields. And this is something that is very characteristic of terrorist organizations. Think of Boko Haram and the mass kidnapping of Nigerian girls mm. to come and be brides and ultimately act as human shields. Like, do you understand that these people are us and they are me and you and you and me? Like, it's just a matter of, like, where you're born, what, what bubble you're born into. It's not your skin color. It is nothing like that. A lot of Americans think, like, oh, well, they're just, like, black people over there or Muslims over there. No, they're just people born there, right? Black people can be born here, and they're completely different than black people over there. Are Muslims born? It's not they're us and we're them and it's just a matter of, like, what are they doing over here in this bubble? But they could have been just as, like, culturally whatever as much as anybody else we could have been them it's just like that's not our bubble right like we're all just people born into belief systems and cultural expectations and then for them that's like their norm or not their norm and for us this is our norm or not our norm and even within states like in america there's like a norm to every state right like every state we always talk about it on this channel like oh um do you guys think this is normal or this is normal? Like, we're always talking about expectations. Oh, do you think, like, this is normal? It's, we're saying, what? how were you raised to think this is how the world is? You know what I mean? It's just so sad. Or, like, the violence that's happening in the Congo right now. Or the fact that, like, I saw a TikTok that said, are we sharing, like, are we living on the same planet? And it showed, like, the Palestinians dying and then the celebrities celebrating Halloween. And the reality is, is like, there's no time in history where you weren't living on a planet where somebody was under suffrage, where somebody was suffering, where somebody was being oppressed. Like, there's no time in history in which you have any right to enjoy your life if you're always going to believe you have no right to enjoy it when people are suffering. Because people are suffering every moment of every day. Every time you have a baby, you are bringing that baby into a world of suffering. Life itself is suffering. It's just a matter of how much and how you handle that suffering. So again, like, you know, we are all having a different relationship with like, when are we allowed to enjoy our life? And by someone's standards, never. And by other people's standards, always. And by some people's standards, sometimes. And that's like the real, that's the radical acceptance I don't think we want to believe in. Like this person who put out this TikTok, what? when do they actually get to celebrate their life? Because if they're using that as a, if they really think that, if they think we can't enjoy our life if people are suffering, like they are never allowed to have a birthday party. They're never allowed to celebrate a holiday. They're never allowed to do anything because there is no time in history when people weren't suffering or in war or being like around the world. People are being slaughtered right now. Right now. I think I have more of a philosophy of like, I'm going to enjoy my life. And when the war hits me, that's going to that I'll handle it. Well, like the way you handle it, because eventually it's going to hit us all somewhere on the planet. It's going to be our country next. Right. And so I think it's more like as I sit in a town with Roman ruins, I think I just radically accept that, like. It's either going to hit you or not. Maybe you get to live your whole life without it ever hitting you like in your face for real, real. But someone's going to have to face it sometime. That's why I mean, we are a blip of history. We are all a blip of history. And until you realize you could do something else with your life, we're always going to have to be radically accepting that other people are going to do this with theirs. I'm the one who captured your girls. I'm going to sell them on the market. See, all of these men, that's what I mean. All of these men, what do you want me to do with them? Would you like me to murder them? Would you like us to jail them? Would you like us to, what do you want us to do with all of these men? You know, like, what are we supposed to do with them? And please note once again that it is a group of men. Because as much as women absolutely do uplift the patriarchy and uplift this type of bullshit, they are also primarily the victims of it. 
right? Even in the Congo right now, it is a group of militant men who are coming in hordes and murdering people, okay? So again, unless Israel has a female prime minister at this moment or, pa or Palestine is being run by women, I'm pretty sure men are doing this. And so again, if men think this is the way to like gain power, they're technically right, but it's not the way to gain peace. And that's the question. Do we want peace? Because this is not peace. Okay. So again, what am I, what do you want me to do with these people? Do you want me to stop eating my food and watching my anime because this is happening in the world? Obviously this is a past story. Or do we just deal with it when it hits us at home? I'm thinking about a natural disaster right now because apparently there's a big volcano that might hit Italy and we're protected by a mountain. But literally that could happen. What if Italy gets wiped off the map in our lifetime because of a volcano? Wouldn't that be interesting? All of, all of Italy, boom, gone. You know, not just the men are doing, or not just the men doing this, not just the men doing this. Do you see any women there? Are there women holding guns? What do you mean not just the men doing this? Are the men in power or not? Are men primarily in power or not? Stop saying, like, not just the men are doing this. In terms of numbers, the women are inconsequential. They're usually going along with it because they will be victimized by the same men they claim to follow. So again, like, who is in charge in the world? Who are most of the world's leaders? Who are most of the CEOs in the world? Who are mostly in charge? Men. Okay. It might be men on TV, but never forget that there are always women working in the background with sim for similar goals. Are they? Because I would ask you this. How many of the men and women in these groups want to be doing this and how many of them feel pressured to do it? Right? That's what I want to know. Because remember, you're not getting stories of women raping men. You're getting stories of men raping women and girls in hordes. So again, who has more power and who's being coerced into these situations? Yes, women uplift the patriarchy and women uplift these people, but do they do it because they have a choice or do they do it because they feel like they have to? And that's the question I'd like to ask, right? I want to know. In the Rwandan genocide, it was mostly child soldiers. And who trained and brainwashed those child soldiers? Who brainwashed the child soldiers? Who brainwashed the people to keep doing this? How many of these people are brainwashed? How many of these men are victims of brainwashing and religious like I, 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 ideology? And that's the next question to ask you. What about American soldiers that get excited to go to Iraq and shoot like Iraqis dead? I would call that a form of brainwashing. Absolutely, right? Bring back our girls or bring back our, oh, bring back our army. Think of Hamas headquartering and having tunnels running under civilian areas, under hospitals and essential civilian services. Think of how Osama bin Laden was constantly surrounded by not just his wives, but his children. Think of how Osama bin Laden used his youngest wife as a human shield minutes before he was shot. And I think it's important to note here when it comes to the shooting of Osama bin Laden that this idea that the US military or that even in the case of the current war happening. Uh, what's the difference between Osama bin Laden using his wife as a human shield or his children and Trump using his kids to lie for him so they can face federal prison? Uh, between Israel and Palestine is indiscriminate bombing of civilians. Nothing is planned or coordinated. That it is basically terrorism is not the full picture and warfare and international warfare is far more complex than that. In fact, when it came to Osama bin Laden, Barack Obama rejected initial plans to bomb the compound. Instead, he had elite Team 6 special forces enter and raid the compound. Bin Laden as is characteristic of Islamic fundamentalists, chose to have his family with him, knowing full well that this creates and has created contradictions and creates obvious issues when it comes to nation states having to follow or being under the scrutiny and watchful eye of the laws of armed conflict. When it comes to states 
the law of armed conflict is something which they have to abide by. And in this, most importantly, is the tenet that they have to distinguish very clearly and very purposefully between civilians and combatants. And this is why fundamentalist groups the world over refuse to distinguish between civilians and combatants. As I said, I found it so interesting how they're going through an existential crisis, a crisis of identity, I suppose, as American or as Western. I saw this one. She's like a military soldier thinking like, oh my, I remember where I was when Bin Laden, they announced it. I was at my best friend's house and we were watching golf or tennis. And then they interrupted our sports to show us that he died. And I was like, I want to see the body or I don't believe it. And that's what I said, girl, out loud. I was like, oh, you gave him a proper Muslim barrier without me seeing the body. I want to see his body like we saw Saddam and his sons, bruh. Anyways, Sending his letter, like sending, uh, seeing his letter to America, knowing he was right. What was he right about? You guys are all fucking crazy. Bin Laden was no more right than the American government is justified in going into these countries. Everyone just thinks they're right with a little bit of truth and a lot of bit of lies and justifying the murder of civilians because our side should win. What was Bin Laden right about? Was it the part where he said no homosexuals, no alcohol and no pork and no fun? Was he right about that? dumb bitch i'm sorry i'm so violent oh i'm just late i'm getting tired and osama bin laden was also going through a crisis when he was young a crisis of identity and explanation there are all all these fucking people all these women bro why is it all women you were watching golf no i was at my friend's house and they were watching golf i'm just there to support them as a fellow gay of the world and becoming a man. I what need they, you to stop. Like, what are they doing? Like, what are they seeing? Are they? Re- they're not reading the whole letter. I refuse what to believe it. What you're doing, it. and go read a letter to America. I refuse to it believe it. It is literally the craziest thing I've read in a while. And while I can't say that I'm that surprised, I am pretty shocked. So go read it and tell me what you think, because I really also need to talk to other people about this. And actually, before you even read the letter, I did want to mention: in reading the letter, I could only think of this tweet that I saw the other day. Under settler colonialism, any kind of resistance is branded as a terrorist because the only acceptable violence is violence of the occupier. Yeah, bro. Spider-Man meme, bro. Under settler colonialism, any kind of resistance- No one's the good guy. Get over it. ...is branded as terrorist. Everyone's the good guy. No one's the good guy. Because the only acceptable violence is violence by the occupier. Who's the occupier in the Middle East, bitch? What does that mean? Why did, why did they literally think Bin Laden could be right? What is he right about? He's just saying his perspective of the truth, just like the U.S. is. I think it is so incredible. And I mean incredible as in incredible, like fascinating, intriguing how religious fundamentalism has been able to essentially co-opt ideas about colonialism, about a colonizer, a very clear idea and caricature of a colonizer. And it's been- Um, To be fair, like colonizing, colonizers be colonizing. Been able to do this to the extent that the most illiberal things are being justified or are being- No, 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 no. Cass, you said pretty sure mostly Gen Z. These people said they were alive during 9-11. That's millennials. Those aren't Gen Zers, right? Like millennials are having this crisis. Some of them were in the military. Seen as somewhat reasonable or understandable by... Right? Gen Zers weren't aligned. Weren't Gen Zers born in 2001, so they missed 9-11 basically? Or am I wrong? Individual. We are all the occupier, are we not? All live on earth, last time I checked. I mean, you would think. Whom these very fundamentalists would from the get-go of any... I think they mean they don't see, they don't think he's a terrorist. They see him as someone who was justified in protecting himself. Yeah, America's no less a terrorist than Bin Laden is and Bin Laden's no less a terrorist than America is, but they're all terrorizing the world. (laughs) creation of the world that they see have executed publicly and this is because violence is inherent to fundamentalism it isn't about colonialism this isn't about the world this isn't about foreign policy in so far as just boots on the ground this is about an ideal of a world the creation of for example with the islamic state Khorasan or with Boko haram this creation of an islamic state oh. Of a caliph- Gen Z's 1997. I didn't realize. But just 
look at Afghanistan and the Taliban. And even though the Taliban has formed a government, is no longer at least officially considered terroristic, and has essentially quashed Al-Qaeda from Afghanistan altogether since the US withdrawal from Kabul, the Taliban is still at its core and based just on its founding, based on its roots, mm. an Islamic fundamentalist organization. Violence is endemic to it. I think it is very telling that since the withdrawal of the colonizer, the US from Afghanistan, violence in Afghanistan, violence perpetuated by the Taliban against Afghan civilians, and has, according to some... The familiar sound of war has fallen silent across much, uh, so much of Afghanistan. The year since the Taliban's terrifying triumph of the country's Western-backed government, the rate of violence has dropped sharp sharply. Do not confuse this with peace. The country has grown poor and hungry. Women are worse off with few opportunities to work or education. And data on record, record wait, and data on recorded acts of violence by the Taliban showed the suicide bombings and airstrikes have given way more. Uh, way too more targeted attacks such as torture and executions. The new Taliban behave a lot like the old lot who ruled the country from 1996 to 2001. Sources gotten even worse when it comes to the oh, I can't. treatment I of Afghanis. And this is excluding the Taliban's treatment Great. of women and girls. And just to further demonstrate how complex this all is, the withdrawal of US troops from Kabul wasn't because the Taliban and Afghanis had chased out the colonizer because they were liberating themselves from colonial powers and influences over their affairs and land. In fact, US withdrawal from Kabul was on condition that the Taliban forming a government would replace Press Al Qaeda and Islamic State Khorasan. Since the US withdrawal, the CIA has been sharing intelligence with the Taliban. I think right now it is clear that the interests of the Taliban and the US align. I guess if we're going to use the terms of pop academia, this would mean that the interests of the colonized and the colonizer align, of the imperialized and the imperialist align. Who would have thunk that the world is actually far more complex? than what it is regrettably given credit for. And this is characteristic of international relations because right now the interests of the US and the Taliban align, but this is clearly and obviously at a price and a cost. This represents a contradiction of liberal values and liberalism that essentially the US and the West have actually abandoned young girls, women and children to the fate and of men. an Islamic fundamental government and thus to the inevitable violence that the Taliban represents and will continue to inevitably represent because of everything that I have detailed in this video. And this demonstrates that there is just always contradictions. They are always compromised. Life is tiny contradictions and big ones. That are made in international relations. Mm -hmm. That it is very difficult to abide by anything resembling a just war theory. That it is nigh impossible to really interpret, to adequately align oneself to as a nation, to the laws of armed conflict. And like I said, nothing is clear cut. There is no clear-cut dichotomy between the haves and the have-nots, between the colonized and the colonizer, between good and bad. In the 1970s, the CIA worked with the intelligence chief of the Palestinian Liberation Organization for almost an entire decade. And this was even though Israel had classified him as a terrorist. I say this just to express that all of these things are not so clear clear cut or in the realm of our full understanding and appreciation. The world of foreign policy and international relations cannot be reduced to buzzwords or to pamphlets or to sympathizing with the explanations put forward by a clearly biased religious zealot and fundamentalist who has the blood of hundreds of thousands of women and children and innocent men on his hands. Everybody is entitled and everybody 
body inevitably goes through moments of awakening, through identity crises. Bubbles pop, bubble pop, bubble. Remember, they're having a bubble pop. And then what if I went to them and said like, oh, you have to pop like a thousand more bubbles. They'd be like, it's exhausting to literally be like, oh my God, that's not it. I'm not done. I'm like, I mean, you could be done. You could stop here if you'd like. But you can imagine if these same TikTokers were popping like more and more and more and more and more bubbles. Like again, every time you have that moment, you're like, oh my gosh, that's how the world works. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Brittany about to grab some Z's on us. Honestly, I'm so close to ready. This we're almost done and then I'm going to sleep. But in that we should be cautious of perceiving ourselves as knowing more than we actually do. We should caution ourselves against perceiving ourselves to be informed when we are all so clearly and so mortifyingly ill-informed. That's why, again, instead of trying to be informed in a political sense, you should be informed in a human sense. Philosophy, right, should inform you of well, it's not that you want to choose a philosophy and identify with it. Don't do that. You want to choose to live life through a philosophy of understanding, like a lifestyle of values, and then know why you got there. So again, what is the value system of a fundamentalist that allows them to hold these beliefs and discriminate against others? Because if they say, I value freedom, well, obviously not. If you say, I value this, it's like, I value everything on a spectrum. I value freedom on a spectrum and honesty on a spectrum. And I value this. And it's like, where does your spectrum lie is the question. So when I say I value freedom, I mean it on a spectrum. So obviously there are types of people that I don't want to allegedly have freedom. Like maybe if you're a PDF file, I don't want you to have the freedom to to engage with children, right? I want to protect kids over your right to um, engage with them, right? Because I feel like they can't consent. And on the same front, like I, again, want to be very clear about what a PDF file is because I don't like living in a world where everyone thinks everyone's a PDF file because like that's not statistically true. And so again, when we talk about these things, I want there to be an understanding that we'll never know the full story, even though I think objective truth exists. And there is a truth, like somewhere in the universe, they say God, God is the one who knows. I don't believe in a God, but somebody knows what's really in the heart of Bin Laden and what was really in the heart of the US and like what's really in the heart of everybody. But instead of being so focused on finding that out, because you might not, I would focus on why we got here in the first place and how do we break generational curses and cultures. How do we actually do that? How do feminists contend with the idea of promoting Islam as feminist while understanding that fundamental Islam just isn't and fundamental Christianity as well? Why do Christians say, you know, Christianity is so good for women when fundamentally Christianity is like not? And so it's like, why do people think this? And, you know, it's interesting. I was watching um, Not So Erudite on a panel the other day with a bunch of women who are more like Christian right wingers ish and they looked at her as very progressive and like so different from them and that's because her form of christianity is like um she has like a subjective relationship with christianity which is fine she's not a fundamentalist right but she talks about fundy christians all the time and again none of the people on the panel i think were fundy but they were more conservative than her in policy right the thing that makes erudite so unique as a christian is that she doesn't follow it like it's objective she follows it like it is a subjective relationship with herself versus fundamentalists follow it like it's objective the same way bin laden follows islam like it's objective like it's specific like everyone should do this and same with growing up catholic if you raised roman catholic it's objective they want you to be catholic like my parents with all their good intentions every time I talk to them truly hope I convert they're waiting for my husband and I to convert they're just like so excited at the idea that we might convert and it's like why and it's like because they think they have an objective connection with information that I think we need to admit we just don't but we can have a better relationship with communication if we think about everything from a values perspective versus an ideological perspective. But then again, when I do that, the internet goes, well, what's your prescription? How do you think all humans should live? How am I supposed to answer that question without giving you a world that's really about my ego and my values? I'm saying, what if the prescription we gave was to like be less violent and to be more accepting, but to be reasonable with your limitations. Well, that's not exciting. That's pretty boring. Like, oh, well, but then how do I know who's the good guy? How do I know I'm a good guy? It's like, I think we're all probably good. And they're like, you think everyone's good? And it's like, well, not everybody, but like most people on the macro. It's like, we don't know, but we know enough to know like stabbing a person is wrong. It causes much more harm than good. 
unless it's in direct self-defense, which is also causing a harm to you anyways. When you have an abortion, I just, you know that famous TikToker with the buzzed hair and the funny makeup? She was like really femme at one point and now she's more like non-binary looking. She just shared on the internet that she had an abortion via the pill. And I was like, oh, interesting. And you could see in her old content when she was going through it, how it impacted her. She talked about how horrible it was. It was the right decision, but it caused so much harm to her body and to her spirit. And it was still the right decision. And I think that's the radical acceptance we have to we have to have is that even though sometimes abortion is almost like self-defense, it will hurt you. And so we want to harm reduce. So even something that could be as important as self-defense can still cause harm. Everything causes harm. It's just a matter of what spectrum of the harm it's going to cause, right? And then that's the question we have to ask. Again, gay people existing is allegedly causing harm to people who feel like they have a connection with God and it brings them harm. Ooh, it hurts their hearts thinking you could be, ooh, gross with the same sex. It's like, okay, but like, is it objective? Well, what is objective when it comes to causing harm? There are a lot of decisions which individuals whom I do not care a hoot about, whom I absolutely loathe insofar as what they represent, have to make. And they have to make decisions, decisions that I personally wouldn't make. But I would say that I wouldn't make those decisions because I don't have the information which they have, because I don't have the expectations, the burdens, the pressure which they have. A pressure, burden, and expectation. Great bubble, that Great bubble explanation. That is represented by every single one of these TikToks, that of keeping civilians safe, that of upholding a stable nation state so that civilians can be delusional, privileged, entitled, ill-informed liberals and not suffer the true consequences of that so that these predominantly women can exist in a society where they are not fearing being repressed or having their rights taken away by their government on a day-to-day -day basis so that these women in these TikToks can, like me, get their nails done beautifully, something which Afghani women and children are forbidden from doing, so that these individual TikTokers can express their views openly on a platform without repercussions, without fear of the loss of their lives or their families' lives, so that we can worry about our identities, we can worry about the things that we worry about and care about. I think it is very important that we don't take this for granted. And I think it's interesting when we think about self-determination. I think a good example of this is countries that want Sharia law as the law of the land. I think the most comprehensive survey of this was done in 2013. And when you look at the countries who want or where the majority of Muslims want Sharia law, it is Afghanistan, Iraq, the Palestinian territories, Malaysia, Niger, Pakistan, Morocco, Bangladesh, Djibouti. And isn't it interesting how these are the countries where women are the most repressed, where they have the least autonomy, bodily autonomy, political and social autonomy and ability to exercise their rights as women, their humanhood, have the least access to education. And I think this demonstrates a contradiction and a double-edged sword, not just in this idea of self-determination and that of self-determination of a colonized, I guess, quote unquote, not my quote, people, but the contradictions. In and I also wonder how many men in those groups also don't want to be doing the social pressure. I wonder how many men in those groups also don't want to actually do this. They just feel the pressure to say that they do. I see that in Western men around like the Tate conversations where men really have a hard time um, saying out loud like hey maybe I'm not focused on sex so much or hey maybe I don't want to like um objectify women or hey like actually that's not my vibe and other men will shame other men for how they act and women will do the same but women like we have uh, more ability to speak up around each other I think but I see I wonder how many of the men in these fundamentalist countries want that and how many of them just go along with it because they're afraid of being the outlier just everything. Because I can't help but wonder if these statistics would be different, especially when we consider that in Afghanistan, where 99% of people want Sharia law, the literacy rate of men is... Am I want to know like what that looks like. And even when they say Palestinians are 75% in support of Hamas, like 
are they or is there like a pressure because i already know like growing up in a christian home i stayed closeted for so long that it was hard to speak your real opinion because you were feared afraid of being ostracized right of losing everything so if we give people an ability to say their real opinion without being ostracized like what would their opinion really be and then even so like maybe not ostracization but maybe like i'm open with boundaries maybe Nero says, I think you lay out your reasoning behind your opinions very well in this stream and why you went away from politics and prescriptions. That's good. A mere 52% and of woman, a mere 23%. So I just say mm -hmm. all of these things to really just say that Osama bin Laden's letter to America or letter to the American people is really not that profound it overly simplifies something that should never be simplified or reduced to a caricaturing of ideas of people it is a letter that is inherently anti-semitic that is inherently anti-palestinian people that is civilians that is inherently anti-civilians anti-women and children that is anti anybody who does not want to conform to sharia law if if you are not an Islamic fundamentalist, according to the standards and expectations of Al-Qaeda, then you are not worthy of being a part of this world. It is just quite eerie to think that somebody like Osama bin Laden criticizing US foreign policy can drive such a response. And I think it is quite frightening and is quite telling of where Western liberal ideals are currently. No, this is where Z and I differ. It's not telling of anything. Just like the letter doesn't feel profound to Z, neither does we where we are right now seem profound. It is exactly where humans have always ended up. It is not profound. It is not telling. Nothing is new. This is to be predicted. This is normal. This is literally to be predicted. It's why the U.S. is Osama bin Laden. We are all the fire nation. The letter is only profound if it's popping a bubble, but it's not profound anymore. Like, see... See, this is, okay, so I'm taking the next step. All of it is just humans are going to human. It's predictable and normal and common. Everything happening makes sense. They're having a bubble pop. They're having a realization. And then they're going to have another bubble pop that says like, oh, like Osama bin Laden is also America to somebody else. And like America is Osama bin Laden to somebody else. And oh, we're all each other. Maybe we should all just stop then. But we can't because we do some part of us because we're on these levels of introspection, really think that like we have the answers. So I don't think it's interesting. I don't think it's telling of where we are. I don't think it's anything. It's like people who are like, we're more divided than we've ever been. Guys, history is nothing but division and war. Are we more divided than we've ever been? Because as far as I'm concerned, like we have interracial marriage, we have gay marriage, we have like abortion rights around the world. Like, are we more divided than we've ever been? Are we? I keep tricking myself into thinking things are getting better and the world keeps proving me wrong. Things are getting better and things are getting worse because it's not linear. But it is getting better. But it is getting worse. But it is getting better. Because like, who? what are you rating it up against? Guys, to say something is better or worse, what are you rating it up against? The world is getting better more than it is getting worse. Right? Honestly, this is far from the first time we got this kind of reaction on mass. Literally. Vegan says, that's what I mean. It seems like we end up in the same place. That's why it seems so futile. When you thought I was making a comment about men versus women, but I wasn't. Okay, fair, fair. There is a loneliness epidemic. So is that different than before? Is that different compared to other things? There was a starvation epidemic. There was the Black Plague before. Like the loneliness epidemic isn't that different. It's just the same crisis in a different form right? Maybe Kidology is new enough to the internet that this is the first time she's witnessed it. Maybe. Yeah, actually, based off her content, yeah, she is new to the internet. So maybe, right? Because like, yeah, maybe that is it. Because what's happening with like FD Signifier and all those people kind of happened during like, bre uh, like um, brunch gate and stuff like that, right? It's happened a bunch of times over. And then before that, all the time. So again, it's like, like humans repeat history because like, humans just like we go through cycles we don't break generational curses it takes time but nothing that's happening is very much different from what's happened before again we're just like it just looks different so it feels different and it is different on the whole like societal 
like sociology wise, if you take it out to the macro in that sense, things are getting better and we are moving forward. Like we should be excited that the worst problem we're having is that people are lonely. If the worst crisis you're having is that men are lonely, that is much better than the Black Plague or fucking starvation of 99% of the planet or the eradication of 99. Like, hello, the worst thing is that you're alone. Get a, get a, get a flashlight, bro. Like literally what? It's not my fault. You all didn't have parents and kids and siblings you hang out with. Like literally what a privileged crisis to have. But at the same time, it is a very big deal and it feels like the biggest deal because we're having it. But it is a very privileged crisis to be having. I feel lonely in a world where we're connected more than ever because I'm not introspective enough to know why I'm alone. Cool. How I would say a lot of young people are very disenchanted with what is being offered in the West. And I don't think that this exclusively comes from a place of privilege. I think that this comes from a place also of abandonment by our modern political system, where Westerners are increasingly not seeing much hope in the future of their country. Are not Do you think women and blacks felt like they were seeing much hope 200 years ago? Hello? connected to their communities and to people where identity politics is the rule of the day where identity tribes dominate and isolate us from each other from varying perspectives from understanding and from empathy i think these are it's interesting people always talk about empathy but like can you not see that these people are reading bin laden's letter and literally having their world shattered and it is profound it is profound for them. This is an amazing experience they're having in their life right now. This is like a huge deal and the step in the right direction. Because maybe if they start to realize like, wait, was Bin Laden right? And it's like, mm, not really, but also America uses the same talking points to justify their violence around the world. And Israel is using the same talking points to justify their violence against Palestinians. And Palestinians are using the same um, justification to hurt Israel. And that's what you're hopefully going to realize eventually. Hopefully you pop enough bubbles, okay? Hopefully to realize like we're all the same. We are all the same. We are all the same. There are merely people on TikTok who believe themselves to be far more informed and politically aware than they actually are. This is one of the reasons why I'm very cautious to call myself political because I'm very aware of how ill-informed I am about the world and about politics, that I am very much informed by my feelings and emotions when it comes to watching the news, seeing what is happening in the world, and that this is something that is far more complex than I could ever possibly comprehend than any of us could ever really properly comprehend and understand. So yes, it is very peculiar to see. What if the man's loneliness epidemic is going to be fulfilled by becoming fundamental Muslims? What if they start to feel less lonely because they have this big thing? That's why I think Andrew Tate appeals to men so much is they make he makes them feel less alone in their singledom. And so they feel like they're being seen by their bros and then they feel fulfilled. Maybe that's why fundamental like um, Islam works or Christianity works or men have clubs or men join like groups in the same way that women do. But men do it and like maybe it makes them feel less lonely. But also like what is loneliness if you don't have a relationship with your consciousness? Abba and Preach put out a video today. And Abba's like, I really think we live for other people. And I don't really agree with him in this regard because him and I also talked about loneliness in our podcast together. But I will say that I think for some people he is, yes, it's true. Like I meet some people and they're like, I just realized like these people weren't my friends. Like these are my real friends. And I really think if you struggle making friends, you don't have a good relationship with your consciousness. There's no way you are having an introspective, introspective relationship with your consciousness in a, in a very specific way and you are freaking out over not having friends. Because again, I don't think it makes any sense. Like it could make sense in some aspect. Like I think some people have different variations of friendship. Like for me, I want diverse friends that can be like, you're being kind of messy and dumb right now, but you do you. Like, hello, like one of my homies, he was like, oh, I'm dating this girl and showed me a picture. And I was like, oh, she looks dysfunctional. What's her problem? So he goes, oh, let me tell you. And rattles off like 10 issues. And I'm like, 
I could tell by her photo. And he's like, yeah, I know. And I was like, okay, hello, why are we dating her? And he goes, well, I just think like she's cool and we get along. And like if it works out, it works out. And I'm like, okay, fine, cool, based. If it works out, it works out, whatever, right? He's not going to try to save her. You know, he doesn't believe in that. He follows like very, sp okay, fine, whatever. But it is one of those things where like, I want to be able to say that to my friends, but maybe somebody else has an idea of friendship where like you're only friends with people where you align politically, you align spiritually, you're all Catholic, you're all Muslim, you all agree on the same things, you all like believe and do the same things, right? I don't want that. I want a friendship where we're all so different and I'm able to say like, mm, or I'm able to mind my own business and be like, mm, everyone is different, right? Everyone is different. So when I hear like, I'm lonely, I have no friends and it's like, mm, how does one look dysfunctional? Oh, it's there. It's the same way people look autistic, but they don't. There's a look, but there's not a look, but there's a look, but there's not a look, but there's a look. There's a look. People have a look. They have a look. And look, we're all dysfunctional on a spectrum, but some people got a look that says I'm super dysfunctional, bro. And some people got a look that says I'm not. It's their energy, bro. Not to be woo woo, but it's like, what's your problem? Tell me, what is it? And they'll name it. I'm like, mm-hmm. 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 I'm just saying it's a look. It's a look. People have a look, okay? Young, brown, predominantly brown, Western. Unkept and ungroomed? No. But their spirit is. It's not their aesthetic that's unkept and ungroomed. It's their spirit. Their, their energy is unkept and ungroomed. But not their aesthetic, not their clothes, not their hair. It's their spirit. They're like aura. It's like, mm woman um, mm -hmm. simping over Osama bin Laden's letter or even over Osama bin Laden himself. But this is the world that we live in and I think it's important for us to discuss this, for us to try and understand this as opposed- oh, by the way, uh, who said it? Uh, hello? Cass, guy recently told me he was ghosted by three supposed friends. Look, I've been ghosted by people too. And I always like, why are you doing that? And then I had to realize like, oh, they're just like, they don't want to know. They don't know how to stop. They don't know how to consent. They don't know how to say, I don't want to consent to this friendship anymore. So I'm like, okay. So I just see that as like, cool. Like we're not like, it's the same with dating. When it doesn't work out, it's like, okay, cool. We're not like, we're not compatible. You're not my soulmate. Moving on. Like, I'm not worried about it, right? Like your soulmate is not going to let you like drown in the ocean when there's plenty of room on the door. You feel me? Okay. You're either going to die together or like, ma'am. Okay. So it's the same with friendship. Like the friends that are meant to be there will like learn to be there even when it's hard. And the friends that like are meant to be with you for some time will be with you for some time and then they won't be. And the, every friend has a different relationship with you, right? Every friend has a different relationship with you. Everyone has a different. Again, when I hear people say like, I have no friends, I'm thinking you have no friends that you specific. It's like when Z says she's an incel. And people are like, Kidology, you're not an incel. People want to fuck you. She's saying, I don't find people I connect with on a spiritual level enough to be soulmates with. So when people say like, I have no friends, they're not saying I have no one who wants to hang out with me, though that's possible. They're saying, I don't have anyone who wants to hang out with me where it feels profound and like we're connecting, right? So when Z, when Kidology says like, yeah, I feel like a, fem a, a femcel or a female incel, She's saying, I'm not finding anyone that I really connect with. And that's fair, right? Because again, when this the queer woman who created the word incel created it, she created it to explain that I'm not finding any women that I can even pursue romantically who could be into me, right? So everyone is like misunder... When they're talking, they're not saying the same things, you know? Cases, facts, bro, it's just additional info. Take it, update your current reality model to fit in the new info, process it and continue on with life. Mm. Selena says, make different connections with different people and have different expectations of those connections. You know, like that's the thing is like have a different, don't expect the same amount of intimacy from every friendship. Or in my case, I always say like, I'm not gonna see you fully. None of my friends, I, I hate Ugh. the most frustrating conversations I have with my friends and family are people who are like, why can't I see you? Why can't you just explain it to me until I get it? Well, obviously, dumb, dumb, because you're not getting it naturally. Okay, it's not my fault we're not clicking naturally. Accept it. My journey has been, look at me as a borderline, radically accepting that we're not gonna be besties in the same way you all think. This isn't an anime. We're not gonna be inside of each other's souls, okay? We're gonna see each other and humanize each other. I love you, 
But obviously, like, there's going to be blind spots in our relationships because we come from different bubbles. So, like, it's like, hello, it's like my mom not being able to see my gayness. Like, what am I supposed to do about that? Cry about it? No, move the fuck on. Let, like, radically accept people for how they can see you and move the fuck on. If they cannot regurgitate back to you your feelings in a way that makes you feel seen, they can't see you. And when that happens, it doesn't mean the friendship's over. It just means, like, it is what it is. And I like it anyways. You know what I mean? Hello? Opposed to just pointing the finger at the other side and deeming them to just be crazy, stupid people. Of course, very stupid things have been said, but people have various reasons for saying the very stupid things that they say. And I'm more interested in the reasons behind why they say the stupid things that they say. So do let me know in the comment section what you think about this. I would be very interested to have a conversation about this. I think we can and we necessarily have to do so much better in order to realize the world that we all seemingly want, which is a world where people see us, where people understand us, where people humanize us. And I am very, very sorry to say, but Osama bin Laden's letter to America is not the place where you want to have an awakening and a perfect- Oh, she fucked up. She almost had it. She almost had it. She couldn't humanize them. She couldn't see that this is actually a huge fucking deal and that Osama bin Laden's letter is a really good place to have a bubble pop. She almost had me it. Or a realization about anything. As some no, she fucked up. Have a it's fine, this. it's fine. It's I'll her journey. It's her bubble. be very interested to have a conversation about this. I think we can and we necessarily have to do so much better in order to realize the world that we all seemingly want, which is a world where people see us, where people understand us. Then why don't you understand why the letter is important to their journey? The letter should be important to your journey. You should read that letter and think like, fuck this guy, but also <laughs> everybody's the fire nation. Where people role. humanize us. And I am very, very sorry to say, but Osama bin Laden's letter to America is not the place where you want. She's moralizing introspection. Amen, Kay. She is, which is the fault everyone makes. It's such a, it's such a normal thing to do that. It's more like, like, again, Everyone's going to have a bubble pop differently. Bin Laden's letter is a really good example of a bubble pop and a realization of seeing him as a human and realizing like he could be radicalized any way anyone else could be, right? Like they're no different. Like they're people who feel hurt by the way they've been treated in the same way people feel hurt. Hello? to have an awakening, an epiphany, or a realization about anything, aside from how absolutely devastating existential warfare and perennial warfare under Islamic fundamentalist principles will be not just to the world, but to the very people, the very Muslims who it claims. This is why people think you're political, Z. Because you just made a political statement moralizing introspection. To represent and have the best interests <laughs> at hand for. Thank you so much for watching. Fuck. My camera and lighting is about to die. This whole thing was fire, but that last sentence just like. I have been recording for about three hours. <laughs> you did great, girl. Great video. Great video. So yes, as I said, let me know what you think. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll see all of you very soon in the next one. Yeah, great video. But that part right there, why do people do that? Why can't they, so they say they have empathy. So then why do you, if you have empathy, why are you making fun of how people look? If you make, because empathy itself does not mean you understand people. Empathy is great, but it doesn't actually mean we understand people. Introspection, extrospection does. So having empathy, Bin Laden had empathy. Do you think he was a sociopath? Do we think Bin Laden was a sociopath? Bin Laden had empathy. It just looks different. Because not everyone's having the same thing. She can't understand the people making TikToks or understand why how important this letter is. This letter is a really great bubble pop. It's a great tool for a bubble pop. I would hand this letter to people and be like, yo, you want to learn how politics works? Read this letter. And realize like everyone has the same justification. If you change that letter to Christian quotes and I should change that letter to all Christian and people would be like, yeah, that's dope, bro. All you have to do is change that letter to literally American propaganda, change all the Quran quotes to Bible quotes, and I bet conservatives would eat that shit up. I bet they would eat that shit up. And that's the point. That's the point. After 9-11, you need to understand how violent Americans were. They were so eager to, like, make the Middle East glass.
They were so eager to kill people because they felt so justified in their revenge. Now imagine you have a 9-11 happen every day in your backyard. Imagine you have 9-11 once a year on your land. And imagine it's coming from the same person. You think you're not going to form a hatred for America or for that group? Are you insane? Like how privileged is America that they have one 9-11 and they're like, oh my God, like I have to like destroy the Middle East. Israel has October 7th and they bomb and kill 10,000 Palestinians. And I'm like, great. Now imagine you're a Palestinian or a person in Iraq and this is just like your daily possible life. Hello? You got pissed over one event. They have this event. Hello? So again, I love Z, but isn't it amazing how people can make these amazing video essays. They can have like this great insight. And at the end, they fumble it with like. What a fumble at the end, but great video. Like, and this is my opinion. I could be wrong. <laughs> but bro, okay. Ah. Bryson says, bro, I'll never forget how gleeful people were about his death. I understand why, but it's unsettling. Nevertheless, yeah. Selena says, oh my gosh, I'm glad, or wow, glad you caught that. Like, again, it's like, I'm always excited when people are like going, and again, I'm excited for Z, like, wow. But like the Bin Laden letter is a great tool to use for introspection and extrospection. It should blow a bubble. It should blow, you should pop a bubble and be like, wait, if they think this of us and we've been saying similar things, Great video, though. I'm glad we watched it. Again, I'm going to link it in the chat. And then when I, I'm going to go clip it right now and I'll post it and I'll link it, of course, in the description. So you guys can go like the video and leave your opinion if you'd like. I know she worked really hard to put this together. It must have been a lot of work. It must have been a crazy amount of work to put this video together. So props to Z. Props to Kidology. I just, um, from my, my only critique is that I think to practice like, a real understanding of bu understanding a bubble popping, you would have to bub the pop the bubble of like moralizing, empathizing with somebody like Bin Laden. I think it is much more profound to empathize with Bin Laden because again, how you treat your enemies tells me more about you than to say like you should never empathize with him. It's like why not? He was a person with a family. He had a life, and he was wrong in his morals and ethics and how he carried them out but they didn't just come from anywhere. They came from somewhere and they came from a lived experience he was having. And the question is, what if you're a person having that lived experience and you don't realize that you're Bin Laden to somebody? And that's the hard part of humanity is we don't wanna hold a mirror up to ourselves. What did a certain YouTuber say about me? How can she see me so differently than I see myself? Because it's scary to look into a mirror and realize like, Am I like the thing that I fight against? Aren't we all a little bit? Just like a little bit, you know? In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.